Hey, welcome back guys to the video. Yeah, finally back here on um, Metal Gear Solid 2. We're doing very easy to begin with and then um, we're going to be getting all the dog tags. We're going to be getting 37 out of 52 trophies. So if you thought there's quite a lot of trophies on this and it can be quite overwhelming, we're going to get pretty much all of them out of the way here. And all that's going to be left is just some sort of um, some of the MISC modes, the extra modes, and um, the others will kind of be related to Big Boss Rank and the Unlockables. We get all the um, miscellaneous trophies out of the way, all the story trophies. Yeah, 37 out of 52. So yeah, we're going to do very easy. This is actually going to be part of my Platinum walkthrough as well. Uh, but I'm going to release this as its separate video. I'll have a text guide for this as well. You can refer to the description and you'll find the link in there. Um, if you do want to just look in text for everything. All the dog tags will be mentioned, the names, everything you have to do, all in there guys. So if you do want to look ahead or um, you missed something I said, yeah, look in text guide and it's all in there. Okay, so what we're going to do first, we're just going to come over to the um, screenplay book and just scroll through every single page. There's literally like 800 pages here. Just scan through them all quickly guys and then we'll pop the trophy at the end. I'm just going to skip forward a little bit. Right, so that's a bit of it skipped. All the way up to page, what is it, 830? Or something. But yeah, you get a trophy guys, cover to cover solid two. Books offer Patriots. Read all the pages in the screenplay book. So the way we're going to do this, yeah, I'm going to walk you through everything. Um. We will be getting the trophy here for getting no alerts. I mean, you have to get three there, sort of mandatory, you know, story related, but you can't get any more. Um, if you don't get that, do not worry, guys. When you go for big boss rank at the end, to get big boss rank, you have to do it without any extra alerts and without killing anybody. So two trophies connected to being, you know, pacifist, killing no one and having no alerts, you'll automatically get it on your big boss rank playthrough. So if you don't get it now, do not worry guys, we're not going to be getting the one for not killing anybody because this trophy is related to killing people. So we're going to be getting that out of the way here. So yeah, very easy guys, you want radar type 1 and let's jump in. So it might take a bit getting used to when it comes to holding up enemies because if you do it in the, if you do it like a, a, the wrong sequence of actions the enemies can see you, um, but I'll try to explain it all along the way, guys, as we go. So just please pay attention. We need to get a fix. So you can skip cutscenes. To skip cutscenes, you just press square twice. Well, you press square twice to skip a code it call or a triangle twice. And to skip a normal video cutscene, just press options. Right, so um, you need to raise your gun. So you hold L1, hold square, and you need to come to the front of the enemy and point at the head or the groin area. And then they'll shake and they'll drop a dog tag. And you're going to tranquilize that guy. Yeah, that's your first trophy, animal control. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do with each enemy. Whether you want to tranquilize them or knock them out with a melee combo or break the neck. There's trophies connected to each of them three things I just mentioned. So you're going to tranquilize that one. Then tranquilize this one as well. So yeah, you point your gun at him from the back. Just be careful when you're in front of the enemy, do not lower your gun because then they will see you. If you want to lower your gun to attack and whatever, you need to make sure you're behind them. Yeah, so same with him, guys. Make him drop his dog tags and then try and collide him by hitting him in the head. If you hit them in the head, they'll always go down in one hit on very easy. Now, if the guard's just below, she took too long, just wait at the top of steps for him to walk to the steps and then for him to walk back again before he can do this. Now, hold up this guy. And then shoot his radio. That's his radio just there, guys. Shoot it. You'll get that trophy. Silence is golden. Yep. Then you're going to come around the front of him. Point him. Point at his, um, his groin area or his head. And till he has a little shake and drops his dog tag. And then this guy, you want to knock him out for melee combo. So just spam circle. Yeah. So when you do it, you want to come behind. You want to press R2 to put your weapon away. Otherwise, you're going to fire it. And then you can combo him. Or alternatively, when you're at the front of the enemy, you can pause the game and then they go off square. And then unpause it. And you'll still have your gun raised, but you won't be holding square no more. And then you can just spam circle that way. That's another little tip I do sometimes. So this guy just runs straight around here and knock him out with a melee combo. 
That's a trophy for killing, well, for knocking out 30 enemies with a melee combo. So that's what I'm slowly working towards. Yeah, so you're going to hold up this guy. Make sure you do not go in front of his line of sight. Hold him up, point him at his head. Or his um, little friend down there. And then afterwards, knock him out and get his dog tag. So I did the pausing method there. Where you pause the game, let go of square, and then unpause it. And then your gun will still be pointing. But you're not holding square no more, so you're not going to shoot him by accident. This guy, going to knock him out first thing. Because he is a stubborn guard. Yeah, some of the guards, they kind of think they're tough. And they weren't, they weren't dance for you straight away and uh, shake out a dog tag. For them guys, you need a lethal weapon, which you don't have yet. So we just knocked him out straight away. Make sure you hug the wall when you go beneath that camera. Otherwise, it will see you. Open the socket, guys. Grab a shaft grenade. We don't use it, uh, but you need it for the all weapons trophy with Snake. Come here, quicker come around this corner guys, aim at that guy and shoot the fire extinguisher before he walks back. You'll get that trophy down in smoke. We are going to be doing all this again on easy by the way. So if you mess anything up here, don't worry, we're going to be doing all this again pretty much on easy. There'll be a few more enemies. You want to come through here, make sure you stick close to the wall guys so that camera don't see you. Hold this guy up, but if you're quick, you stun him with fire extinguisher, come around there, wait for him to turn around and then come and hold him up from behind. And then get his dog tag. Then knock him out with a melee combo afterwards. If you want to know why some enemies I'm tranquilizing them. And some enemies I'm knocking them out. It's because in the areas. Which is going to be in for a long time. If you knock them out. Uh, they're going to, they're likely going to wake up before you leave that room. And cause an alert. So that's why some areas I'm tranquilizing the guards. Right. So we'll go back ration. Before he came out the bridge. You want to come to this far corner guys. During this boss fight. Jump over this railing, just press triangle right in the corner. And um, you want to wait until she leans over the railing with her gun. And then press triangle to get back up. And then quickly try to shoot her. And then get back down and just repeat guys. There's a lot of ways to do this. I find this way works quite well. Because it always, for it always forces her to run into the same spot. Otherwise it can be quite tricky trying to hit her. Especially on big boss difficulty. Um, so hopefully if you can get used to this method and hopefully it works well in big boss rank as well. Um, I've not tried it there yet. I only kind of learned this on very easy. But I'm hoping it works quite well on the higher difficulties. So what might happen. Yeah so as soon as she leans over the, the gun stand up straight away. She might catch you one time. But the key to do this is when you stand up. As you're jumping over hold L1 and square. And you'll automatically lock onto her more or less. But don't shoot straight away. You want to wait a moment before you fire. Because normally if you just shoot as soon as you can. You'll miss. You want to wait a moment. And then fire guys. And that's it. Once you kill her. Yeah make sure you use your M9. Uh, pick a body up and release it. And she'll drop a dog tag. Climb down here. There's a tower up them steps guys. And there's some thermal goggles at the top. But you're not going to need them. Right, when you get around here, this guy's going to come out. Just going to hold him up. Come around the front of him. Point at his head or his groin. Unequip your weapon and then knock him out once he drops the dog tag. Dog tags will disappear if you don't pick him up quick enough, by the way. They disappear after about, I think it's about 15 seconds. Yeah, then pick up that cardboard box on the right there. The cardboard wet box. Right, grab that USP ammo. I forgot to get it. I am going to be coming up in a second. Yeah, grab that USP ammo, guys. Now, what you want to do here, you want to knock on the wall to attract that guard. There's a lot of ways to do this. I just like this way. Yeah, knock on the wall to attract him and then hide on the steps. Do not go too far up. If the camera changes when you're moving up steps, you're about to enter the next room. So if the camera changes, do not go up anymore. And then when he comes around to investigate, he'll walk past you. And then shoot him in the head with a tranquilizer, guys, with the M9 to knock him out. Right, come in here. Yep, and now you want to shoot that camera with your USP. And this one I realised I forgot to pick up the ammo. So I'm just going to come back up here. Pick this ammo I missed up. I missed. There it is. USP bullets times 15. Right, so again, keep to the back wall, guys. Otherwise the camera will spot you. Yep, and you're going to shoot it for USP. There you go. There's a trophy for destroying five of them. Now be very quick here. Come straight into this room, grab the M9 bullets, grab the cardboard box one, come back out here 
and wait. You can see that guy comes up steps. He always comes when you go in the pantry, but he'll go back down to be quick. And once he turns back, run behind him and hold him up. He's a stubborn guard, so you can have to shoot the ceiling above him. You don't have to shoot him, just shoot anywhere near him and it will scare him. And then wait for him to drop the um, dog tag. There you go, and then knock him out. Right down the steps. So now we're going to destroy his camera, guys, with our lethal weapon, the USP. And then back down here. So now we can hold up this guard as well, this stubborn guard. Just come here and wait for him to go back. Right, hop down behind him. Hold him up, come around the front, point at his head. And then shoot near him somewhere. Then run behind him as he's shaking out the dog tag. And then knock him out, guys. Once he has done so. Back up here and enter the Middle East room. Right. This is a new guard. It's not the same guard which was sitting down earlier. He's actually highly unmissable, I guess. Because as you see, he despawns and this guard takes his place. So you're going to hold him up, take his dog tag, knock him out. Then you're going to come down here. There's going to be another guard listening to the radio or something. I think it's listening to him, Abba. Oh no, it's not this guy, it's somebody else. He's playing with his friendly flies but yeah knock him out guys and um take his dog tag come up the steps all the way to the east and um take this door right so now we're going to take out this stubborn guard we knocked him out earlier if you remember but going to get a few missed trophies here as well come near open this locker here ready you can take the ration if you want yeah, open it later, ready. Right, we're going to wait now for him to come up to us and then turn back. I'm going to hold him up and get his dog tag. Right, hold him up. Freeze. Go around the front, scare him and then shoot near his body to um, make him drop his dog tag. Once he drops it, go behind him and grab him, guys. Now, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to actually... Yeah, I guess you can knock him out if you want. Oh, this might explain why I got the um, got his trophy a bit earlier. I got his trophy a little bit earlier than what I mentioned it in my text guide. And this might be why. So I don't normally knock this guy out. I normally just drag him straight here. Um, I guess it don't matter, actually. But yeah, you want to put him straight in the locker. Just drag him to that locker. And there you go. Guys, you got a trophy hurt locker. Uh, so probably what's more effective to knock him out. Probably why I did so. But yeah, lob him in the locker, guys. Get that trophy. And then open this locker. And use R1 to look at that nice picture. And then while looking at it, you want to call Otacon. And it'll see see Snake up to something naughty. And get that trophy, guys. Snake beater. Just call Otacon. And then lock yourself inside. Take your pants down. Look down. And then hold R1. And the camera will slowly zoom in. And you'll give her a kiss. And get that trophy as well, guys. Right. Close the locker. Nobody will probably be able to open it now because it's probably a bit sticky. <laughs> They'll think it's been locked. No, it's just sticky. Solid semen inside it. Right, you're going to come in here. And I'm just going to make a save because if you mess things up in this engine room, there's a guard. He only appears on your very first Snake. You time you the actually One enter the room. If you leave and then come back in, he'll actually despawn. Uh, so you've got to be quite careful here. Well, maybe appear somewhere else, but, but, but this is the easier way. So grab them stun grenades on the way down, and then come in this room. Right, so yeah, this guard on the left. Freeze. Yeah, if you go out and come back in, he'll despawn. So just run into him to knock him back. And then hold him up, and you actually want to trank him, guys, after he drops a dog tag. So yeah, once he drops it, trank him. With your M9. Yeah, that's Jeff. They come over here, and if you're quick enough, you can just hang over there and wait. He won't see you, don't worry. And when he walks past you, drop down and hold up this guy. Once you drop this dog tag, you want to trank him. Because this is quite a big room, a lot of enemies to hold up here. This is why we're knocking them all out with the M9. Because otherwise, if we use the, um, if we knock them out, they'll get up too quick. 
So yeah, this guy as well, this third enemy here. Hold him up and shoot him with the M9. Grab his dog tag. Okay, so we're going to get a trophy now for um, getting grip level 3, guys. There's not really a good way to do this. I mean, this is a good spot. But what I like to do, this is quite tricky. You'll see me do this a few times and then I'll edit the rest of it. Because it's going to take me like 10 minutes. Okay, so um, to get to grip level 2, you have to do 100 pull-ups. And to get to grip level 3, you have to do another 100 pull-ups. So 200 total. But when you drop from the railing like this, it equals 10 pull-ups. So you only have to do this 10, uh, 20 times to get grip level 3. But the tricky thing is, you jump over the railing with triangle. Um, I'm playing PS5 by the way, so I'm just going to reference that. If you're playing a different ver version, um, obviously just translate controls on whatever buttons you use. So you press triangle to jump over it, then it's X to drop down. And then you need to spam triangle, so you grab the one at the bottom. But it can be a bit tricky, if you don't spam it quick enough, or your timing is a bit off, you might miss it and you might die. If you do die, don't worry, all them dog tags you've already got in this room, they'll still be saved. And um, it doesn't matter if you uh, use a continue anyway, don't worry about it. And any pull-ups you've done already will still be saved. So yeah, if you die, don't worry, just come down here. You won't need to worry about dog tags then. I guess you could just kill the enemies then. Or trank them, or whatever. Yeah, kill or trank. Then just keep doing this, guys. What I like to do, the reason you see me pause in the game... Because normally it can be awkward going from pressing X to spam and triangle. It can be a little bit awkward. And I find you lose a bit of you lose a little bit of time switching from X to triangle. And it doesn't quite get you give you enough time to really get your finger on that button and to really get spamming it. So what I like to do, I press X and then pause. So X pause. So what you've done, you've paused the game in midair. And then what I do then, I start spamming triangle. And then while I've got my spamming momentum going, I unpause the game. It just works better for me. So yeah, X to drop, so X start to pause. And then once the game's paused, start spamming it, start spamming it. And uh, yeah, you'll probably sound, a, you'll start panting a bit like Snake in that locker. Yeah, start spamming the button, and then unpause the game. And that normally works well for me. Yep, and Oddcom will call you once you hit level 2. And just keep doing it guys, like I say, you need to do this 20 times to hit grip level 3 and get a trophy. So um, I gave you my little tips to do it, just keep doing that guys, and I'm just going to make a little edit here. Hope I hope you don't die too much, I hope that portion trick actually really helps you. But yeah, they're the pull-ups you can do, it takes a long time, so it's quicker to just drop down and keep doing that guys. Right, here we go, this is where the trophy pops for me, I think this is the last one. And there we go guys, steel grip, so that's for reaching grip level 3. Like I say, there's not really a better spot to do it. I mean, there's a few spots like this, where there's two railings um, below each other, so you can do that. But it would be nice if there's three railings, or somewhere where there is a floor below you could drop onto. So if you missed, you wouldn't die. But there isn't a spot where that happens. I've looked, there isn't a spot with three railings, all in a, you know, all in a row. So fortunately... Yeah, that's pretty much all you've got. You have a few spots like that where it's just two railings. So this guy, go and hold him up. And then grab his dog tag. Yep, it might fall below like it did then. Um, if it does, just go down and grab it. And um, just come this way. You don't have to get every single dog tag, by the way. You just need to get a certain amount in order to unlock the unlockables. So if you miss one or two, it's not a big problem. Okay, grab that. Uh, weapon grenades and that should be that trophy guys weapon completionist tanker that's finding all weapons at snake not too many to get i think you've got the usp the m9 which is still related on very easy and you've got chaff grenade stun grenade and normal grenades i think that's all you need right so when you come down here enemy's going to appear to the back once he spawns you're going to come down here and wait now try to hold him up before he gets a chance to use his radio otherwise when you're holding him up his mates will be calling back to ask him what's going on. So you hold him up. That's it. Knock him out. And then grab the dog tag. There you go. Come near. Now carefully shoot at that control unit. Do not shoot the C4. Not that flashy thing. You want to shoot the thing with the green light on it. That's it. And then open this door guys. And go through. Yes, yeah, so this bit can be a little bit tricky. 
Just follow my lead. So you're going to run all, all the way straight down here until you spot the first enemy. When you spot the first enemy, you're going to go in the room shortly on the right after seeing him. And... There he is. So, yeah, once you see him, guys, you might want to make a safe here just in case you do make any mistakes. There's a sleeping enemy around the corner and he's a bit of a nuisance. Yes, you might want to make a save uh, just in case he messes okay. up. So once you see our first enemy, go in the room just, that's it, just after you spot him. This room here, hide in this corner and shoot that with your silenced M9. That's it, he'll come over to find out what's going on. And he's going to hide in this corner and then when he walks past you guys, going to hold him up. Nice, easy way to do that. Yep, hold him up, get a dog tag. Remember, do not lower your weapon when you're in front of an enemy. Otherwise, they will be alerted. Right. You want to trank him after getting his dog tack. Yep, because it's quite a long room. And he'll normally wake up before you get to the end. Yeah, then the second guy. I think, ah, this guy listened to Abba. Abba's greatest hits. Yeah, so um, he'll just come around the corner. As he walks around the corner, hold him up. Grab his dog tag and then tranquilize him. Now this guy, this is the awkward one, this guy's sleeping. Because sometimes your hold up will not work on him for some reason. So what I like to do, wait for him to go to sleep, grab him, that's it. And then let him go and then hold him up. That way, you're behind him. Yep, how funny that sounds. But yep, if you go around the front of him and your hold up don't work, he's likely going to see you. But if you grab him, drag him back slightly, let him go and then hold him up, you'll be behind him. And so it's just easy to hold him up that way. That's it. Get his dog tag. You can knock him out because he's the last enemy in there. And he's right near the exit. And then come here. Now this bit is a little bit awkward. And um, But you do need to do a bit of practice on this. Because it's going to be tricky on your big boss rank. But yeah. What you need to do here guys. Is you'll need to use your M9. And I just stay, I stay where I spawn. So do not move. Just stay where you spawn, crouched, and you want to use L2 to just pop in and out like so. Hold R1 to go in first person. Yeah, just L2 every now and then. Now what the enemies will do, after they shoot, they will pause in place for about two seconds. So when the enemies are shooting, you obviously you'll take cover. And then when they stopped, you know that they're gonna stay in place for about two seconds. And then once you kill the first four enemies, Three more will spawn in a line. You're going to try and kill two of them. And then the final enemy, let him come down to you and then shoot his pipe. If you miss, try to hit him and then shoot another pipe a bit closer. That's it. Now, do not spam the pipe. Yeah, we got a trophy, guys. Caution hot. Down an enemy with the steam from a pipe. Yeah, do not spam your bullets on the pipe. It doesn't matter if you hit it in the same place. The steam will keep coming out. You need to time it. Otherwise, he's sort of immune to it. So hit it. Wait for him to recover slightly. Hit it again. Wait for him to recover, hit it again, and so on. That eventually kill him, guys, and you'll get that trophy. Yeah, it can be a bit tricky, but really, in that little siege in there, yeah, this guy, take a picture of this guy in his underwear. Just make sure he's in the middle of the um, circle, and zoom in on him, guys, and take a picture. You know when you've took it in the right spot, because Snake will say, good, like this. Yeah, it will say good, so then you know it's a good picture. And do not, do not overwrite that picture, guys. If you take any more, for whatever reason, do not overwrite that one. You need to save it for a little bit later. You're going to come all the way down the bottom. Be careful. You do not want to be spotted. Crawl beneath this projector. Yeah, crawl beneath it. And this guy at the back here, you want to hold him up. Yeah, get his dog tag and you want to trank him. Do not try to knock these guys out. It will not work. You need to trank these guys with your M9. Yeah, just get his dog tag. M9 in the head. Right, and then climb back up the ladder. Yeah, sorry, back to that siege for a moment. Yeah, if you don't take out the first three enemies quick enough, one of them will start lobbing a grenade, and you do not want that to happen. You want to try and get rid of the first four enemies quick, and then the final three will spawn at the end. They always spawn three in the line, and they always try to rush you. That's why you knock out the first two, and the third one, that's when you try to down with the, with the pipe. Right, so here, guys, make sure your health is full. Or you are grip level three. What happens if you have, if your health is not full for some reason, your grip goes down mega fast. It's same with your oxygen, I think, as well. Yeah, if you do not have full health for some reason, your your stamina just goes mega fast. So yeah, that's 
if it's going down faster than what mine is, that would be why, guys, because you're not full health. But you can heal. It's absolutely no problem in this playthrough. So you're going to come here. You're going to wait for that guy to walk back. Then you're going to jump back up, guys. Hold him up. Get his dog tag and then shoot him with the M9 to knock him out. Do not use the USP here because it's very, very loud. And the enemies will likely hear you and be alarmed and they'll all look up at you. So yeah, this one as well. Just jump over railing and head all the way across. You only need to do this for the dog tags. We're not going to be coming this way on Big Boss rank. On Big Boss, we're going to take the lower path. And um, oh, by the way, if I haven't said, I think we're going to do this in three playthroughs. So I think if you look, if you look at a lot of guides and look elsewhere, they'll tell you that you have to do very easy, easy, normal and big boss rank. Um, very easy, easy, normal, basically just for um, dog tags. And you need to complete the game for the first time to unlock extreme anyway. Yep. Once you come near, guys, you can hold up this guard. Yep. Shake out his dog tag and then try and collise him. Yep, then you want to come over here and take a picture of the Marines logo on Metal Gear. You know you took the right one because there will be like a little melody to say, if, you know, you took the right shots. Then come down this pole and hold up this guy here. Yep, hold him up and then you want to grab him, guys, and drag him back. Yeah, so drag him back here because you can't quite get in front of him. Drag him back and then hold him up straight away after. Come around his front. Yeah, carefully do not run into these guys because they're a bit more alert. And um, as you can see, when I knocked him out, uh, when I ran into him, I had to hold him up again. But yeah, get his dog tag and then shoot him with the M9. And you want to come to this far southeast corner and take a picture of Metal Gear from this angle. So we've got the guy in the underwear and we've got two pictures of Metal Gear at the moment. We're going to interrupt this terminal. And when you submit your picture of the guy in his underpants, you're going to get a trophy. And we're also going to submit two of the pictures of Metal Gear. One of the Marines logo. And, yep, sexting. Yep, send him a picture. I'm sure Oddcon's going to go and stand in the locker now of that picture. Yep, and you'll submit the other two pictures. Right, we're going to come in here now and get an, another MISC trophy. Right, so once you're in here, you can see all the enemies look in your direction. So just wait a minute for them to look away. Yeah, they'll keep switching from left to right. That's it. And watch this loud grating. You can either walk slowly across, crawl across, or roll across like I did. Rolling across is a crawl away. And you want to come over here, guys. No need to zoom in. Just come to this corner, the right side of the projectors, and just look at this right screen. No need to zoom in. Now, it's a 30% chance for this to happen. Just keep taking a picture. There. There it is. Until Hideo appears. Yep, just keep taking that picture, guys. Like I say, it's a 30% chance for him to appear. And that comes from the official guide. I don't think all the other trophy guides say that it's um, like an RNG thing. Yeah, but the official guide says there's a 30% chance for him to appear. So just keep spamming pictures, and eventually he will appear. As you can see, there's no need to zoom in. Just make sure your camera is on the second screen. That's it. Once you've got that trophy, guys, head back across once the guards turn back to the left. Back through this door. And we're going to take a picture of the final two. Uh, we need one from the front and one from the southwest. Just make sure you hug the south walls and you shouldn't be spotted. So the middle and then the southwest. And then go back to terminal, guys. Submit the pictures. And that's it. Yeah, there's something else. I've, there's something I wanted to mention. Um, I thought I mentioned it after I got through this bit, but I can't remember what it was now. Oh yeah, that's it with the um, the dog tags. Yeah, so um, a lot of guys will say you need to do three, play well, four playthroughs minimum, but it's actually three because what we're going to try and do in this platinum, guys, we're going to get dog tags on big boss rank. You might think that's going to be make it more harder than what it needs to be, but it's not. I don't think it will. That's what we're going to go for. So we're doing all dog tags on very easy. All the dog tags on EC. Yeah, you get a trophy, guys. Spaghetti Cinema. Still related. And the good thing is, though, you do not need to get every dog tag on Big Boss Rank. You do not need to get every one. Only about... I think it's going to be about 70% of the dog tags on Big Boss Rank. Assuming you get all the dog tags on Very Easy. 
and all the dog tags on easy. So yeah, very easy dog tags, easy dog tags, and 70% of the dog tags on Big Boss Rank. So yeah, only three playthroughs guys for this Platinum, not four. Okay, so once you get control, it's Raiden or Jack. You wanna grab the M9 from under the shelf. Come in this middle locker, grab the, race, the um, ration. And then lay down amongst all these bugs and then equip it. And you'll notice you'll get a bug appear. That's it, get a trophy guys, my rations. Get sea lice all over your rations. Just move around in there until they crawl on it. And then all you need to do guys is keep equipping and unequipping your ration like so. Or quick, you know, hovering over it and then off and then on and then off again. And the bug will shortly jump off. Jump on the crates, get the M9 bullets. And then open this door guys and head through. So yeah, the tanker, the tanker part. Uh, which you just done that's actually the smaller part of the game so this is the plant what the game refers to us yeah the plant we just did the tanker i was playing this on steam deck and the tanker section at the end with all the enemies it re it crashes the steam deck i just can't get past it because there's too many enemies on you know on screen i guess yeah it just keeps crashing the steam deck so yeah pick your code name whatever you want opti is a good code name so yeah go flat if you want Yep, and then enter. Yep, and then download. Right, so um, press exit. Oh yeah, another thing guys, you can actually hard reset your game. Well, I guess soft reset, you know, back to start of the game. Somebody, um, I think it, who was it? I have to check now, sorry man, I can't remember your name. Somebody mentioned it to me, um, In my comments. Yeah, so once you interrupt this node, guys, these guys will slowly start to wake up. You can see what way they're going to be facing, so to make sure you're standing behind him and got your gun out ready and you automatically hold him up and get his dog tag. Yeah, Epstar Runner. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that to me. Yeah, um, to reset the game uh, without going using the node. Yeah, and then this guy, I'm just going to keep picking him up, guys, and dropping him to make sure he recovers quicker. And I'm going to get his dog tag as well. So, yeah, get a dog tag from the first enemy and then a dog tag from the second enemy once he wakes up and then jump in the lift. Yes, yeah, so the Epstar Runner was saying to me, um, you need to press both the back, uh, all four back buttons. So, you've got L1, L2, R1, and R2. So, all the back buttons or shoulder buttons, whatever you want to call them. So, all four of them. And then the options button and the touchpad. Hold all them in for about five seconds and that will reset the game. Yeah, I don't know why that other guy got up so quick. Is it because I knocked him on his mate? I don't know. Uh, but you should be able to get in the, um, the lift guys before the other guy spawns. Uh, gets back up and calls the cavalry in, so to speak. Right, let's get back up here, guys. So we've got two dog tags up here. Crawl through this hole in the fence near little birdies. There's a lot of bird shit there. But you've got to do what you got to do. Right. Crawl through it. Remember, you've got a nano suit. So it'll probably clean itself anyway. Yeah, I'm going to make a save here. Two trophies glitched for me, by the way. And I, I am going to mention the trophies which glitched for me. And give you like a workaround if it happens to you. Uh, but if any, stories, if any trophies do glitch that I don't mention, all you can do is like reload an earlier save. And if it's like a story trophy, watch a cutscene all the way. Because sometimes one of, the, one of the trophies which glitches for me is a story trophy. And it's sometimes when you skip the cutscene, it'll glitch a trophy. Maybe it's the only one, I don't know. Uh, but I will mention that too. And the box trophy glitched for me as well. Uh, but I'm going to give you a workaround, so don't worry. Yeah, so hold up this guy in the middle. Yeah, trophy for getting all boxes. You hold him up, guys. Grab his dog tag. And then knock him out with a melee combo. Right. You have to knock out 30 enemies with a melee combo for a trophy. You have to break 30 enemies' necks for a trophy. And then you have to knock 100 enemies out with your M9 for a trophy. Right, and that's a trophy, guys, for holding up 30 enemies. Yep, there you go. Hold up 30 enemies. Yeah, you got that one as well. Yeah, it's going to do this guy first to the north. Hold him up. 
So it's going to be tricky getting behind him here. So I'm just going to press a start. Use the start trick. Where it gets dog tag, I press start, unpause it, but I release square when the game is paused, and then I knock him out afterwards. And then by the time we've done that, this guard should be walking to the southeast. If not, just wait a moment and then get behind him. Just watch your feet on the loud flooring. Oh, I probably should have said this earlier. Yeah. You know, at first, guard, I had to walk slowly over the grate in there because it was loud. I actually have to put a, um, a note on this because I think that's going to catch you out. I could just see you running straight up to that first guy. Yeah, so make sure you're quiet when you're walking over the loud flooring. Yeah, get both of them dog tags and then come in here, guys. So be a cutscene. A few cutscenes when you first come in. Yeah, so straight after grab the SOCOM suppressor and then equip the SOCOM and equip the suppressor and then it'll automatically be equipped. There you go. See on the bottom right, it's automatically slotted. Yeah, grab the SOCOM bullets just on the left there near the steps. Come around here, through this door and open the left locker for some more SOCOM bullets and then come in here. Right, you're going to go through here, guys, and grab a shaft grenade on the right. Yeah, grab them, and then take the fire exit. Yeah, into the dining hall. Right, head forward for the bomb cutscene. So this is where they're going to give you the sort of bomb-making tutorial. Now, the very first time, you can't skip this. Yeah, I mean, you can skip part of it, but when Stillman starts talking, yeah, you can't skip this now, so you have to watch all of it. It don't go on for too long. Well, pretty much all you do as Raiden is dismantling bombs. Yeah, you sort of dis... I mean, you got the first bit, now you're going to start dismantling bombs, and then you're going to have, like, the final bit. And that's pretty... Yeah, that's pretty much all you do. And I actually don't remember the game being so short. I think Metal Gear Solid 1 is longer than this. Yeah, I mean, I did play this back in the day. I remember having a lot of trouble with this game back in the day. And um, but coming through it now, it's just so simple. How long does the effect last? When you got like a, a strategic approach to it, yeah, it just it's quite simple to get through. But yeah, I, I forgot how small, how short it was. Or, or perhaps I never completed it. I don't, I don't remember if I did back in the day. Um, but yeah, he's going to give you coolant spray, and you use them. You see this bomb he's showing you. You use that to um, freeze a bomb basically and that will disable it I guess because apparently putting a bomb in the freezer will um, defuse it apparently so yeah you use the coolant spray on it yep and that's a sensor uh, but you don't need that so I'm gonna obviously tell you where they are uh, but I'll give it to you anyway it looks more like I don't know a type of taser weapon yeah you, you have a time limit as well where you can defuse them uh, but it's quite generous. It's it's shorter on other difficulties. Uh, but that's where the guides come in useful. But once you've got the first, I think it's the first five. Another door will open in here, and you have to grab another sensor, and you have to do that in order to access the sixth bomb, which is where we started the game. That's Raiden. Yeah, so just after this one, then it kind of lets you skip it. Don't forget that you need the radar to use the system. Log into the node at every strut and turn the. Yeah, when I when I got to the end of this, I had to. That's when I realised the um, one of the story trophies didn't didn't pop for me. And of course, the no box trophy. And I was doing a lot of messing about at the end of this, you know, at the end of this video, and I've sort of edited. I've edited in um, the trophies popping for me. And obviously, I'm going to mention you where to, where to make a safe. And some things I learnt while trying to um, get him trophies to pop. So as soon as you get control back, come straight out this door. And if you're quick enough, the guard here will be neutralised, will be knocked out. And the cardboard box would have knocked him out. I have no idea who's in that cardboard box. Yeah, so this only happens if you're quick enough. And then when you come over here, guys, equip your SOCOM and shoot that camera. That should be... 
number oh, three cameras out of five. Yeah, three cameras out of five, I believe. Right in here, you're going to come over here first, grab a soak and bullets, then going to drop down here. Remember the portion trick. Press X, pause, and then start spamming triangle and then unpause it. That's it. Then wait for God to look over there. Do not attack him yet. You need to wait for him to finish calling in help. Then wait for him to call back, open up this cover, and defuse this bomb, guys, with your coolant spray. That's it. Lob it in the freezer. Right. Once you've done that, quickly go chase after that lower guard and hold him up, guys, and get his dog tag. There's a guard in the middle. Uh, but I like... I actually get him later. Because we're going to be back in this room later. And we're actually going to be passing that, that guard at the top. So we're going to get that dog tag later. Don't worry. Yeah, so hold up this guard. We're going to do a lower guard now. And then, we'll, like I said, we'll do the upper guard later. Just more effective. You can get them both at once here. But it's a little bit tricky. So I just do one now and one later. It makes it much easier. So yeah, come out here. Right, you're going to come to far lower southeast end. Now, that guard at the top, wait for him to come down the steps. Just be careful because he can see you um, if you're sort of at the side. So make sure you're way out of the way of his line of sight. Right, and when he walks over there, run up to him and hold him up. There you go. Knock him back a bit. Yep, yeah, make him shake out the dog tag and then we're going to knock him out, guys, for the melee combo. Right, and come up these steps. The guy on the top, on the very top, shouldn't be able to see you. And then come near, guys, and out this exit. Right, strut E, parcel room. First floor. Okay, just going to grab this cardboard box. That's cardboard box five. Right, going to hold up this guard. Yep. Get his dog tag. Then melee combo him afterwards. His name is Nana. Right, then take the east stairwell and the upper east door out onto the heliport. Yeah, there'll be a little cutscene here. Yeah, I think the way we're going to do this, guys, we're going to do very easy playthrough. And then I'm going to do all these sort of extra mode trophies. And then we're going to do easy playthrough and then big boss. I think that's the order of release you can look forward to in my release schedule for my platinum. So this guy, you're going to just go north and then west and then south. Come up behind him and hold him up. He is stubborn. So you're going to act all tough. So you're going to shoot your weapon next to him. And it'll just poo his pants. And then grab his dog tag and shoot him with a tranquilizer. Make sure you shoot him with the M9. And then come over here to the bottom of the fighter jet. Crawl. Go into a prone. And then freeze the bomb below the plane. I think that's bomb. Is that bomb number two? Yep. Yeah. And then come over here guys. A big cardboard box. There it is. Cardboard box number three. Pick that one up. Right, there's going to be a guard on the lower northwest corner. You do move a little bit quicker, by the way, if you do cartwheels. Freeze. Right, hold him up. Yeah, you can knock this guy out. Yeah, so you can knock him out like so. That's it, get his dog tag and grab them claymore mines. Hopefully a bit better picking things up than what I am. Yep, yeah, then cartwheel over him. And then take the east exit, guys, where we came in. So, yeah, the reason we tranked that top guy is because if not, he would have woken up before he got here. Right, so back in the parcel room. Yep, come back down the steps, and then we're going to take the southeast exit. Onto the EF connecting bridge. Right, you're going to come in here. And once you get to about here, you're going to get a story related codec call, which is unmissable. Right, once you get to here, you're going to turn around and you're going to look up and you're going to tranquilize that guy. Because he might see, if you're a little bit slow here, he might see you. Yep, there he is, you see him. Take him out for the headshot of the M9, that's it. And then once you get to this part where four silos are, start crawling, guys. Now crawl through the middle until you've picked up three claymores. So yeah, three claymores, that's two, one more. There it is, three. Once you picked up three, that's it. Now the middle path is clear of claymores. Now remember that. So whenever you're going back through that room, the middle path is clear of claymores. 
Right, once you're in Short F Warehouse, come over here, uh, jump over this railing, drop down, drop down these crates, and then freeze this bomb with your coolant spray. Oh yeah, to use your coolant spray, guys, press forward on the analog stick. The right analog. Another thing I've got to mention, I best write this down. Yep, yeah, you, you press forward on the right analog stick. It's a bit, I don't know why it's got a weird function to use. I don't know why I've done that. Yeah, you just equip it and then you hold forward on the right analog stick. And once you're done it, climb back over, hold up this guy. Now you need to be quick here before his friend comes down and notices him knocked out. Yeah, grab them stun grenades to the north. Come in here, grab them mine detector. I don't use them, but I thought you might want them. Yeah, then come in this room, grab box two. You need that. And then quickly take the southwest exit, guys. Yeah, let me just make a note of that. I need to remember, remember to um, add text onto screen. So, call and spray tutorial. Yeah, now in here, you want to shoot down this... Um, yeah, don't shoot the enemy. You want to shoot down that cipher or drone. To shoot it down, either shoot it in its head or the ring at the bottom. That's it. And then once you've done that, wait for the guy to come back down. Yeah, if he's walking up, just wait for him to come back down. You can try to get behind him in time. You likely won't make it. Yes, yeah, so wait for him to come back down, and then you're going to hold him up. Um, so, coolant spray, that's in the D, that's in the sediment pool, weren't it? Freeze. And um, what else do I need to make a note of? Oh, yeah, um, the loud grating um, just after... Loud grating at star as Raiden, pretty much. Yeah, so I need to remember to put text on screen or rewind the video and just add in some commentary. The problem is, because I'm always talking, it means I've got to delete some of what I said. Yeah, so two things I need to add some text on that I've got to mention. Right, so you're going to come in here next quickly uh, so that guy don't see you. Right, you're going to come over here, guys, and you're going to crawl beneath these pipes. Yeah, loud grate and start off raiding and corn spray sediment pool. Yeah, then when you, when you get to red pipe, guys, crawl beneath it to the south. You'll find a ration. Right, and you're going to use your corn spray on that bomb. That's it. Once you've done that bomb, I think that's bomb number... No, is that number three? I can't even remember now, but um, you've done all the bombs that I've done up to this point. I think it's bomb. I think that's bomb number four. Yeah, right. Once you've done that, come around here, guys, to the southwest. You see, there's a box there. We want to get. I think after this, we need. I think it's two more boxes after this one. Right. You need to actually press triangle to jump over that unit. Yep, that's box one. No, I think that's that's um that's box number four, ain't it? I think. Well, I know I know that's box one, but I mean I think we've got four boxes. Right, and now we're going to do, guys. It's going to take the northwest exit, but try to be careful. The guy doesn't see you. Right, once back out here on the A B connecting bridge, there's going to be a to the north. So you're going to take a path. Yep, out of this door, and into the Shrub B Transformer Room. Yes, two enemies here now. Now, there's loud flooring, so be very careful when you're going around it. Yep, so you see me walking there. Freeze. Just be careful, and then hold him up. Don't kill me. As so once you hold him up, you can be loud. That's it. Shake out his dog tag, and then tranquilize this guy. Yeah, make sure you tranquilize him, guys. Right, then come down here, and you want to hold up this guy. Grab a sock and bullets near the steps on your way down. Yep, hold him up. I think this guy's stubborn. Yep, so I'm going to have to shoot the wall next to him. Now, once he drops his dog tag, you can knock him out with a melee combo. Yeah, like so. And there's a bomb here, guys. So you want to move it out of the way. And there it is. Defuse that bomb. Yeah, so move that door. Close the door on that, um, I guess, mainframe, or whatever it is, the cupboard. Yeah, close the door. The bomb will be behind it. And then freeze it with your coolant spray. Right, get through that code at call. Cool. 
Yep, now here you want to shoot down that cypher. Yep, just shoot down that one cypher, guys. Go back shaft grenade and then quickly continue north. Yeah, screw your camera, we've already destroyed it. Is it in that room? I can't remember now, maybe it's a previous room. Right, in here, guys, in the dining hall, the um, bomb is in the girls' toilets. Yeah, just up there. You can actually see it in the mirror. That should be all the bombs at the moment. So once you've got that final bomb, you can actually grab, grab the sensor for the big daddy. Yeah, so you come back into room where you spoke to Stillman, and now this door will be open at the back here. Yeah, grab that. Sensor B. Right, now we need to head all the way back to where we started as Raiden. Yeah, so you see the time now. Like I say, depending on difficulty, that timer will be lower and lower. On big boss rank, you've only got 10 seconds to get there. Yeah, so all the way back now. Yeah, so reason we shot that Cypher, because if not, he would have been looking for you now. So it saved us having to um, dispose of him on the way back. Right, back in Transformer Room. This enemy should still be asleep because you tranked him. If the other enemy is just getting up, don't worry. He'll not... A caution doesn't actually count as an alert, by the way. Yes, yeah, you get a caution, that doesn't count as an alert. Only an alert <laughs> counts as an alert. I know that does sound pretty obvious, but yeah. Good to know, though. Yeah, so you want to take the north path here to avoid the guard on the bottom. He's walking along the south now. Let's take north path and then into short A pump room. Once in here, carefully avoid the enemy in the middle. And then head up the north, uh, sorry, head up the steps on the west. Come to the roof. And there will be a guard out here now. We're going to hold him up. Yeah, and now the elevator's back there. So I think you have to get sensor B to make the elevator appear. Yep, hold him up, guys. I meant to press start there. Yeah, so press start, let go of square. That's it, knock him out of a melee combo. And they go on the elevator. So it's going to be a boss fight in a second as well. This boss fight's a bit weird. You don't actually, you don't actually have to damage a boss. It's more like a, it's more like a time thing. You just have to survive the boss long enough and then you automatically win the fight. Uh, but did not equip any cardboard boxes here. I did this once and um, what happened if you if you got a cardboard box equipped and you go and fight it, it burns it and destroys it. Now I'm not sure because the trophy can glitch maybe I thought perhaps I didn't get a trophy one time because my boxes had been destroyed. But maybe it's because the trophy glitched so I'm not quite sure. Uh, but just be safe. You're not going to be equipping any cardboard boxes during that fight. Right, and you're going to come to back of the submarine, guys. It's a suspended submarine in the hair. And you're going to crouch and defuse that final bomb. Well, not final. There's a few more yet. But yeah, defuse it. The timer will start. will stop. And then head all the way back. Ready for a boss fight with Fortune. The first boss fight, Ash Raiden. We will start coming across a lot of boss fights now with him. Most of the boss fights all come sort of in the sort of the second half. Yep, so fortunately, like I say, all you got to do is survive her attacks long enough. Um, obviously, do not stand in the fire. Try not to be too close to a barrel when it explodes. As you can see, most of the obstacles will give you cover. But sometimes her lightning will go through it. Or some uh, sort of ray gun, a rail gun. Yeah, see, sometimes it goes through it. So be careful. But normally, when there is no cover left and you're going from left to right, um, you want to do a cartwheel whenever you hear her whistling. So when you hear the whistling, that means obviously indicates her gun's about to fire. I mean, sometimes you just do a barrage. But yeah, when you hear it charging up like a whistle, uh, dodge. Yeah, you don't have to survive for too long. Um, maybe the time goes up on each difficulty. But yeah, it's not too long. Yeah, but once all your cover is gone, guys, you have to start dodging. Uh, running from left to right. Yeah, careful. You do not stand still for too long. Yeah, so just keep going from left to right.
Yep, and just keep dodging. Uh, when if you hear we're about to do an attack. You did get all your health back after each boss fight, by the way. I don't know why I didn't say that earlier. But yeah, we get our trophy, guys, Lady Fortune. That's not a big thing you need to know anyway until big boss rank, because you can heal up on a very easy. But yeah, after each boss fight, your health will heal back to full. Right, so once you, um, I guess, defeated her, you want to come in this gate now, but you want to crawl because there's two Claymore there. And you're going to grab grab a two claymore from crawling and also shaft grenades. And then come this door. Come into the pump room. There's a guard in here. You want to hold him up. Yeah, but a few new guards now around the um, around the struts. Yeah, so hold him up. He's a tough guy. So yeah, shoot near his ear. Blow out his eardrums. And then knock him out after he gets dog tag. Yeah, knock him out with a melee combo. Just be careful, this guy is not looking to the right when you go past him. We do want to take the northeast exit. I'm trying. I think I was looking at my text guide there. Well, I'm going to blame it on that. Right, so here. Yep, that guard will let me walk up and then he'll start walking down. Uh, but we've already got his dog tag. So once he start, starts walking down, you can just go past him. That's it, and into the fire door. Right, so once you're here, guys, wait for him to start walking back. And then go behind him and hold him up. Yep, and then knock him out of a melee combo. After getting his dog tag. Yeah, now heading back to heliport. So remember, the middle path is clear now because we deactivated all the claymore, so you can just run straight across the middle. As long as you're quick enough, that guy on the top will not see you. As you can see, he's back looking around. Right, once back in the parcel room, go back up the steps, the eastern steps in the middle, and take the top exit. Going to be a boss fight now, guys. We're going to be fighting Fat Man. Now, with Fat Man, you can you can knock him to him. Obviously, you want to knock him out of the M9, the tranquilizer. But it's quite tricky because he's got all you can do is hit him in his little bold spot on his head. But that's there's a little tiny bit of it that's visible. Uh, but to knock him down, you can use claymores, you can use stun grenades, or you have to shoot him very uh, six times very fast with a Sockum to knock him down. That's what we're going to be going for. Yeah, once you defuse this bomb, that'll start a boss fight. So yeah, shoot him six times with the Sockum, that will knock him down. And he tried to get headshots with the M9. So first thing you want to do when the boss fight stops, starts, uh, come over to this bomb, guys, on the southwest, near where you start, and defuse it. Right, it's one bomb left, but we're going to try and get rid of him before we do that one. So yeah, wherever, wherever he is, guys, run over to him. Like I say, hit him six times quickly, the sock on, to knock him down, and then try to get a few headshots when he's on the floor. The quicker you can shoot him when he's on the floor, the more shots you get in. Because when he's just falling down, or when he's just falling down, you can normally get a shot in, and it doesn't wake, wake him up. But sometimes, um, if you leave it too long, when you shoot him once, it'll make him stand up. If you want to try to shoot him as, as soon as he can, really, it'll allow you to get more shots in. But yeah, you want to see M9. I mean, the Socom is damaging him, but it shouldn't kill him. The idea is to kill him with the M9. Because on big boss rank, you can't kill any enemies, including bosses. And that's it, guys. Got rid of him. And then defuse his final bomb. If you can't quite get rid of him quick enough, make sure you defuse this bomb before the timer runs out. I leave it to last second, because once you defuse all the bombs, he'll start to put more down. Um, so it just works well that way. But like I say, if you too, if you take too long, go and defuse the bomb before it explodes. And then once you killed him, move him out of the way, and then drop him, and you'll get his dog tag, guys. Peter Stillman. That's it. And then defuse this bomb. Yeah. So pick him up, move him out of the way, drop him, grab his dog tag. Do not forget to do that. 
and they defuse his bomb. Right, there was some ammo there on the top right if you needed it. Yeah, all the ammo here, if you do run out of ammo, it should respawn uh, once you go sort of out, out of the way of where it is. Yeah, once it's kind of off screen. Yep, yeah, and then once you head back south, you'll get a cutscene with the ninja type guy. I suggest. Why did they have to bring. Yep, you get quite a lot from this. You'll get the BDU, you get the BDU u uniform. Um, I just stand, I forget what it stands for. Some, the uniform stands for uniform, of course. Um, disguise, body, I don't know. It does stand for something. Uh, but yeah, you'll get a key card from him. You'll get the BDU. And you'll also get the phone, which you never really need to use. Yeah, so I'm going to come back in here, guys. And I'm going to make a safe. Right, um, so we've done Fat Man, guys. Diffused all the bombs. Yeah, so I'm making that safe. Yeah, so we've just got to finish the outfit now. So all we need now is a AK-74 a weapon. So we look like the enemies in the... Um, in the I think it's a core. Yeah, so it's basically you basically have to equip the same outfit and the same weapon as the enemies um, to look exactly like them. And you can basically just run around them then. So here, very quickly, run along the middle. Um, if you remember, there's a guy on the top here. Uh, but if you just run straight down the middle, he shouldn't get a chance to see you. Just like that, guys. Yep, and out of the south exit. So once it's short F warehouse, go down the steps on the right. All we want to do is get the weapon and then get back out. So straight in here, the weapon is in the top left corner. Uh, sorry, top right. AKS 74U. Yeah, the northwest, the northeast corner in that. Sorry, keep getting that wrong. Yeah, go into that room down below, and it's in the top right corner. Just grab the AK-74, then quickly come back up the steps. Now, as long as you're quick here, this should work out. Yeah, run to the middle, and then crawl. Once you get one claymore, get up and start running to the left. You can use cartwheels to move quicker. There's trapdoors here, and a, a drone will also appear. You see it coming in? But if you're quick enough, you should get through there before it gets a chance to see you guys. Right, make sure you've got the BDU equipped and the AK-74. Like this, that's it. So you look like the enemies. Freeze. Huh? Yep, and then once the enemy walks past, change to your M9 or something else. Hold him up. Yep, and then you want to move him over here. And you can get his dog tag from here. Or you can get his dog tag in the corridor and then drag him here. Yep, hold him up, get his dog tag, that's it. And you want to break his neck. Yep, and then go back to AK-74. So this guard does not recognise you. And then once you turn his back, hold this guard up as well. Yeah, you'll find out why we're breaking their necks in a minute. Yeah, because normally you would trunk these guards, but we're just going to break the neck instead. That's it, get his dog tag and then break his neck. Yeah, once you've done so. Yeah, like I say, normally I trank them. Um, but instead of doing it, I'm just going to break the necks here. Just to work towards a trophy for breaking 30 necks. Yeah, shoot that camera with your sock on. That's camera number four or five. Right, and now we want to... Yeah, I didn't... I thought I missed it. Luckily, I realised. Yeah, make sure you do hit the camera. Otherwise, it might spot you. But you need to shoot it anyway. Yeah, so make sure you back to your AK-74 to equip your full disguise. Come behind this guy and hold him up as well, guys. Yep. And this guy can knock him out with a melee combo. And hopefully you'll get that trophy, guys, for rent money. So if you don't have that trophy yet, that's for knocking out 30 enemies with a melee combo. If you don't have that trophy yet, just knock out a few more enemies, which I break the next on. I'll, I'll tell you when. Because um, some of them on um, break the neck, you might need to use tranquilizer on them. Uh, but yeah, when you use this elevator, guys, make sure you got your full disguise equipped. Because when you use that button, the camera will see you. Yeah, so make sure you got, make sure you got your full disguise equipped, guys. And then you want to go down to B2. Now this guy, he is stubborn. So you either need to trank him or break his neck. 
Yeah, but you want to break a snake to work towards a trophy. So yeah. Shoot your Sockum near this guy, your silenced Sockum. And then break his neck. Yeah, grab his dog tag. Back to your full disguise, otherwise his enemies might see you. Now, do not do any cartwheels. Otherwise, they're going to realise something's very, very wrong with you. Yeah, then you want to come to this locker where nobody's looking in that direction. And melee it to make all the books come out. Now, what you're going to do, guys, when safe to do so. Now, be very careful doing this. The enemies turn around very quickly. Put a book down in an enemy's path. When they've got a back turned. But make sure they're not going to turn back around. As you're putting the book down. Make it so you've got enough time to put the book down. And change back to your weapon. You know before they turn back. Yeah like so. That's it. You actually want to make a safe. You want to make a safe here as well. Yeah. Before you get the box in this room. Save your game. Very very important. Yeah, because if it, if it glitches here, if you make a save here, you should be able to fix it. Yeah, but do not hold anybody up until all the enemies are looking down at the box and their sort of field of view has disappeared. So you do not hold anybody up until they are all distracted with page 3 in the magazine. And then one by one, hold them up and break their necks. But the third guy, if you want, if you still don't have the rent money trophy, you can knock him out afterwards. Yeah, third guy. But the other two break their necks. That's it. So once you've got all three dog tags, yeah, grab this cardboard box. Like I say, save your game here. So I actually got another trophy here, but I had to redo this bit. Yeah, so you, when an enemy looks at the magazine for the first time, you'll get this trophy called um, Catching a Glimpse or something. Yeah, if you see it here, I just had to watch the video back. Yeah, sorry, to catch a predator. Yep, and so you'll get that trophy there, guys. And you also get a trophy for getting all the boxes. So it glitched for me, and all I did, I reloaded my save, and I just ran back in here. And because this one didn't really matter, I just killed all the enemies. Uh, just to quickly get to the box, and you'll see it, it worked now this time. Moving day. I think it might be if you grab the mic before the box. It, yeah, it might be connected to grabbing the mic before the box, or just a bad glitch. Uh, but yeah, grab box four, guys. That should be the final one. And then grab the microphone. Now, listen to that audio. That triggers after grabbing the box. Maybe it's that codec call which glitched it. I'm not quite sure. Um, but when I grabbed the mic before the box, it didn't pop the trophy. But when I grabbed the box before the mic, it did. So I'm not sure if that's just coincidence or not. But yeah, as long as you made the save, guys, before grabbing the box, and it, if it doesn't pop, you can reload it. But what you what you want to do, if it doesn't pop for you, and you made the save, get through this room. Get to the next floor and then save your game. So when you have to reload it, you don't have to redo that bit all over again. Yeah, so you come here, save your game, and then do a soft reset. Load up that one. Quickly kill everybody, grab a box, and then reload this safe back. Um, okay, but in this room, guys, come in here. Make sure you've got your full disguise equipped. Wait for this guy to walk past you. Hold him up. That's it. And then make sure you shoot to the south. Do not shoot to the north, otherwise you might alert the other enemies. That's it. Because he is stubborn. That's what I need to shoot for. And then after he shoots, you just want to break his neck. That's it. Now you need to hold up both his guys before you do anything. So hold him up. And then hold up this guy. That's it. Do not try to kill one when the other is not alerted. Uh, sorry, not held up. Otherwise, he will hear you and he will become alerted. Yep. And then once you're both held up, come into this guy first. He's stubborn. That's it. So just scare him with a bullet. And then once he drops the dog tag, you want to break his neck. Right. And this guy, do not kill him, by the way. You'll find out why in a second. So you want to hold him up. Carefully. That's it. Hold him up. And then you want to grab him. Now you need to drag him all the way back to a door. The southeast door. So yeah, just make sure you got his dog tag first. So yeah, all the way back here. And if you don't get him to the door quick enough, and he knocks out, he becomes unconscious, you just have to keep picking him up until he wakes up. And then make sure you're behind him, hold him up again. And then once you hold up, drag him all the way to that scanner. But yeah, you need to drag him there when he's conscious. 
Right, and this next story trophy can glitch as well, guys. But I point out the cutscene um, you need to watch in order for it to work. I think skipping the cutscene can glitch a trophy if you're unlucky. Yeah, so you might want to make a save here just in case this trophy glitches for you. Yeah, I've had the box trophy glitch for me and this next story trophy, which will be popping in the next few minutes. Right, so if this is your very first playthrough, Amy's is always here. Yeah, on any other playthrough, his location is a little bit random, but your very first... He's always in this south west corner beside the table. So you need to point the directional mic at him and then press triangle. King. Yep. Point it at him and press triangle. Right. And during this cutscene, do not skip it. You need to point your directional mic over here. So you, need, you see this flag stand on the left. Yep. And there's a sort of toilet. There's a door behind that um, metal pillar. You'll hear Johnny talking. Now let's dialogue fully play out. Yeah, you can hear him talking. There's a trophy for listening to him in two spots. This is one of the two locations. Yep, and once he finishes dialogue, he'll say there's no paper. So that's his last. That's his last line. But it's it's quite. He he kind of whispers that line though. So just keep listening until he says there's no paper, and then you know you've done it. There you go, hear it? There's no paper. It's just a little bit quietly, but yeah, that's his last line. And then just press options or, or watch the rest of the cutscene. But yeah, once you've heard there's no paper, you can skip the cutscene after that. Now, after the, code, after the next code call with Amy's, do not skip this cutscene. Do not skip this cutscene. This is one which triggers a trophy at the end. And I found if you skip it, it can mess a trophy up. So do not skip this cutscene, guys, this one. You'll see once you finish this, that will trigger the trophy. And yeah, for some reason, when you skip it, it glitches it. He's coming here. Pick up your AK. And there you go. Yeah, thanks, Amy. So yeah, that one will glitch, guys, if you skip that cutscene. Probably, you know, if they don't, unless it's patched or it's just unlucky. Yeah, and then once you get control, you want to quickly equip your AK, guys. That's it. That's it. Back in disguise, you'll head outside here. Uh, but you've let your hair down now. Right, and you're going to wait for this guy to the north. Just wait for him to go back. And you're going to break his neck. Or, if you want, if you still need a trophy for knocking out 30 enemies, you can just melee him to death. Uh, we'll be going straight in the elevator anyway, so he's not going to wake up in time before you escape. That's it. Just careful, because he literally, he doesn't move, he just turns around. He doesn't walk forward. So just be careful, you do not go too far around the corner, because you might bump into him. That's it. Open the elevator, guys, and now go up to floor one. Yeah, I had to mess, I had to mess about quite a bit of edits. Um, in them parts because like I say because of the moving day trophy and the thank thanks Amy's that trophy as well Because I actually I actually pop them too after completing the game Yeah, then come out here guys that guy that guy should be walking to the south Now be very quick here and you should avoid any incoming cyphers And that guy on the top of the heliport if he's still there yes go right to the, straight to the middle of the four tankers and then come into the southeast door. Right, you're going to come down here, and you're going to go, you're going to go left and into this northwest room. Grab the RGB six, grab the ammo for it. Yeah, if you didn't know, by the way, if you equip like a rocket type weapon and aim it at an enemy, you don't have to go into first person. Just aim it at them, and they automatically start dropping the dog tag. Yeah, go into that northeast room, grab a C four. And the claymore. There's a trophy of getting every weapon with Raiden. He has a lot more weapons than Snake. Yeah, that's the C4 and the RGB6. 
And once this guy walks back, you want to break his neck. Yep, like so. Because otherwise, when we try to leave this room, you'll li likely run into him when he comes back up. Yeah, they come into this room, guys, and grab the PSG one. And then also crouch beneath this vent. And get the tranquilizer attachment for it. Yeah, it's not even an attachment. I think that's another weapon. Yeah, so grab the PSG one and also the PSG one tranquilizer and also grab the ammo. And then come into this southwest room. Now be careful, there's a laser here. So before you run in, shoot that control unit on top of the locker. That's it. And then grab the M4. Right, then come to the far south part of the room, the area. Enter room on the left, guys, and grab the grenades. Yep, some sock and bullets in there as well. Right, that's all we need. Right, and then back out the entrance you came in. Yeah, I think you need a level 4 keycard to get all them. That's why we um, we uh, went to get all that now. Yeah, right, go straight into the far north door. Yeah, you can see the guard is still there at the top of the heliport. Yeah, so back into the parcel room. And then into the northwest exit. Yeah, DE connecting bridge. Right, there's a guy at the top looking out. So we're going to take the bottom path here. Now, just be careful. You want to... These two new enemies... Well, one of these enemies is new, by the way. You're going to hold up this guy. That's it. I think he's a stubborn guard. So you're going to make him shake out his dog tag. And you're going to drag him down the back, out the way of that guard to the west. So you drag him down here and then break his neck. That's it. So the guy to the west don't see him. See so you holding him up. Yeah, I should have got a dog tag before it disappears. Yep. And then this guy, you've already got his dog tag, I think. So he's going to break his neck. Yeah, it's going to break his neck. That's it. And then go up the steps, guys, and take the upper northwest door. That's it. And the guy at the top of the heliport shouldn't see you. Yeah, so back in the sediment pool. So now we're going to get a dog tag from that guy in the middle. Yes, yeah, so come down here, do a U-turn, go left. And once he turns around, yep. Yeah, hold him up, guys. Get his dog tag and then break his neck. Or if you still need the rent money trophy, you can knock him out with a melee combo. It's up to you. Right, and then we're going to take this upper western exit. We are ready to go through the northern door, actually, and do the Harrier fight. But, because there's a few new guides around, just going to get his new dog tags. Right, out here. Yeah, you're going to hold up this guy in the middle. Don't kill me. Yep, get his dog tag. And then we're going to hold him. We're going to drag him over here, guys. Otherwise, his mate will see him. Yeah, so drag him over here. Yep, and then break his neck. Like I say, if you don't do that, his mate will see him. That's it. Once you killed him and broke his neck, you got his dog tag. Head on to the west, and then you want to hold up this guy next. Just careful there. There's a trap door. You see that trap door on the floor? Normally, I've held him up before he's got to this point. So, yeah, just be very careful. Yeah, I didn't mean to shoot him, but it don't matter. Yeah, I mean, you want to break his neck, uh, but, I mean... Either way, he kills him, but yeah, the trophy's for breaking breaking 30 necks, so it doesn't matter. I just mean I've got to kill one more. Yep, yeah, well, he's got that dog tag coming here to dining hall, guys. And hold up this person, Vanessa. I know it sounds like a man, but apparently that's Vanessa. Yeah, so hold up Vanessa, get a dog tag. Yeah, just careful. I mean, that's what happens if you drop your weapon when the guard is looking at you. That's it. Yeah. Get a dog tag, guys. Now, you want to get that enemy next. Now, because I took too long, normally I can get down there and get behind him. But because I was a little bit slow, he's kind of on his way back up here. So, just let him walk past if you're too slow like me. And once you walk past you guys, hold him up. Get their dog tag. Yeah, they're stubborn. Stubborn guards. And um, break the neck afterwards. Or, unless you need the rent money trophy still. 
I have no idea why his name's called Anthony Will Reign Supreme. I know the names after some of the people that worked on the game and stuff, or they picked a name. Right, in here, I'm going to take out that cipher quickly, and then hide around this corner. Yeah, so quickly take out the cipher, hide, and wait for the guy to turn around and then go and hold him up. <clears throat> Got a bit of a sore throat, guys, by the way, so apologies if my voice is a little bit weird today. I've had a sore throat for about a week now, I thought it'd be gone by now, but I guess not. Just a cold weather in um, in Britain. Yeah, it's been pretty cold just lately. Yep, yeah, so you knock him out. Uh, sorry, grab his dog tag and then break his neck. Grab the shuffling nades, you don't really need to. And then what we're going to do now is head all the way back, guys, to the sediment pool. Yes, yeah, so you retrace your steps to the sediment pool and then take the north and exit. You always find when, you know, when winter comes, because it's quite a shock with a change in temperature... I always kind of get ill at the start, and then I don't get ill anymore, you know, for the rest of the winter. Yeah, just as my body gets used to a change in temperature. Yeah, so um, after this, I should be okay, I hope, for the rest of it. Yeah, so um, once back in the sediment pool, head to the north exit. Right, and this way you're going to have the Harrier fight soon. But all these bombs we're about to shoot, depending on what difficulty you're on, there'll be more. I think on I think on Big Boss rank it's like 12 or something. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, you can grab this pen. Tasm into the left. I don't really use it. Right, it's so going to equip the PSG one. Now make sure you shoot the control units. You got that one there. You got one here. Another one there. You got one up here. Uh, you got one near that door, straight opposite. So that's five so far and then this make sure you shoot the control unit on the top can you see the control unit on its head make sure you shoot that yeah do not shoot the siphon kill it because that will detonate the bombs yeah make sure you shoot the site the control unit on its head that's it once you defuse them all be a little cutscene head forward and the harrier fight will begin guys so this is very 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 easy on very easy yeah grab a stinger Grab a thing of bullets or missile, yeah. We're gonna fire bullets. Rocket propelled bullets at the um, Harrier. So yeah, just keep shooting it guys. He drops your ration, so no need to think, wow, what's he dropped for me? He just drops your ration despite the cutscene making it look like it's something really good. Yeah, so when he goes flying into the distance and the lock on disappears, if you can see him and you're quick enough, shoot as soon as the lock on reappears again. And you can normally destroy the rocket, which he shoots at you. And he just keeps spamming the button then. He can hit him as well as he comes closer. But you have to be quick. Yep, and then it's just a means of guys keep it hitting him. But when he's about half HP, he will do a bar barrage of missiles. And at that point, you need to go and hide underneath. Yeah, try not to shoot Snake. I mean, big boss rank, you won't have a radar, it's going to be much trickier. And you're going to have to sort of use the Stinger target to see. If you remember Metal Gear 1, and that Harrier fight, or well, sorry, the Chopper fight, you had to use the Stinger to see where he was. Yeah, it's going to be a case of that on big boss rank. Yeah, like I say, when he's about half HP, he's going to do a barrage of missiles, just get underneath here, that's it, to avoid them all. Then back at the top and machine shooting him. Yeah, so um, if you can see, if the red arrow is on the map, but you can't see him, like I say, it's because he's in the distance, and if you're not quick enough, that's what will happen. So when he goes to the distance, you need to pretty much shoot as soon as the lock-on reappears. If not, then rockets will get through and they will hit you. So if you're not quick enough, just get to the bottom, and then resume shooting. Yes, yeah, so at that point, he, he flies up and he lobs loads of uh, missiles at you. Did you see him coming then? You can normally hit him a few times, uh, but then you'll have to get down below. That's it. Yep. We got him, guys. Harrier. You get a trophy for beating that guy. <clears throat> yep. It's going to save my game here. This is a n this would be a nasty place to die on Big Boss Rank. I actually died here straight after this safe. Because uh, you got a, you got a tricky jump to make. Yeah, just here. 
Yeah, so you got to be quite. You got to be quite careful there. Yeah, you, you do feel quite ashamed when you you mess up that first jump. Right, so you got to quickly go across some trapdoors here. Try to jump down where the two the two different railings meet in the middle. That's a good spot. So where the two railings meet in the middle, that's where you want to jump over and drop down. You jump over that first hole there, and then this hole you have to you have to uh, hang over and shimmy across. Don't try to dodge it over there. I tried. I've even tried uh, jumping onto that bird below and sort of um, doing a bird jump. Don't work. Yeah, you have to shimmy across that gap. Right, there will be a guy looking out this windows. Uh, but he's normally at a far window by the time you get to him. That's it. Obviously, you do not want to be crawling over a trap door. So, just be very careful. Yep, and then here, you need to hug against a wall. And then shimmy across while crouched. Just like at the end of Metal Gear Solid 1. Where you're in the blast furnace and you have to crouch beneath that um, moving hook thing. Which can knock you off. Right here. If you really want to, you can look up and hold your mouth open and close your eyes. Yeah, but be quick, otherwise you're going to smell. And the guards will smell you, trust me. They should have done that, actually. If you get if you get some of your urine on you, yeah, the guards can smell you. Yeah. Right, so um, once over here, you want to lob a shaft grenade. Probably a bit earlier than what I do. Yeah, as soon as you get close to some steps, you want to lob a shaft. That's it, because there's a bunch of ciphers here. That's it, and that will disable them so you can get through here, guys, without being spotted. Yeah, they probably should have made it so some of the um, NPCs it mentioned about you stinking of, you know, stinking of piss. Right, so um, you can skip these cutscenes. No need to watch any of them, unless, of course, you want to. Like I said, I played this game a long, long, long time ago. Right, we're going to come down these steps and head to the west. And we're going to be heading through the northern elevator. Yeah, the shaft grenades here, but you don't need to get them, guys. We've got far too many already. We've got way more than what we're going to use. Yeah, you can leave all them. Don't worry. Yeah, some M4 bullets there. I never use them either. Maybe I can label them as optional in my um, text guides. Problem is, we might need some of these things on big boss rank yet. Well, definitely not the M4 anyway, because that'll count as a lethal kill. Yeah, right, so once you get down to B1, we're going to go right, and we want to go into the water, guys. And we're going to grab the Nikita. Swimming underwater, it's a little bit awkward. Just takes some getting used to. It's not too bad once you get used to it. Yeah. The Nikita, on very easy, it'll be here. So, it, just beneath the first air pocket. Grab the Nikita, and then drive back, uh, drive, swim back. That's it, quickly run up the steps. Yep, spam the button on the elevator. Head inside, and head back up to um, floor one. Gonna get a trophy in a minute, guys, for um, disabling five cameras. There's not many cameras on um, very easy. I think it's like probably total six or seven. Yeah, not many at all. You can, But you can just get the trophy on very easy. Right, there's going to be two gun cameras in here and these do count. Just open this door and shoot them both. There you go. You should get a trophy when you kill one of them. Bye bye, a big brother. That's it. Destroy five cameras. So we've got that one. Then come in here, guys. Jump on the box and grab the Nikita. Don't really need them, but why not? Yep, and then jump on this crate, grab the socket bullets, and you're going to shoot a Nikita. Yeah, some Nikita bullets over there, you don't really need them. Yeah, shoot one through this hole, jump on the crate and shoot it, otherwise it won't reach. Now carefully, go forward and then left and then right. Now watch out for the precedent. Do you not want to shoot him? That's it, and then shoot the control panel at the back, just like in Metal Gear Solid 1. That's it. I want you to destroy the electric floor. Come in this room. Do you read me? Yep, you'll meet the president. And you'll get a new key card now. I think we'll get level 4. Oh yeah, this way you get level 4, I think. Oh, we had level 3 before, didn't we? I thought he reason. 
that it is a me this is card there we go card four get out a trophy guys bohemian candidate right once you've done so yeah we're going to go back down to b1 next Yeah, a few cutscenes to get through. How did you manage? The legendary Solid Snake, my hero. It's that one where Raiden finds out who he is. Yeah, so still no enemies, but there will be when we next come back up here. There'll be one, I think there's three enemies when we come back up. Right, so cartwheel your way to the elevator. And back into the water. Yeah, so here guys, if your health is lower, yeah, if you do not have full health, your oxygen will deplete much quicker, I believe. You'll actually see it on the way back here later. You'll see it's depleting much quicker for me. Yeah, so you want to take this path. You see me going. So you take the first right and then the second left, followed by the first left, followed by the first right, and then left and then right again. It'll bring you down here into the far southeast corner. Press triangle to unlock this door. Just spam triangle to unlock it. And then you need to sort of swim up and swim through the gaps. No, it's not one there. <laughs> yeah. So swim through these gaps in all this um, wreckage. Yeah, you got a string of bullets times 10 there. You don't need to get them. Yep, and then unlock this door, guys. No pressure, literally. I mean, it's not as if your oxygen is depleting as you're opening the door. Yeah, then take a right and you'll come out here, guys, to door which you need key card level 4 to unlock. I'm going to get body armor in a second. This body armor is very, very useful. Oh, yeah, got his fight first with Vamp. So, yeah, very easy way to do this. And I hope this works on Big Boss Rank. Right, so you come over here, guys, to the far northeast corner. Right, and you're just going to go into prone here. And equip your M9. Yeah, I've got the wrong weapon there. Yeah, so equip your M9, guys, and just keep tranking him when he comes close to you. Yep, get a headshot. You'll do a little bit more damage. That's it. Just trank him. Yep, I don't know why, but when you go prone in the far northeast corner, he just... He doesn't do any attacks. He just start. He tries to slowly walk towards you. And he just walks straight into your line of fire. Like I say, hopefully this works on big boss rank. We will see. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit longer. But it's such an easy way to do it and safe. I mean, I saw some guides on this where they mess about with climbing in the water. And they're getting out and punching him and stuff. But yeah, this works really well. I uh, do not take credit for this. It actually mentions this in the official guide. It's got like a, it's got like a strategy for him to, for beating him, and then it says like in very small. Um, or if you want to make a fight really easy, just lay down in north in the northeast corner, and he won't attack you or something. I'm like, what? Yeah, but that's where I got this strategy from. Yeah, it's like they, they intended this to be... They did this on purpose. I don't know why. Maybe this is a really messy fight if you fight him normally. So maybe they put in this little trick on purpose. But yeah, that's it. Oh no, he's got 1% stamina left. Uh, I have no idea why you have to fight a vampire in a water fight. It's weird. You don't really imagine to be fighting a vampire, do you, in a water fight? And there we go, got him. Yep, yeah, Vampire Slayer. Defeat Vamp. Yep, 
Yeah, luckily, I mean, vampires are much stronger than us, but luckily, they can't breathe underwater any longer. Yeah, so once you come in here, make sure you stay low to avoid the mines. You'll see me get hit by one in a minute. This way, I took a bit less health. Yeah, so body armor at the back here, guys. Yeah, grab that body armor. There it is. You can see my oxygen is depleting much quicker now. Yeah, so just for... I don't know why. If you don't have full health, your just stamina depletes much quicker. I don't know why they've made that a thing. Yeah, so grab the body armor. Like I said, we'll need it for later. And then once in the intro out of the middle locker. And that's it. A few cutscenes. And you'll bump into Emma. Now we're going to be babysitting, guys. And escorting her through the... Well, pretty much... The final parts of the game. Yep, time for daddy daycare. So make sure you've got your nappies ready. And your powdered milk. Put your ear against my chest and listen to Okay, alright. Put your ear against my chest. I think perhaps Raiden's been looking at too many of them girly magazines, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, once you send you back in the water, come down here, turn right, and you, yeah, just retracing your I'll say your steps. Uh, retracing your path back to where we were now. So yeah, if you got pissed on earlier by the guard, you can just smell the urine and it will lead you back. Yeah, it should have made it so if you got pissed on, Emma made a comment on it or something. Ew, Raiden, you stink. You stink of Johnny. Yeah, a few more cutscenes once getting near where Vamp was. Or maybe the smell of urine disorientates um, Vamp uh, because of his heightened sense of smell. I don't know, surprised why they didn't play into that urine a bit more. Because they, they normally do, don't they? Little things in this, they really elabor elaborate on them, don't they? Where it can affect dialogue and stuff further on. Yeah, her stamina will deplete much, much quicker than Raiden's. So just be careful. Yeah, so with Emma, you might need to um, get your air back in a few air pockets. You can see where the air pockets are on the map. Um, or, obviously, the massive blue light. So, easily see where they are. Yeah, so just find those small gaps in the wreckages. That's it. I'm going to get my breath back here. And Emma's. Right, and... Um, I'm gonna go. It doesn't matter. I mean, once a once your O2 gauge is depleted, it'll start depleting your health. And um, but with Emma, her health will automatically be refilled at certain points. So don't worry too much if it does get too low. Like before the oil field sequence, her health is normally restored. So it doesn't matter if it's a bit low before that. Right, and there you go. Yeah, once you're out. Now it's going to be loads of bugs around the elevator, and she's allergic to them. So we're going to open the elevator door, and we're going to drag her in. You will have her in the neck lock, so do not be tempted to um, squeeze too hard. Yep, don't spam the button too quick guys, I know you might be tempted, please, please resist. That's it. Once she's in there, go up to floor one. Yeah, there's going to be three guards up here now. We're going to get a dog tags. There's not many more dog tags to get, actually. I think there's six more. Right, hold her hand and escort her out, out slightly. And then you're going to come over here. You're going to hold up this guy. Freeze. <gasps> yep, get his dog tag and then break his neck. Or, I guess, yeah, don't knock him out if you still need the knocking out trophy because he'll wake up before you get to the end. Yeah, this room, you because you're in this room for quite a long time. Yeah, so break his neck, come to the south. There'll be an enemy roaming along the south between the steps. So just be careful. Yeah, you can see him there now on the map. Right, once he's moved away, let go of Emma and go and hold him up next. Yeah, so you see I've got the RGB6 here. 
If you use this, you don't have to go in first person, just aim it at him from the front, and they'll automatically drop the dog tag, and then break his neck afterwards. I use the RGB6, you can use the Stinger or the Nikita, but if you use them, it means you have to go into first person. The RGB6, you just hold it out, aim it at them from the front, and they'll automatically drop the dog tag without having to um, go into FPS. Right, and then drag up to the southeast, and we'll do a final guard here. This guy, you can knock him out if he's still near the trophy. If not, break his neck, because now we are working towards the trophy for breaking 30 necks. Yeah, once he turns away, that's it. Get his dog tag, guys, and break a neck. Right, go and grab Emma again. We're not far from the end now, actually. Yeah, we've got two, three more dog tags. No, sorry, four more. Yeah, four more. Yeah, sorry. Well, that's one I almost forgot about. Right, you're going to come over here first. going to leave Emma. You're going to shoot down that cypher. Yep, just shoot. What an idiot. Yep, just shoot down that cypher. Then shoot this one, guys. Yeah, there's, there's two cyphers there. But sometimes... Well, not sometimes. You normally have to wait for the second one to appear. So I think it's, on the, I think it's at the bottom of the map. And you have to wait for it to rise up. So yeah, there'd be two ciphers. My idea with them was to shoot one, move Emma a little bit, and then shoot the second one. But yeah, make sure you shoot both ciphers before you come out here. Otherwise, they'll trigger a alert. Yeah, you're going to drag Emma all the way to the fork. And then we're going to hold up the guard to the north. Actually, I forgot about this guard as well. There's five, <laughs> there's five guards left. I do get them all, don't worry, I do get them all. It's just off the top of my head. I'm trying to remember everyone. But yeah, hold up this guard. Get his dog tag. I know there's one here, there's two in the next room. And there's one after the oil field. And there's one near the end as well. Yeah, so one's got a dog tag. Uh, break his neck, move Emma over here, and you want to extinguish this fire with your coolant spray. Yep, that's it. And then take the south exit. Now, it's going to be two enemies through here, but you need to be very careful because if you hold up the first enemy, the Mo the southernmost enemy can actually see you holding him up, so you have to move him out of the way. Yes, this guy, you want to hold him up and then move him out of the way. Yeah, don't get dog tap first like I did. You see, I got very close here. Yeah, see how close, look on the map, see how close the other one's field of vision gets. So yeah, you want to hold him up, then drag him back, then hold him up again, and then make him drop dog tag, and then break his neck. Right, yeah, be very careful. Make sure he's walking away, because he turns around pretty quick. That's it. Freeze. Get his dog tag. Yep, then break his neck. Right, then what you can do, you can open that hatch, and then go and get Emma. Uh, because otherwise you're going to have to let her go to open the hatch. It just saves you doing, you know, too many actions. Right, go and grab her by the hand, and drag her. Drag her by the neck if you want, if you find that more appropriate. More, well, it's definitely more effective. It keeps her quiet. Yeah, so open the door and then drag her near this far exit and that trigger a cutscene. Yeah, you need to have her with you. Right, there we go guys. So, when you start this next sequence, it actually counts as one of the story alerts. Yeah, if you die here, it will say, when you die, basically it's like a, you get like a game over menu. And, um, alerts, there's like a different code name. I'll put it in the text guide of what each of the code names mean. But the alert one means how many alerts you've had. I think alert number. You've got N-U-E-T, which means neutralized enemies as well, like how many you've killed. Uh, but if you die here, yeah, thermal goggles are right near you begin, guys. 
and you've got some PSG1 tranquilizer bullets as well. Yeah, and the thermal goggles. So if you haven't got thermal goggles yet, they'll be right beside you when you start this sequence. So yeah, you want to take out all the guards first. There'll be one guard on each of the first two silos. The guy on the third silo is Snake. Yep, and then you want to take out the Cyphus with the lethal one. Yeah, use the tranquilizer version on the guards and the lethal one on the Cyphus. Yeah, you can use the thermals to see them better. Yeah, but you can see now Emma's health has been restored. Just before this section. Yeah, if you die here, it will say alert number one. And if you die again, it will say alert number two. And if you die again, it will say alert number three. Yep, yeah, because if you continue, it does carry over any alerts or anything you've had. I mean, I'll mention all this again on Big Boss when it's important. But just some little things I'm mentioning. Yeah, when you kill these ciphers, they will slowly respawn. Yeah, I mean, one respawns from up there. Just above you. There it is. Yep, yeah, and then once she reaches the far side, though, the first one... Two guards will spawn. I mean, there's three in total, uh, but if you knocked one out, uh, two more will spawn. And when they see her, that does not trigger an alert. Yeah, I know it sounds like it does, but it doesn't. It, I mean, it's not class an alert. When you start a sequence, that's automatically an alert as soon as you begin it. Like I say, if you keep dying and continuing, you'll see exactly what I mean. What I actually do, and I actually kill myself with grenades, and then continue, kill myself with grenades, continue. And my alert number kept going up. So yeah, this is one of the story alerts. So yeah, she'll eventually reach the first silo. And then she'll walk to the second one. And once she reaches the second silo, again, another few enemies will spawn. She'll be ready to tranquilize them. And when she walks behind the second silo, you need to point in the direction of my cutter. Because Johnny will appear again. And that's the second time you hear Johnny. Yeah, just keep a look out for any um, ciphers that spawn. The same ciphers just spawn for you as they do for me. I think they, I think it's, I don't think it's like a random thing. They just keep spawning. I think a certain amount will spawn and they always seem to spawn from the same direction as well. Yeah, some people have said if you let Snake help you here, when he kills a guard, that, that'll count as kills against you. Um, that's something I'm going to test and learn for big boss rank. So don't worry about when it comes to things which are confusing, when it comes to what counts as kill, what counts as an alarm. When it comes to big boss rank, guys, when it matters, I will have tested all that and I will, like I said, I'll let you know for sure. Quite easy to test it, like I said, I tested the, the alerts. Quite easy to test the kills as well, uh, because that game over screen. So yeah, don't worry about big boss rank, guys. Everything will be properly explained. I mean, one good thing as well, it's just like the Metal Gear Solid one, you can pause the timer uh, by pressing options and leaving it on the screen, which shows you what room you're in. Yeah, so now the guards have spawned on the second silo. Yeah, there's one of them, and there's the other. Right, I think that's it now, for the time being. I mean, when she gets past the second silo, a cipher appears behind the second one and tries to come at her from behind. Yes, yeah, like I say, get your get your directional mic out. Yes, yeah, it's quite it's quite a long sequence. This quite a long sequence. On on other difficulties, you can have claymores on her path as well. I mean, on very easy, it's very easy, I mean, I keep saying that, but this part is very easy on, you know, the lowest difficulty. Uh, but there will be some difficulties where there's like clay moss in a path, and it can make this bit a little bit messy. Yep, so once it gets past behind the second silo, it gets behind it, guys. Take out your directional mic. And just listen in. Yeah, she'll bump into Johnny, who's, I guess, r relieving his bowels around the back there. It's probably Johnny on top of that top of that building as well, I bet, taking a piss. Johnny was taking a leak, I bet. Yeah, you see him around the back here. And he'll tell you everything there is to know about diarrhea. What are you talking about? Ancient history. Don't worry about it. Uh I have no idea what you're talking about, but does this mean you're letting me go? Well, you could have found a nicer way to say that, but sure. Better hurry. Thanks. Don't mention it. 
Just run like hell. Oh, you probably smell it from where you are. So, um, you probably know Johnny's gonna be behind there. Just get out fast, okay? Oh. Wait! What? What's your name? Don't have one. Huh? Okay, fine. It's Johnny. Oh, I'm not gonna make it. Hey, if we run into each other again. And there we go, guys, Johnny on the spot. Yeah, so once you got past that, that shit, yep, you get a trophy, guys. If you didn't get that, then you might not have done the first one properly. But you can do it on easy mode, don't worry. I'll point it out again to you on easy mode, um, just in case you didn't get it. Yep, so what's going to happen? A cypher is going to spawn behind her. It will come behind that second silo. If you look in where I am now, you'll see it come from around the back. And I think that's pretty much it on very easy. Yep, and then Vamp will appear again. Oh, there it is. It's coming out. You see it? Comes from behind that silo. Quite sneaky, that one is. Right, so when Vamp appears, you want to just keep shooting him at each leg um, with the tranquilizer. Don't try to shoot him in the middle one. It's a very, very small target to hit. And you've got to be very, very accurate to hit it. So just go for his two legs. You know, his left and right leg. And um, each time one, he'll put Emma in the line of fire and then switch to the other or you can I guess try to shoot through Emma straight to the leg yeah there's solid snake watching Johnny relieve his bowels around the back there I think that's what he's been watching all this time been zoomed in filming it yeah there you go so make him do a little dance that's it that's all you got to do guys very simple Right, so babysitting mission is finished. You'll be back up here. You call up through the hatch. Yep, so we're out this door. We kill the enemies, so they shouldn't be here. Yeah, about to go in the final, the sort of end part now, guys. So yeah, come through this door on the left. You see that level 5 door? There'll be a guy just inside on the left. Freeze. Listen to a top 10 hits. Are you going to shoot me yep, he's stubborn. I think he's been listening to either Tiger or something. Yep, so he's acting like a hero. Yep, get his dog tag and then break his neck. And then pick up this item, guys. This is the digital camera. Yeah, should have 42 dog tags at this point. There's one more to get. Yep, once you've got that digital camera, guys, get a trophy, guys. The photo finish. Right, let's go and finish the game. Yeah, you equip your body armor. Pretty much what you can be using from from now on. Yeah, take the southeast exit. Once you go up the steps. Then you want to take the west exit. But out here, you want to take out all the ciphers. There should be three in total. Just be careful because they can see you. This one will turn to face you eventually. Yeah, shoot that one. Um, shoot that one there. Now it's going to be another one somewhere. I think the other one's to the west. So you might need to go out the doorway a little bit more to see it. Oh, there it is. Yep. So three ciphers all together. Once you shot three ciphers, you are good to go. There's no claymores here now, by the way, either. Yeah, so straight across here. Watch out for the trapdoors again. And all you got to do, guys, is go into the elevator and that trigger a cutscene. Or, or two. Lots of bugs down here. There we go. Right, time to get naked. Yeah, save your game here. You'll get asked. Yeah, I've made a few saves. You've probably not seen me do them. It's because I've made little edits um, just where I made the save. Right, so you're going to get tortured here. It's been a so, while, hasn't it? if you've been holding in all this time, <laughs> release that diarrhea. This is where Johnny would come in useful. Yeah, so you just spam triangle to hold your breath. You remember me, don't you? You've grown. 
high concentration of cerebral implants. Have they altered your memory too? Yep, that's it. Just spam it. It's not difficult. Maybe it's harder on Big Boss. Yep, there'll be a few more cutscenes, and eventually, guys, you'll get another story trophy here. Yep, Olga is back. So you join. Olga, you can't keep this up. They're bound to find you. Listen, I'll free you in a little while. Brace yourself. <clears throat> Yep, so she's going to free you, but she's playing hard to get. Sharing is caring. Yeah, she'll give you a little a groin punch just to make things look real. That's it, then just wait a moment and you'll be free. Yep, free. All your bodily parts feel free as well to shake about and stuff. Yeah, the air is definitely getting to them. So we need to really quickly find something to put on. Because it's a little bit chilly. And I'm afraid that people are going to notice how cold I am. Yep, so out here. And then out this door. And you'll find yourself in Arsenal gear. Right, it's so this guy. Wait for him to walk back. Yep, and then run past him, and it'll be steps on the on the right. And there's going to be a guard around the corner, so just wait for him to turn around. Yep, there's a guard there. Wait for him to turn around. And um, there's actually a box over here. You don't have to get that box. I'm just showing you where it is. But yeah, watch this loud flooring in the middle. And you can roll over this gap. But if nobody sees it, it won't actually trigger an alert. Look, you see it's a caution. And that doesn't count as an alert. Right, and you want to take this far north east door. Right, and come through here, guys. Yep, so once in here, you want to... Activate and listen to each codec call. So if, every time you get a codec call, guys, listen to it. And you want to, you want to run to this door... And then run back. Yeah, we kind of keep running around. If you just stand still, it seems to take longer. I'm not quite entirely sure how this bit works. Um, I mean, you got to get through the calls. But if you just if you just stand still, you'll keep getting loads. You have to sort of run back a bit. I mean, I don't. I stand here for a little while, and then eventually run back, and then I've, and then Rose finally calls. So that's what you're trying to trigger. You're trying to trigger a call from Rose. But I think I've had it trigger quicker than this before as well. But when I ran south, a little bit quicker. I mean, in the official guide, it says to um, check both doors locked. So you go to this door, you go to the southernmost door, and then you just keep kind of running back and forth, listening to all the codec calls. Yeah, so it's a bit, a little bit of an annoying part, because he'll just, he'll just go on for ages. Uh, Colonel, yeah, he'll just keep talking and talking. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so start, run back, guys, and hopefully, oh, there we go. Maybe that's the earliest it can trigger, but yeah, just keep going through codec calls, running back and forth, and eventually Rose will call you. Right, and then shortly after, you'll hear Snake, and there'll be a cutscene or two. You'll get a trophy, guys. Weapon completionist plant, because the sword is the final trophy. Now, before you attack with your weapon, make sure you do this before you attack with the weapon. Very, very important. Right. You want to hold up Snake, well not hold him up, but you want to grab him from behind, choke him a few times, grab him from behind again, choke him a few times, now you want to keep doing this until he drops his dog tag, until he drops down unconscious. That's it, and then when he does, pick him up and drop him, so he drops his dog tag, and there it is guys, the final dog tag, Pliskin. Yeah, so make sure you get his dog tag before you start attacking with a blade, 
because you have to attack with a blade to actually finish this to actually trigger the story to finish um, sorry progress the story damn kid yeah so just keep attacking with a blade guys it it normally triggers earlier than this yeah you use the right analog stick and just keep attacking I mean, I, I ran back. I ran a little bit back towards the door here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so keep attacking with a blade. I guess run back towards the door. I try to find out exactly um, what you need to do there to get through that bit as quick as possible. You know, before the big boss rank. Right. So here. We're going to do... No, yeah. I'm going to do a little glitch here. Yeah, this is when I started getting a bit worried about the box trophy. So I, I thought I'd equip them all. See so if that works. No, it don't. So yeah, at this point, it, it had glitched for me. Like I said, I've got the box trophy on a reload later. I mean, you should still have it. That's me seeing if I had to equip them. Right, so we're going to use stun grenades. These stun grenades, I don't think they count as kills. I will check this ready for big boss rank. But yeah, lob of stun grenades... Yeah, I don't know why, but it actually kills the enemies, but I don't think it counts as a kill. Yeah, so just keep running forward, lobbing them in front of you, like so. Yep, and then once you get to the exit, guys, what you're going to do, you're going to lean against the exit. You're going to hold, yeah, lean against it, hold R1, then you're going to let go off lean. So you, yep, so lean against it, hold R1, let go off leaning, but keep R1 pressed, and then do a melee combo. And then when you do the kick, let go of R1, and it kind of turn you around, and it will glitch you through the door like so. It kind of, it'll kind of advance that sequence much quicker. Because normally you've got to kill so many enemies before the door will open, but that allows you to get through it quicker. And then this scene, just come through here, guys, and let Snake kill them all. You see, these don't count as kills either towards you. Yeah, don't worry, Snake killing them does not count. And then all I do, I equip my blue blade. The blue blade is the um. The one which will knock him out. The red one will kill him. You press square to swap between the blue and black. Uh, blue and red, sorry. Yeah, red will kill him. Blue will knock him out. And R3, the lunge attack, will kill enemies even on even if it's on blue mode. So, so never use the lunge attack. But yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stay here. If enemy, if any enemies come towards me, I'm just going to knock them out. But they shouldn't. So Nate should kill them all. Yep. Try not to mail this mission, this vision. Yeah, so I just mentioned again, guys, that, that little glitch on that back room. Yeah, so you run to the far door, you back, you hold back to, um, you know, stand up against it. You go into first person mode. Then while you're in first person mode, you need to let go of holding against the door because you can't melee and hold against the door at the same time. So you have to let go of that. Then while you're still holding R1, quickly do a melee combo, and then on the kick, let go of R1, and then that will make you glitch through the door. And then after that second fight, guys, yeah, them two fights you just had, they count as the two alerts, by the way. So the first one is one alert, and the other one is the other. So that's three alerts in total. We've got one in the oil field. We've got one in that first fight there. Uh, one in the second fight. So that's your three alerts you allowed in the game, guys. Them three spots. So if you ever continue in any of them rooms, it's going to carry over another alert, and then another one, and then another one, for example. Yeah, just letting you know, guys, where all the alerts are. So here, you want to have the Stinger Missile ready. On very easy, you only have to kill three of these. On big boss, I think you have to kill 20. So it's pretty mad. But yeah, on easy, you only have to kill three. But yeah, you always want your body armor equipped. I didn't mention, but I have mentioned it before, how important it is. But yeah, you pretty much want your body armor equipped all the time now. Yeah, so to kill these, you're just going to aim on the... You're going to hit one in the knee. And then when it drops its head, you're going to shoot it in its head. And that will kill one of them. And then... But once you kill the first one quickly, you want to run back a bit. Because a second one will try to jump on you. So you shoot one in the knee. Then in the head to kill it. Then you run back about five or ten steps. And then kill the one which jumps on you. And then kill the third one. And then that's it, guys. Done. Yep, so knee shot. Knee cap it for Stinger. Yep, and you probably noticed as well, you get all your ammo refilled after the torture scene. 
Right, so you kill the first one, he'll jump on you, you run back, dodge him, and kneecap, and then the head, and the third one, kneecap on the head. Yeah, they just keep spawning, uh, but like I say, big boss, you have to kill 20, very easy, you only have to kill 3. Right, we've got one more boss fight, guys, there's no escape sequence like there is on Metal Gear Solid 1. Like I say, this feels a much shorter game. So it's going to make a save here, because there is a misc trophy in on the end credits, which can be quite easy to miss. The Arsenal AI is corrupted beyond repair. I admit that I underestimated you. Oh. I'll squeeze the answers out of you instead, my son. So yeah, I mean, this guy is... Yeah, I wasn't ready. I was looking at my notes, I think, and I wasn't watching. But yeah, just be ready to um, spam triangle when he grabs you during the cutscene, <laughs> like so. And it's, it's quite easy. Um, I mean, it's going to be different on big boss rank, but for now, just kill him. Um, you just use your R1 to um, attack him with a blade. Obviously, try to cartwheel through some of his attacks. What you want to try and do is just try to get behind him and attack him from behind. Because if you come from the front and he's about to do an attack, his attack will likely hit you. But if you try to run, if you try to run behind him, most of his attacks should miss, even if you don't know what's coming. Uh, but when he's doing the fire, you know, try to kind of dodge out of the way. You know, if you can't wheel. Yep, so you just attack him with a blade, guys. You can normally get a few hits in until you knock him down. And then you want to sort of back up and wait for the next opportunity. Yeah, so watch out for the rockets. And yeah, that's what happened if you're sort of running towards him. That's where you need to be trying to run behind. Yeah, if he grabs you by his tentacles, you will need to spam his triangle to get him to release you. Yeah, we're using a blue blade. So make sure you press square to change it to blue. Remember, we're trying to knock him out, not kill him. Yeah, so um, when he reaches half HP, or half stamina, I guess, he will get a little bit more aggressive. Just try not to get too close to the edge like I am, because he can knock you off. Yeah, then what we'll start to do is when he does his fire attack, he'll sort of lunge at you as well, so to be careful he don't catch you with that. Yeah, so on the final cutscenes, don't skip them too fast. When you get to this cutscene where Snake and Raiden are stood beside each other, you're going to watch this one. Now you can press R2 to zoom in and use the right stick to look at to move around. Yeah, and what you need to do is when the camera pans, pans around to the front of them, press R2 and look between them and you'll see Vamp in the distance. You don't actually need to move the camera, you just need to press R2 and that pops a trophy. So yep, yeah, hold R2, and, and my own life. yep, I'm holding R2, there he is, Vamp is just in the middle of him, and you'll get a trophy guys, a Vampire, that's the scene Vamp during the end cutscene, and that's for the final cutscenes guys, of course. I'm going to skip most of these because they do take a long time, I remember now, today is the day I met you, <laughs> that's it, Yep, so skip the cutscene, that's my final results. So yep, I saved, I saved 12 times, had three alerts, which are mandatory. You cannot get less than three. A cut buff, that's would be in the tanker and the plant. A complete stealth, 
That's completed without any alerts, which are not mandatory. Like I say, don't worry about that. If you didn't get that now, you will get it on your big boss rank, no matter what. You will unlock the digital camera. That's all you would have unlocked at this point, guys. And that's it, the very easy playthrough. Make sure you make a save, uh, because you need to save all these dog tags in order to unlock the um, unlockables, which you need for trophies. Yep, so that's the first playthrough done, guys. Like I say, this will be its own video, but we've got to do EC, all dog tags, big boss, and then um, all the extra modes. So in these next two videos, which should be going up today, we're going to be doing the special modes and the VR missions. The special modes you need to do, there's a few trophies from Cast and Theatre. You need to do one snake tail, you need to do boss survival, and you need to get first place on 50 VR missions. The VR missions are going to be a separate video, and all those other modes I've just mentioned will be in this one you're watching out, guys. So to begin, go into special on the from the main menu on the title screen, and you want to go into cast in theatre. You need to complete a game first, well, but we've already done that. So cast in theatre, you want demo eight, um, Solidus versus Raiden, the final battle. You want to change the original Raiden to Rose. Yeah, so change Raiden to Rose and change Solidus to Raiden yeah just make sure it's a normal one so yeah change Raiden to Rose and Solidus to Raiden that's it you get a trophy first for playing your first one casting theatre and for watching Rose kill Raiden you'll get that trophy guys love hurts that's the two easiest ones next up we're going to do snake tail so the quickest one to do is a wrongdoing so come back onto main menu and go in snake tails and yep do a wrongdoing the one at the top on the original trophy for this for the um i think the original hd remaster on ps3 you had to do every single one i think uh, but for this you only have to do one you can't really watch speedrun guides on this because then do it on new game on um, new game plus where you start with the m9 already your very first time you have no weapons to begin with guys so since you spawn in don't worry, this takes literally like a few minutes. Yeah, grab this ration and then go on this exit on the right. Come downstairs and take the northeast exit. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. Yep, and then come out here and head downstairs and then take the lower northeast exit. I like to take this way because this way you don't have to get seen by anybody and you can literally run straight for the exit. Now in the bottom here, you want to kill the guy in the middle. That's it, just choke him. And then go up the steps guys and take the far north exit, the upper north exit. Yeah, it's a good ending and a bad ending for, for this. Sorry, we have to go in this room first to see Amy's yep, story related. Getting ahead of myself there. Yeah, come in this room first, guys. The upper middle, um, northwest room. Just get through that text. Now you have some weapons and the coolant spray. Yep, now you can take this exit. Right, once you come out here, you want to kill the three ciphers. Try to be quick because otherwise they might see you. You can either shoot the gun for a quick kill. If not, just shoot the, um, the top of the cipher, you know, the ring. You can shoot that three times and that normally get rid of them as well. But yeah, three of them, kill them, and then head into the far northeast exit. Like I said, there's a bad ending and a good ending. The good ending, you have to go to where you rescue the hostages, I believe, uh, back in the story, and rescue them, and then come over here. Yeah, just roll into the sky and then head up and enter the upper east exit, and we're going to head up to the heliports. Yeah, good ending, you rescue hostages, and then come all the way back here, and you fight Fat Man. But a bad ending, you just go straight for Fat Man, guys. So that's what we're going to do. There's no reward for getting the good ending, I guess. Perhaps perhaps a new dialogue at the end. But yeah, once you get to the top, just skip through that text. Right, it's so got to kill Fat Man. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to defuse this bomb to the east. We've got 45 seconds before I've got to defuse the first two bombs. Right, before I defuse the second one, I'm going to try to kill him. So six USP shots rapidly to his body will knock him down guys and then go for a few headshots. Try to hit him as soon as he falls down. 
if you can, because then you get more shots in. If you leave it too long, normally when you hit him, he'll recover and stand up. But if you hit him as soon as he drops down, like that, he will not normally recover that quick. That's it. Like I say, six shots, there will be ammo around the area. You've got that rush move picked up if you do get low in health. Just watch your bombs. I cut it a bit too close here. You can see how close I get here. Wow. I think I had literally like two milliseconds. Try not to cut it that close. It's because I was trying to kill Fat Man. Because what happens when you defuse the first two bombs, he will normally try to place them all around the map. But if you can try and get rid of him first, that won't happen. That's also why I try to leave it until last second. Not too late like I did then, but that's why I try to normally leave it till last. Um, because the longer it takes you for you to defuse some bombs, the longer it's going to take for him to place more bombs. So it just gives you more time to try and knock him down. And yep, yeah, once you killed him, guys, you get that trophy. And you can't skip the credits. So once you've got the trophy, you can press all four back buttons, shoulder buttons, options and touchpad. Hold them all in for five seconds and that hard reset the game. You can either do that or watch credits, it's up to you. I'm just, I've got a trophy, I've just reset the game, like I say, hold this four shoulder buttons, options, and touchpad in five seconds. Right, so what we're going to do next, guys, back on to um, special. Yep, and we're going to do boss survival next. We're going to fight us Raiden. Raiden has more weapons. Yep, and you want to choose easy mode. Ready? Right, so what we're going to do first, come over here, grab the ration, grab a shaft grenade, and um, come over to this railing. But try to be as close to them crates as you can, and then jump over there. Just press triangle. Remember, jump over the railing, close to the crates, otherwise this will not work as well. Now wait for it to lean over with a gun, wait about a second, and then jump back, and then quickly shoot her like so. What you want to try and do, yeah, so when she leans over, wait a second, Press triangle, top back. Yeah, as you're hopping back over, hold L1 and hold square. So as soon as you regain control, you'll automatically sort of lock onto her. But don't shoot straight away, because normally you'll miss and hit the railing. You normally just wait a moment and then shoot. So wait for her to um, lean over, wait a second. Jump over, hold L1 and square. You'll aim, wait a very quick moment and then shoot. And then jump back over guys and just repeat that. It works really well. You'll see here, I don't take any damage. I mean, obviously it's gonna be a bit different on high difficulties, but I did actually try this on hard. It works quite well on hard as well. So hopefully it's gonna work on um, a big boss rank. And there we go, guys. Yeah, I pick up all the rations because on some of the later boss fights for this boss survival, for, exper for example, the Tengus, you can lose a lot of HP really quick, so you gotta be careful. Okay, so for this one, soldiers, head all the way back, grab the rations and the ammo, come back to the crate and try to crouch behind it. I'm trying, not having much luck, and I messed up again. Yeah, so crouch, then once you crouch, go into first person and just keep leaning out with L2, and pick off the enemies as you can. Try not to take too long, because one at the back will start lobbing grenades if you take too long. What normally happen is once an enemy has fired at you. They normally pause in place for about two seconds. So you can hide behind cover. Once you stop firing, quickly hop, pop out and shoot them before they go back behind cover. Like I say, once they fire, they pause in place for about one or two seconds before they go back behind cover. And then once you kill the first four, them three enemies will sort of charge towards you, but they're really easy. Just shoot them one after the other because they're all walking towards you. Right, so up next is Fat Man. So we've got a minute to defuse the bombs. So um, you might want to get rid of him first. One easy mode, he goes down really quick. I think Snake Tails, I think that's on normal difficulty by default. Yeah, we can see how quick he goes down here because he's on easy mode. So again, six shots to his body. And then try to go for headshots, guys. That's it, got him. Nice and easy. Now, if you've got time... The ration is on the southeast corner. There it is. That's the ration if you need it. And you should have any ammo on all the other corners. I mean, there's some there. Just make sure you give yourself enough time, guys, to defuse the C4 bombs. 
I mean, at the very least, you want to try and grab the ration and grab the stun grenades over here. Yep, stun grenades just there. At the very least, just make sure you grab them. Because you're still going to use the stun grenades for the Tengus and um, the rations can always come in handy. Ready, go. Right, how are you fighting next, guys? So grab a stinger. Grab a stinger bullets. And then start shooting the Harry a few times. Then once Snake throws down the ration, you can go and pick it up. Yeah, you, you die so quick on the Tengus because you don't have body armor. Yeah, so if you remember, when he goes into the far distance, if you're ready and you're quick enough and you've already got your reticle on him, as soon as he can be locked on, fire a rocket and you should normally hit him and destroy the rockets he's shooting at you. That's normally when he flies into the distance. You can normally tell where he's gone because you can see the trail from his thrusters leading to where he's sort of hovering. Yep, and then resume shooting him, guys. Now, when he gets about half HP, he'll try to fight a barrage of missiles at you. At that point, quickly run downstairs and hide below. And while you're down there, you can also grab the items. Yes, you see him then. See a sparkle. Yeah, if you're ready, you can get a few hits on him. As he does a flyby. Yeah, she's got half HP, so any minute now, here we go, he's going to do this missile barrage. When this comes, guys, go downstairs to avoid it. Like I say, grab the ammo while you're down here. Right, once she's done so, back upstairs and resume shooting him. Just be careful because she'll do a barrage of missiles more often now. Yeah, I think his rocket's got through there. Yeah, if you're not, if you're not quick enough when he flies into the distance... His rockets will get through. If that happens, just make sure you quickly go down below to avoid them. If you're down below for too long, he will shoot at you down below. That's where you want to keep switching. Uh, so the rockets are always going to try and hit you at the top. And then the bottom will always be a safe place. Yeah, so if he does this, if you're not quick enough to um, attack him before he, before he begins that attack, go down to avoid it. Yeah, but, and then once you're sovereign, guys, just keep shooting him. You get quite a few hits in there. I think Snake actually hits him there as well. Yeah, so one more hit and he should be toast. I'll get him on the flyby. Right, so next up is a vamp. Yeah, very easy strategy for this one. So first grab the stun grenades on the right, then head around in a clockwise manner all the way to the far northeast corner. Crawl, um, crawl, lay down here and then just nudge southwest a little bit just so you can get more range when you're zoomed in like so. If you're too far in the corner, you'll not be able to move much. And then we're going to equip the RGB6 and just shoot Vamp whenever he appears, guys. Nice and easy. He won't attack you here. He'll normally, he'll always try to walk towards you and then he'll attack you when he gets close. So you've got a massive window of opportunity to get attacks in. I mean, you can use a different weapon if you want, just RGB6 works really well here. And Snake doesn't have this weapon. That's why, like, like I say, that's why I choose Raiden. I think they only have their weapons, which they have in the main game. I think that's why Snake doesn't have much. Yeah, I think after this one, you've got Tengus. You can, like I say, you can do this on hard. You Maybe you think it's going to give you some nice practice for big boss rank. Uh, but pop this on hard, guys, you get much less ammo, less less rations, and of course, all the bosses are harder. So you're going to make it even harder for yourself. And the thing is, on this, you don't have all your body armor and things. You know, you don't have everything at your disposal. So now I've got to kill the Tengus. So I'm just going to use my, um, my stun grenades, guys. And this way, your ration is going to come in handy. So yeah, don't just spam your stun grenades. Wait before you lob the next one. Because it does take the enemies a little bit of time to spawn in. You know, the next wave. Yep, so that's what the second wave done. Yeah, grab all the ammo on your way up. Oh. 
And once you run out of stun grenades, just change to any weapon, guys. Either, I guess, automatic. Or you can switch to the RGB6 if you want. Well, I think it's a one more wave. I've got plenty of stun grenades left, though. I think that's it. I think that's it. Oh, there we go. Yes, yeah, so next up is Metal Gear Race. On EC, you only have to kill three of these. Again, if you're playing this on the harder difficulty, you have much more that you have to kill. But on EC, you only have to kill three. So you actually just want to go for a knee shot and then a head shot. And that normally instant kill them. And then once you kill the first one, run back a bit to avoid that one which tries to jump on you. And then kneecap him and then head shot. And then the third one, kneecap and headshot, guys. Mole will spawn in. We've only got to destroy three. That's it, kneecap and headshot. Right, and the final one is Solidus. Yeah, on this one, if you're playing a snake, all you have is your is your fists. Your fists do actually do quite a bit of damage to him. But yeah, it's riding. You have the, the um, sword, the high frequency blade, I believe it's called. There is a ration here in the sort of northwest corner. Uh, in the corner, there it is. Yeah, just by the cliff, the edge of the roof. What's wrong with you? Yeah, so just keep attacking him, guys. I always try to sort of run around him because then normally you're going to avoid any attacks he tries to do as you get close because all you want to try to do is knock him down and then back up a little bit because once you knock him down and he jumps back up he'll also do that, always do that fire dash and then he'll normally fire the two rockets or try to grab you with his tentacle but if you always try to run around him you'll normally avoid them I mean then I ran directly into him that's why that happened like I say try to run around him and then most of this attack should miss. And then eventually, once it gets to about half health or half stamina, he'll shed his tentacles and get a little bit more aggressive. He'll do more fire dashes here. But also at the end of his fire dash, he'll do like a massive lunge. So just be ready to um, dodge away when he does that. I mean, he does get me a few times here. There we go. Yeah, you know, normally know because he'll, he'll do like a... Um, Two or three dashes and then he'll make like a noise. Yep, like so. And then you want to dodge away. Yep, and then just resume attacking him, guys. Yeah, sometimes he might lunge at you straight away, so just be careful for that. And that's it, guys. So you get a trophy, no boss of mine. So that's Snake Tails, Casting Theatre and the Boss Survival done. So all that's next guys is first place on 50 VR missions and you can jump onto the easy all dog tags, soy mode and then big boss rank. So you have to do 50 of these for a trophy and you have to get first place. You don't have to do every single one like you did in the original. Yeah, you just have to get first place on 50 and you also get a trophy for completing your very first VR mission, which is pretty much going to come no matter what. So the ones we're going to do, there's a lot of these. I think there's like 500 or so. I, I, I'm not sure exactly, but there's a lot in, you know, in total. But yeah, you want to go on missions, uh, code name. Now, this is very important. Your name wants to be up, up. Well, U, U, <laughs> down, down, L, R, L, R, B, A. Yeah, so U, U, D, D, L, R, L, R, B, A. And okay, that's kind of, I think that's economy code. Uh, but you put that in and it unlock every single VR mission. They're all unlocked. They're not completed, guys, but every single one is unlocked. So U U D D L R L R B A. And then go from the top, we're gonna go into um riding, sneaker mode, and all we're gonna do, we're gonna do five all ten sneaker mode missions for you know all the um different categories in order, the different characters. So this first one, just run past him when he walks to the east. And that's the first trophy you'll get, guys. Piece of cake. Like I say, you have to come first. The trophy is for coming first on 50 VR missions. Now here, I wait for that bottom guy to walk east and I run behind him, quickly lob him. But you want to lob him so that guy in the middle sees him, like so. Because otherwise he will walk east and he'll see you as you run up to the exit. So you, run, you wait for that bottom guy to, look, to start walking east. Run behind him, quickly throw him, guys, and then go right and up to the exit. So this one, 
This guy on the left, you're just going to roll into him or cartwheel into him, I guess. Well, dodge, I'm going to call it dodge. And they're going to come up here. You're going to wait for that guy to walk back and then run to the exit. Yeah, most of these are pretty similar because we're going to do sneaker mode, all 10 sneaker modes, and um, with five of the characters, most of them, like I said, are going to be very, very similar. Um, but there's just a few slight variations, which means slightly different approach. So for this one, wait for him to turn south, run behind him, come up here, and if you time it right, you can literally run straight past that guy as he turns south. But if you're a bit too quick, you might have to wait a moment for him to look south, and you just quickly run behind him. I don't know, but all the enemies are pretty much deaf on this game. Well, in the VR missions anyway. So you want to come up here, just like a guy to the north sees you. And once he walks past that corner, throw him. Now wait for that guy to the north to look away. And then run across the loud floor. He'll look towards you. And then as soon as he looks back, run back over to him. Throw him like so. Then jump over the railing and drop into the exit. Yeah, timing is very, very important on a lot of these. If I do something in a certain way, then it's for a reason, guys. And yeah, follow that strategy as close as possible. So here... Quickly climb over that, run across, over here, now wait for that guy to look down, that's it, then run forwards, go right, go down and hide behind this guy there. That's it, he'll walk back, cartwheel or dodge across that loud floor, and into the exit guys. Nice Most of the strategies I'm in employing here, they'll work for the other characters as well, that's why I use these strategies. Now here... Yeah, cartwheel over him. Now walk on the wet floor. Cartwheel to that corner. Put all footprints in that corner. Then cartwheel back. And then go right on the wet floor and stop at this corner. When he walks over there to investigate the footprints, run behind him. And then come down here. Take right at the bottom. And up here. And then quickly run behind this guy. There you go. And up to the exit. I took a little bit too long there because you saw me get stuck on the wall. I press against the wall by mistake, but you can normally, that last guy can kite wheel into him or throw him or just go behind him like I just did. Here, quickly go up the steps, go down these steps, now wait on this corner for that guy on the right to turn around, there you go, and then quickly run here, stay beneath the camera, stay in the corner behind him, and then wait for that guy to walk east, and then sneak in behind him guys and head up to the exit. Remember, you need to get first place on 50 missions. Right, this one. Yeah, wait for him to turn away. Then quickly run past him, go right. Wait a moment for that middle guy to turn south. Go past him, go behind this guy. And they go on the exit, guys. The reason you can throw him or attack him, but the reason is, with other characters, the enemies are more aware. And sometimes if you attack one enemy and leave one's too close by, he'll hear you. So a lot of them, it's just safer to run by and not touch them. So in this final one, off riding, just a normal riding. Yeah, come up the steps, wait a moment. If you don't wait a moment at the top, this guy here might see you. And then you hide in that alcove, wait for him to walk past, dodge over the loud flooring. Come down these steps, go across here. And then wait for that guy to go to the middle. And then run past him, guys, like so, and into the exit. Nice work. So that's 10 out, of 40, um, 10 out of 50, 40 left to go. Like I say, if you do all sneaker mode, they're all pretty much the same. Just a, a very few small variations. So now go back to character. Now you want Raiden Ninja, VR missions, and sneaker mode. Okay, so this first one's pretty much the same. Just wait for him to go to the east. The enemies are going to be more aware now with Raiden Ninja. Yeah, you'll find the further down you go in the character list, the more aware the enemies will be. Yeah, so like I say, the enemy's going to be more aware. Right, put your sword away straight away. Then run up to this guy and throw him once he walks back. Remember, make sure... The guy in the middle sees him when he lands. Then he will not look east and you can run straight up to the exit. Yep, so first place again. Right, 
Right, again, you're going to roll into him or dodge into him. Now, I did see that guy in the middle actually notice him there. Like I say, it's because they're more aware. So, actually, you can just go straight up to the exit then. Yep, level three. Yeah, this one is the same. So again, just wait for him to look down, run past him, go to the middle, and wait for the top right guy to look down, and then run past him and into the exit. Nice work. Yeah, now that guy's more aware. Do you see how quick he saw me then? So to let him see you, then run right to a railing and then up. And then throw him as he comes around the corner. Wait for that guy at the top to look right before you walk across the last floor in. Then he'll look towards you. Then when he looks back, run up to him quickly, throw him, jump over the railing and drop into the exit, guys, just like we did before. Yeah, the enemies are much more aware now. Just be very, very careful. So this one, exactly the same as before. Jump over here. Wait for him to look down, yet then run up and then right and then hide behind this guy. That's it, he'll walk up, then come around here, dodge across the loud floor and into the exit. Yeah, that's why I've adopted a lot of these strategies because they work no matter um, the awareness level of the enemy. Yep, yeah. I mean, assuming all the enemies are in the right, the same place. Right, so um, same one again, go into the wet floor. Then cartwheel over here, run around in that corner for a moment, cartwheel back, and then run east on the wet floor to the wall, and then wait at this corner. Right, when he goes to investigate the footprints, run past him. That's it, pretty much home free here. We've got one enemy at the end, remember. You can cartwheel into him if you want, like so. And then run up to the exit. Right, for this one, I believe this is the same again. Yep, so up here, up the steps, come to this corner, wait for that guy to look to the bottom. That's it, run past, run beneath the camera, come behind him in the corner, wait for that top guy to walk east, and then go the steps behind him and into the exit. Nice work. I spent pretty much a whole day on all these VR missions, just trying to find out what one's quicker to do. And, but yeah, it just seems better off just to keep doing the same 10 missions. Right, once he looks north, run past him. Be quick here, the enemy's much more aware. Wait for a moment for him to look, the middle guy to look south. Wait behind this guy, that's it, and then go to the exit. Like I say, if you attack him there, because the enemies are more aware, the middle guy might hear you hit him, and he might look in your direction. So just play, just be a pacifist and don't attack anybody. Right, so come up these steps, wait a moment at the top. Right, and then come up here, quickly into this alcove. Once he walks past, go behind him, dodge across the loud floor. Down these steps, and then go west. Now wait for him to go to the middle. There's cameras here now, so be careful. And then go to the exit, guys. That's it, yeah. Two cameras there now, so be very careful. Like I say, there's always some very small uh, tweaks, uh, depending on what character you're using. So that's Raiden and Raiden Ninja. We're going to move on Snake next, because the third... I didn't mean to go back on that. Yeah, the third character's Raiden doesn't have any sneaker modes. Uh, streaking, yeah, I think it's the... Um, yeah, X Raiden. Yeah, don't bother doing that one. So Snake is going to be next. Yep, so VR missions and sneaker mode. So you'll see a lot of the layout is going to be slightly different now. I mean, the level will still be the same, but the enemy placement will be different. So quickly run up here and hide in the alcove quickly and press against the wall. Once you walk past, go in the exit. Congrats, snake. So this first character, just like the basic snake, the enemies have a similar level of awareness at, like the first uh, riding character. Right, come all the way to, to the right, hide against this wall, wait for that guy on the right to walk past, go behind him, that's it, and then once he turns left, go into the exit. Congrats, snake. 
Right, so we're going to go behind this guy here in the middle. Just wait for him to turn left. That's it. Come up. Wait for this guy to come down and then go past him. Now, once you, once you go past him, guys, stick to the right. Otherwise, that guy on the southeast, he probably won't see you here. But on the levels where they've got more awareness, when he looks north, he will see you. So that's why when you run past that guy in the middle to go north, quickly go to the wall on the right. Now here, hold square and lob a magazine to the right so that bottom guy hits it. And then run along that middle path, stick to the right, hold square to charge the magazine throw and lob it to the far north. And it'll hit the wall and it'll attract the guard which is looking at the path which is blocking the exit. Yeah, just follow that exactly. I know it's a bit fast there. Try to follow it exactly. Right, you're going to come to right, wait for him to turn around and see you. Then come back over here and then throw him. That's it. And then you want to wait for that guy at the top to walk past the wall. That's it. So you can come past the wall when his field of view is not going to see you when you run up to it. Then when he turns around, run up to him, throw him, jump over railing guys and drop into the exit. Yeah, I think, yo, well, I guess the enemy's a little bit more aware here than what they are on the first one that's riding. But we are over halfway, guys. This is number 28. Okay, so now we're going to come up here slightly. Wait for that guy at the top to turn around. Otherwise, he might see you. Here, dodge, and then but hold the dodge button so you go straight into a crawl. Crawl past the corner. Then come to this guy, knock him out. Well, just melee him, and then come up to the exit, guys. If you knock him over the railing, don't worry. It will not count as a kill. Apparently, if an enemy falls over a railing, it doesn't count as a kill towards you, so it will not subtract points from your score. Alright, so for this one, there's actually two enemies coming up now, so this one's a little bit tricky. So I'm onto the wet floor, dodge into a corner again, put your footprints there, dodge back, then wait by the corner. Now you've got to get this very, very precise. Just as that enemy at the back walks past you, quickly tuck around the corner, and you can just make it, guys. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky, but you can just make it. You might find it better looking at its field of vision on the radar and once that sort of goes past a corner and you see a tiny gap run past like i said it's very tight but that's why we did it uh, with a massive score so i think it's supposed to take much longer like i say timing is very very important right here walk up the middle stay beneath the cameras now you need to quickly headshot him when he comes around the corner then headshot this guy when he stops there you go very important you headshot them to the m9 then come up here, watch your cameras, wait for that guy to turn right, wait for him to turn back, and then run around there and you can just get past him, guys, and into the exit. That one is a little bit tricky, but I spent a lot of time on that one. You do need to headshot them in some sort of way to get past all of them, just because they're so alert, they're so aware, I guess. Now here, it's going to knock on the wall, and you're going to melee him just as he comes around the corner like so. You'll have to move forward a bit, otherwise your final melee might miss him. And then quickly come up here, guys, and nip into the exit while the enemies are looking away. Like I say, you just got to get the timing precise, because if you're too late or too early, your combo might miss him, or he might see you before you get a chance to hit him. Now, it's a slightly different. Come up here and wait here for a moment. You see that guy? He's actually further along now, that guy up here. Yeah, wait a moment and then come up a bit and go behind him once he goes past. Dodge across that loud floor in. And then come here. Now wait for that guy to turn. Go and throw him. And then quickly come up here and into the exit. So like that, guys. Yeah, wait for him to turn right. That middle guy. Well, the, mid the top right guy, I guess. You yeah, wait for him to turn right. Go up to him, throw him. And then quickly sneak in the exit behind the other dude. So that's 30 done, 20 more to go. So we're gonna place Pliskin next. And VR missions, sneaker mode again. So again, the enemy's gonna be a little bit more alert than what they were with normal snake. But you find a lot of the levels, they're like the riding, the riding layout, uh, enemy layouts now. So here, just wait for the enemy to walk past, then run behind him and into the exit. Yeah, if you do kill anybody, by the way, I mean by your weapon, it will subtract 2,000 points from your score, I believe. Now again, wait for him to walk back, then quickly throw him. Be quick enough so that his friend sees him laying on the floor. And then he'll, he'll look down 
and it'll give you a chance to run right and then up and not worry about getting spotted. Right, level three. Yep, so you're gonna wait for that guy to walk north and then gonna roll into him. The guy in the middle will hear something and he'll go south to investigate. And you can quickly come the exit, guys. And move on to level four. Yeah, don't take too long to do. Like I say, I spent a whole day on these, just trying to find out a quicker way to do these and try and find out if any were quicker than others. So this one's quite easy. Just wait for him to look south, run past him. Wait for this guy to look south, run past him as well. You have got to be quick because they do change direction pretty fast there. But you do get time to hide and then run behind him uh, before they turn back. Yeah, there's some, there's some photography ones which you can complete really quick. You know, but some of them do take a long time. Yeah, so here, run right straight for railing. He should see you. Come to wall, throw him. Now wait for that top guy to look uh, right. Then run up to this wall. He'll look left. And then when he looks back, right again. Run up to him, throw him. Jump over the railing, guys, and drop into the exit. Yeah, some bomb diffuser ones, which can be done kind of quick if you know where the bombs are. Uh, so weapon ones, but yeah, a lot of these are pretty, I mean these sneaker mode, all of them are pretty much quick to do compared to a lot of the others. So that's why we're just doing all these, and like I say, um, once you've done a few of these, you pretty much know how the rest are going to be, kind of. You ain't got to like, learn how to aim again, so if you're doing the weapon mode, for example. Yeah, so that one, you've done that a few times, um, you just quickly jump over that. Jump over that ledge, run right, wait for him to turn south, go up, right, down, high behind him. And then when he walks north, go up to the exit. So here, to the wet floor, roll into the corner, then roll back. Wait for him to go to investigate the footprints. Run behind him, guys, head to the far, far right. Yeah, come all the way down to the bottom corner there to avoid that guy in the middle. Yeah, you can either throw him, dodge into him, guys, or run behind him. And wait for him to turn left and head into the exit. I think the final batch of snake sneaker mode though, I think they go back to that first um, enemy formation. That's the first basic snake. Right, so um, up the steps. Down these, wait for that middle guy to turn south. That's it, now run past. Quickly run behind this guy in the corner. You've gone beneath the camera. Wait for that top guy to turn right and then go behind him and up to the exit. Congrats, I'm glad to get this done actually, because now I can finally get back onto the story. Um, you know, get onto doing easy mode and big boss rank. Yeah, so wait for him to go north, and then quickly run past. You don't have much time here, you've got to be very quick. Now wait here for the middle guy to turn south, run past him, run behind that guy, wait for him to look to the bottom, and then head into the exit. Some of these timings are very tight to make for first place, especially on the weapon mode. If you go on the weapon mode, yeah, some of these are very hard to make, especially the assault rifle, because there's no reticle uh, when you're aiming in first person. Right, so you're going to come up here, you're going to wait a moment, otherwise, like I say, this guy might see you. Yeah, wait a moment, and then run north into this alcove, wait for him to walk past, dodge across the low floor, come down here, come behind this middle wall. And then wait for that guy. There's cameras here, so be careful. Yeah, wait for him to look left. And then it's the exit guys behind him. Right, 10 left to go. Not too long. That's what, 21 minutes to do 40. Yeah, it's about 30 seconds each average. Yeah, but this one is perhaps the worst just because how aware the enemies are. The enemy, enemies are probably on like the hardest difficulty setting here in terms of their awareness. Yeah, so you want snake tuxedo. Yep, tuxedo snake, ready for dinner. Yeah, VR missions, sneaker mode. Let's do it, sneaking. Right, so like I said, they've got the very first formation of the enemies, that's that first snake. So quickly come the alcove, hug against the wall. When he walks past, head into the exit. Right, level two. 
So you're going to go right, hide against that wall, wait for that guy on the right to um, turn around, go behind him, and you're going to the exit once he looks left. I like that strategy because it works for everything. Not too bad though, I mean, we'll get a 50 done in half hour. Right, so here, go behind this guy, wait for him to look left. And then come to this corner, wait for the middle guy to go down and then run past him and then stick to the right guys, that's it. Stick to the right in that north passage, like I say, otherwise that southeast guy will see you when he turns and looks north as you're, as you're running north. Right, so magazine, hold square, so I'll be magazine to the right, like so. Hold square again to get one primed. Run forward up there, but keep to the right and lob it at the far wall, and that will attract that guy. If you lob it a little bit to the left, it will attract the top guy, but the one on the left. You want to attract the guy on the right. And just lobbing it at the far north, but keeping to the right, attracts the one on the right. Now this guy is mega alert. Just get stand there until he turns and sees you. Then run left, hide behind this wall, and then run up to him and throw him. Now wait here for a moment for that top guy to run past, to go past the wall. Then come up, way behind the wall. Once he walks back, run up to him and throw him. And then jump over the railing, guys, and drop into the exit. Right, not many more to go, only a few left, a few left. Right, so come up here, stick to the right, otherwise that guy at the top will see you before he turns around. Then once he turns, go behind him, do a dodge here, but hold down the button so you go straight into a crawl. Once you go past the corner, run up to this guy and knock him, knock him out or knock him down any way you choose. And then come up here, guys, to the exit. Right, few left to go. Oh, we're on six. I thought we were on eight. Right, seven. Right, you want to trank this guy in the head because he wakes up mega fast. Right, and then you come to this corner. Right, you want to trank these guys. That footprint method doesn't work on this because um, them two enemies, the I think the one at the front sees the footprints where normally it's one at the back or vice versa, something like that. But yeah, just trank that first guy on the floor. They stay in the corner and headshot them with the two when they come around the corner. And then come down here, guys, and headshot this guy when he comes around the corner. That's it, and you're all done, and then head into the exit. Because you didn't kill the enemies, it will not dedu um, deduct any points from you. Yeah, but we still we still completed that. We've still got like a massive t uh, score difference compared, compared to um, second place. So here, Head up the middle, stick beneath the cameras. Now we need to kill this guy coming down here. So get ready, you've got to be quick here, headshot him. Then quickly headshot this guy once he stops, like so. Yep, and then come over here, watch out for that camera above. Yep, wait for the guy to turn back. Go behind him, like so. Quickly talk to the left. If you go right there, he will see you when he turns around. That's why you have to go left. And that's it guys, yep, for that one. Two left. So this one's easy, you can just headshot him with your M9, like so. Right, be careful, there is a camera there. Yeah, see that camera? So just be very careful, and he's just tucking there behind the enemies. Like I say, watch out for that camera. It was slowly turning back towards me as I was heading towards the exit then. Right, final one guys, and then we're done. Right, so this formation, the guy on the top, wait here for about one or two seconds, and then wait for him to go past, go behind him, dodge across that flooring, come along here. Now here, we're gonna throw the middle enemy, remember? Well, the um, top right anyway. Wait for him to look right. And then come up here. That's it, you don't wanna throw him actually on this one because the, his friend might hear him. Just wait for him to go north, and then quickly tuck in here as that camera you see that camera on the wall there? Yeah, you could just get in there, guys. That's it. And complete that one. So, yeah, that's it. So, I actually popped the trophy in a different place. Because I popped it when I was messing about. I actually popped it on one of these weapon modes. 
Yeah, so this is trophy you should get once you've completed 50 missions in first place, guys. So that's it. In it, twin it. So that's it. Once you've done all them, you've got all the extra mode trophies and you're ready to um, jump back onto the main game, guys. Ready for my next video, which should be easy, all dog tags. And then we'll be doing big boss rank with about 70% of the dog tags. Just make sure once you leave VR missions, save your game. Because the save is it's saved in, independently. Uh, in, yeah, independently compared to the story. So yeah, before you back out, just choose safe at the bottom. Uh, you'll see it near the exit. And that'll be it, guys. To my EC guide from Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. For the massive collection. So yeah, we're doing this on, on EC. And then we're getting all the dog tags along the way. And just getting a few missed trophies, mainly the one for breaking 30 necks and for tranking 100 enemies. So when you load this up, make sure you load your cleared save from your very easy playthrough, just so your dog tags carry over. So yeah, very important to load that cleared save. And then begin, choose easy, choose radar type one, and you're good to go. All right, let's look at your gear. What you might want to do for this is half your radar off because it's going to be good to practice for extreme modes. We need to get a fit. So once you begin, head to the right, and a lot of the dog tags are a little bit different guys, and there's a few extra as well, compared to very easy. So yeah, come up here, hold up this guard, and get his dog tag. Full text guide for this by the way, in description. Yep, that's Ryuki Matsumoto, or something. Yeah, so grab him, and then come up these steps. Timing is very important here. If any enemies seem to be in a different place to you as they are to me, or... Something similar is because you took longer, or you're too quick, or they heard something. Freeze. Yeah, then you're going to hold up this guy. Yeah, Michael S. Futter. Now come down these steps. Now, if you're a bit slow here, this guy down below, he might be just looking in your direction. If he is, just wait near the top of steps. Uh, for him to look away. He'll normally, if you're too slow, he'll normally walk to the bottom steps, stay there for a few seconds uh, before he walks away again. So just be careful. And then you're going to hold up this guy, get his dog tag, break his neck. Yeah, the other two, you trank them, and then come inside here, guys. You tranked the other two, because otherwise they might wake up before he gets that third guy, because you spend quite a lot of time in that area. Right in here. Quickly come around here. This guard should be walking away as long as you're quick. Hold him up. Freeze. Get his dog tag and then break his neck. I'm still breaking necks because I think I need about 12 more. I've got to break the neck of about 12 or 15 more enemies for that trophy. And then it's just a case of tranquilizing everybody. So yeah, get his dog tag, break his neck. Now here. Wave that guy is walking to walk back away and then headshot that guy sitting down. That's it to knock him out. Then come to this guy just as he's walking away. Hold him up, get his dog tag. And then break his neck. And then go to the guy down below to the west. Get his dog tag and break his neck also. The, we the reason we knocked the guy out on the steps is because he's a stubborn guard anyway. So you can't quite get his dog tag yet. So it's not really wasting any time to knock him out because we actually need to get his dog tag later on and um, when we get the USP. So yeah, get his dog tag, break his neck, come up steps and we'll just grab some M9 ammo from behind the bar. Yep, and then come to the middle steps and take the door on the right. Yep, come around here. And you just want to trank that guy. I believe he's still stubborn. So we'll get his um, dog tag later on. On extreme though, he's actually just a normal guard. He's not stubborn at all. Right up here, you got that camera, remember? So just carefully hug the wall and crawl. Uh, not crawl, but um, shimmy beneath it. That camera is moving on extreme. Right up here. 
come in here, come to the back wall in the canteen, keep to the back wall so that camera doesn't see you. And um, then come in here, hold this guard up. Don't kill me. Get his dog tag, and then break his neck. Yep, yeah, and then we'll go up, go up the steps, grab the ration, and um, trigger the Olga battle. So my strategy for Olga on Extreme, slight, well, I guess it's quite a bit different actually. Um, because on Extreme, you can't auto-lock onto her, for some reason. So this strategy don't work. But a strategy I've got for Extreme, which I've developed, probably works a bit better actually. It's kind of easier. Um, but you'll see that guys once we get to Extreme. But this strategy still works pretty well. Like I say, it just doesn't work on Extreme because you will not lock onto her. When you jump over the railing, you'll just be facing to the south. You know, snake, you won't twist and lock. Fortunately. So you grab that ration. And you want to jump over this railing nearest the crate. And then once she leans over with her gun, wait a second. And then press triangle to jump back. And then as you're jumping back, hold L1 and hold, uh, hold square. So that you automatically lock onto her. And then fire. Don't fire straight away. You literally need to wait like a moment before you fire. If you just spam fire as you're jumping over, you're likely to miss it and hit the railing. You just have to give it a moment, that's it, to hit it like so. It looks like you're going to miss her, but you will hit her. Like I say, when she leans over the railing with a gun, you wait about a second. So she'll lean over with her gun, then you wait a second, and then that's when you jump back. If you wait too long or too quick, she normally catch with one of her bullets just as she regain control. So yeah, wait about a second when she leans over. There we go. Yeah, if you're too quick or too slow, that's what happened. You'll kind of miss her. Like I say, don't worry, we'll not be doing this on extreme. The extreme strategy is almost... Well, it's kind of really hard to get hit, actually. If you actually do the strategy well. I mean, here, she can still kind of hit you if your timing's a bit off. Right, one more hit. Yep, and you need to kill her before she activates the spotlight, guys. Because once she activates the spotlight at the back, you will no longer auto-lock onto her. Right, and once you killed her, we're going to drop her to um, get a dog tag. Yeah, pick up a body and lob her back down and pick up a dog tag, Olga. Right, then we're going to head to the east. Uh, yep, to the east, and um, this guard will come out the back door. You can hold him up straight away. Yep, and then get his dog tag and then break his neck afterwards. Once you get a trophy for breaking 30 necks, you can start uh, tranquilizing enemies after that. Oh, and there we got it. Nothing personal. Yes, that one. Break the neck of 30 enemies. Once you've got that, no need to break necks anymore. Just try and come, guys. It's much quicker. And that's what you're going to be doing for extreme anyway. So it's good practice. Right, come back in here. Grab the USP ammo. And then come down the steps. Right, back in here, you're going to knock on that wall to attract the guard to the north. Yep, then once he comes around to check it out, trank him from behind. Freeze. Huh? Yeah, I've already got his dog tag, I believe. Yeah, so just trank him. Or break his neck, I guess, if you want, if you just want a few extra kills. Right, shoot that control unit with your USP to deactivate laser field then quickly come in here now be quick grab the m9 bullets go back out because once you come in here that guy comes up from the steps and then as soon as he starts walking back hold him up Freeze. and get his dog tag <laughs> and then try and him afterwards try and kill 100 enemies for the trophy it's actually quite a lot right down here you're going to shoot that camera now on extreme, this camera's rotating. Did I tell you that? And there's actually a guard down here as well. Um, when you come back down from the boss. 
Right, so we go down the western steps. I've done the tank on extreme. Um, I'm not quite done plant yet. Yeah, wait for that guard to walk away. Hold him up. He's a stubborn guard, so you need to shoot near his head or somewhere. That's it. Put a bit of fear into him. And they'll drop his dog tag and they can trank him afterwards. Yeah, so I can I could sort of tell you what I do on extreme um, differently on the tanker section, but I can't on the plant yet. Yes, M9 bullets underneath them steps. Right, once you're back here, tranquilize that enemy as he walks to the east. Yep, and then break his neck. Right, come out here, go through this door, and then come back in. Yeah, that guy, you do want to break his neck, by the way, it's important. And then you're going to go back in. What you see now, what's going to happen, that guy's going to be sitting on the steps. And they're going to quickly hold him up. Freeze. Like so, guys. Are you going to shoot me? Yeah, so when you're first coming here from the, um, from the upper level, he won't be here. You actually have to come in from one of the side rooms for him to appear. That's it, get his dog tag. He's a stubborn soldier, but now I've got USP. He's going to give it up. And they're going to go down into the engine room. Grab the stun grenades on your way down. Not, I guess not that we need them, but... Force of habit. Right, hold up this guy. Yep, get his dog tag. Right, yeah, hang over here, don't worry, he will not see you on here, even on extreme. Then hold him up. Now, when you try to get his dog tag, you might want to drag him away from the railing, because on extreme, I've had this dog tag fall over the railing a few times. So you might want to drag him just away from the railing before you hold him up. Yep, get his dog tag, and then come down. Hold up this guy at the bottom near the pillar. Yep, so that's how many? That's three dog tags at the moment in the engine room. Right, come to the top of these steps and get this guy. This guy actually patrols on extreme, he doesn't just stand still. Yep, so get his dog tag. You might want to move him just over here a little bit. You see that guy on the top level as well there to the top left? Yeah, hold him up, grab his dog tag. Now be careful going around here, if that guard at the top is looking out to the right, he might see you. Um, so you might want to go down the lower level and make way up here. Now you're going to wait for him to patrol across to the bottom end. And then once he walks back, you're going to run up and quickly hold him up. Just be careful because he can see you here. He can see below, so make sure you're not too far away from the wall. That's it, hold him up. Please don't. Yep, come down here, trigger this cut, little cutscene where this guy will start repairing the door. And then come back down here, wait for him to come through and then hold him up. Make sure you're quick before he starts calling on the radio. Don't kill me. Yep, just a normal soldier, this guy. Stephen A. Weeks. Right now, it's going to be two control units we need to shoot now. So you've got you've got that one there, which is down very easy. But crouch. There's one just there. Now be very careful because of C4. You might want to lay down. You can see it a little bit better. But yeah, shoot that control unit. You see, it's just on top of the bomb on my left there. We can just see if you crouch or go, lay down. Right, deck two port. So this is exactly the same on every difficulty. This part, there's always three enemies in, no matter what difficulty you're playing on. And the strategy is always the same. So keep coming down until you see the far soldier in the distance. And once you see him, go right. You can do that same strategy on extreme. Right, shoot that light with your M9. He'll come to check it out. And then once he does, we're gonna hold him up from behind. Grab his dog tag.
<clears throat> yep, yeah, and trank him afterwards. That's Mr. Lloyd. Right, then carry on down to the far corner. The guy coming on his radio. So just hold on here for a few seconds for him to come into the corner. Hold him up. Grab his dog tag, guys, and trank him. Of course, if you still need the um, trophy for breaking 30 necks, you can keep doing so. And then once you get into this small room with a vents on the floor and a pipe on the north wall, the guy is just to the right. Now you want to wait for him to be asleep and then you want to drag him out into the middle a little bit and then hold him up. The reason being is if you try to hold him up just in a sort of default state when he's sleeping, sometimes the hold up don't quite work for some reason. And then when you try to run away, he'll wake up just before and notice you. So it's just safer to grab him, drag him away and then hold him up from behind. Now you want to grab that M9 ammo from behind the pipes. Now on extreme, this is where I make my first save on extreme in this room. Uh, this is the only save I make on the tanker. Because this bit can be a little bit messy. Now what I do different for this one on extreme is I come straight away. I come to the back and stop in the right corner, the rear right corner where the ration is. And I just remain standing. I just keep standing up, I don't keep crouching on extreme, I just stay standing and I shoot them all from the back right corner. It seems the furthest away you are from the enemies, even on extreme, they're less likely to hit you. And the closer you are, the more, I mean obviously they're all going to be shooting you in the, same, in the same manner, but their bullets have more chance to miss when you're, you know, at the back of the room. So it actually works quite well in extreme. Yep. Wow, that bit went really quick. So, yeah, you just got to keep killing the first few enemies, get headshots until eventually three enemies will spawn out the um, room on the right and start walking towards you. Okay, and then them three, you just headshot the first one, and then the second, and then the third, and that's it. Yeah, got through that mega quick then. But it's not too bad on easy because you can just heal if you need to. Right, and once you start here, guys, hold number one. Open the door behind you and grab the M9 bullets on the left. And there's a ration in there as well. I'm just going to save my game now, actually. Because this dog tag we're going to get is very, very messy. For some reason, you know that guy in underwear in the middle of the guard? You see that guy down there? He's got a dog tag. And it's mega hard to get to it. It's like a mega, that's a massive troll from the developers putting a dog tag on that guard in the underwear. So we're going to come all the way down to the bottom. This is going to take you a good few minutes. So what you might want to do after this, if you get a dog tag and then get seen and then continue, you'll spawn back at the start of this area um, with all the time back, um, but you also have the dog tag already. Because when you continue, you keep any dog tags you've already got. Yeah, so um, you're going to tr start tranking all these cards. I know. So, if you shoot them standing up, like so, they'll fall asleep instantly no matter where you shoot them. But, if you knock into them, if you walk into them by mistake, um, they will hear you. Well, it'll wake them up, basically. Um, but what I normally do, is the first two columns, I just trank all of them guys while they are standing, like so. Um, but if you come two columns in, column three and four, near projector, you want to hold these guys up one by one, and then trank them. So hold them up, trank, hold them up, trank, and when you hold up and trank, you need to go for headshots. Yeah, they'll only go to sleep from any, any body shots when they are just standing normally. If you hold them up and trank them, you need to headshot them. So yeah, as you can see, the first two columns, just trank all them where they're standing. But then column three and four, you want to hold these up and trank them. Now be very careful, if you haven't got your radar on, you might want it on here, just because it'll be easier to tell if you're getting too close to the um, field of view of any of the enemies. If you, you know, if you missed one as well. So yeah, just carefully hold them up, and when you're near that projector, guys, if you're in line with the rear the rear row of the guards, the projector shouldn't see you. 
Yeah, so I'm just making sure these two. You need to basically trank everybody um, from the third row to the back when it comes to working down to this underway guy. So the underway guy is in the second row. So yeah. And then I'm just going to get these two behind him. So I've done this. I've done the third and the fourth row. I've hold them up and knocked them down. But the one directly behind the underway guy, you might want to hold him up, and um, because it can be a bit tricky. Yeah, I mean, I managed to pull it off here. Yeah, but if you knock into any of them ones, which are standing and sleeping, guys, it will trigger an alert and you'll die. So yeah, the one directly behind the boxer guy, you might want to hold him up and knock him out, unlike me. Right, and then once you can get to him safely, pull him out of the way, hold him up, guys, get his dog tag, and there you go. Esk Malone, the most, probably the most annoying dog tag in the game. Right, so once you've got that, yeah, it's taken a good three minutes. So like I say, if you get spotted now and continue, um, you'll be back at the start of all your time back. But you'll also have that dog tag still. Yeah, so coming back up to the next floor. And we're going to shimmy across the far end. Now, you want to make sure your health is full. If your health is not full, your grip is going to deplete much quicker. So, yeah, if it's not full, use a ration and then start shimmying across. Yeah, I don't know why, but um, on if you're in the water or using your grip, if your health is low, it depletes much quicker your oxygen and your grip meter. So once you get to the far end, there will be a guard. Just going to wait for him to turn away before you jump over. Yeah, so there he is. Just wait a moment. That's it. And then jump over quickly before you before you fall to your doom. Hold him up, grab his dog tag. It doesn't matter if you shoot him in the helmet, it's made off paper, I think. Just there for show. Right, and head into hold number two. Now, same again, jump over railing, shimmy to the far end, and um, then go into hold number three. There's actually wires in a lot of these rooms, which you can shimmy across to get to the far side. But obviously we don't really need to do it here and um, you can't do it on extreme just because your health likely isn't going to be full and it takes too long to get to grip level 3. Right and through this door. Yep so you can hold up this guy in front of you, get his dog tag. Yep, then you're going to take a southeast picture of Metal Gear Ray from this pot, uh, from this spot. Yeah, my time's getting quite low, but if you did what I mentioned, you know, die, continue, to keep that dog tag and get the time back. Now, once you get to scap in the railing, you want to shoot the three enemies. That's it on that on the ends of the front row. The first three enemies on the end of the front row, and the slide down this pipe. Yep, and then take a picture of the Marines logo on Metal Gear Ray. Yeah, then hold up this guy here, who's kind of nodding off every now and then. And then drag him to the back, so you've got more space to hold him up. Yeah, then hold him up, grab his dog tag. Yep, so we've got one more to get. This one's a bit tricky. So you want to come, you see where I am now, you want to come and knock on this wall. Now when you knock on this wall, that fourth guard in the front row is going to hear it. That's why you have to trank the first three, so the fourth one is one which hears it. And then once you see him go to investigate, you obviously hide in that corner so you're not, he's not going to walk around and see you. Then when he walks past, you're going to come behind him guys and get his dog tag as well, Rock Young. And from there, you're going to come to the southwest corner, take a picture of Metal Gear Ray. Yep, and then go to the middle of the south corner. Stick to the south wall here, and you shouldn't get spotted. Yep, take a south picture of Ray. That's it, that's the four pictures you need. Just careful of the enemies are doing their stretches. Yep, download all four pictures onto the computer, and that will complete the tanker part, guys. Yep, yeah, I think I think when my um extreme 
slash dog tag guys go, um, guide goes to. I think that might be the only guide outlet on the net, which gets almost all dog tags on extreme. Right, and there we go, guys. So yeah, next up is the Raiden part in the big shell plant. Yeah, make a save if you want. It's up to you. I mean, on extreme we can only make eight saves, uh, but we're not on extreme yet. The M9 will be in a slightly different place for Raiden. It's still in the starting room, just in a slightly different place. And on extreme, it's all the way in the warehouse. So yeah, on extreme, you don't have the M9 for quite a bit when you start as Raiden. So yeah, you should have 43 dog tags all together with Raiden. So we're going to grab the M9 first. You want to jump over this railing and then shimmy across a little bit and then jump back over into the enclosed area. And there's the M9 guys, just to the right of them diving suits. Grab it and then shimmy back across. You can jump into the water, but it takes longer. So just jump back over the railing, shimmy back across. Come over here, jump up and grab the two stacks of M9 bullets. Open this door and then head through into the elevator area. Yep, these guards will wake up very quick now and almost at the same time. Um, but if you stand in a very specific spot, you can kind of get a dog tag from one and already be holding up the second one just as he wakes up. So yeah, come over to the node, use it, put in your code name. Yeah, but I'm not going to be using the radar now. So all these nodes, I'm not going to bother activating anymore. Yep, so he'll wake up first, but the other one will wake up almost straight after. So you want to stand about here. So you're behind the enemy, which is lied on his on his stomach. Um, but close enough to the enemy on his back, so that you can hold him up as he stands up. And then this way, you can hold this guy up, get him to draw his dog tag, trank him, and then move to right slightly and be holding up the other guy like so yeah it works pretty well so yeah make sure you're standing just behind um the enemy line on the stomach but make sure you're close enough to guy on his back as he wakes up first and then you hold him up as he stands up get his dog tag trank him and then move right slightly until the guy's just stood up with his back to you hold him up get his dog tag that's it both of them yeah, because on extreme you don't get the M9 until much later, you can't actually hold them up on extreme. Um, so we have to get rid of them another way. Right, once you get to the top, guys, we're going to go through the west exit. So yeah, just crawl beneath the hole in the fence, grab the M9 ammo, and head through. But the thing is, on extreme, we don't need to get every single dog tag. You can get all dog tags on very easy, all dog tags on easy, and then you need about. 80-90% of the dog tags on extreme. So you don't need to get every single one, luckily. Right, we're going to come down here. Yeah, so some extreme dog tags, you probably will leave them. Like I say, length three. Probably won't go back down there to get them on extreme. Yeah, so once you get control, go in through the northwest exit, guys. Don't worry about him. We're going to get his dog tag later. When, we, when you actually need to trank him. So yeah, just leave him for now. Take northwest exit. Come into here. Now carefully watch the loud flooring. Come over to, to this south guy first and hold him up. I come to this guy first now because he's the only one which is moving. So go straight to him, hold him up, and then this guy's just going to stand still. Now he will look left and right slightly, but if you hug the wall like so, when he looks right, he will not see you. You'll be just on the outside of his field of view. If you put the radar on, you'll see what I mean. Yeah, then hold him up. And get his dog tag. Trank him afterwards. Yep, and then once you've done that, guys, got both their dog tags and tranked them. Take the far west exit. There'll be two cameras in this room on extreme. Yep, and a few different guards. 
Yeah, not straight away. I mean, like when you come back. Yeah, so um, grab that so uh, Sockham ammo. Grab the Sockham ammo from the first locker near the north door. And then head through, guys. Yeah, on extreme as well, after the dining hall part where you get the um, corn spray from Stillman, the guards have already spawned in the dining hall. Yeah, so the extreme big boss slash dog tag route is going to be quite a bit different. But it's been very interesting to um, plan, actually. Yeah, grab the shove grenades on the right there. Right, come into the dining hall. Yep, so head into the far north room, guys, for that little cutscene with Stillman. We get a coolant spray, I believe. Do you get... Is it key card level one as well? I've got it right in my text guide. You've also got less ammo now as well with your M9. You can only hold 61 bullets now, maximum, compared to very easy, like 106 or something. And extreme is 46, I believe. Yeah, let me just get to where we where we were. Glad to hear still. There's no need. Yeah, but it gives you the sensor A as well, and also um, key card level one. So I'm taking a slightly different route now, because on EC you probably notice we don't have the Sockham suppressor. So now, if you try to sh um, scare any stubborn guards and other enemies nearby, it's going to trigger an alert. So we're going to come turn down here into the toilets on the right and do that C4 bomb to begin with guys. Just above the mirrors. Right. right and then go out the southern door. So that's bomb number one. There's more bombs on extreme as well. Everything is just much much worse on extreme. So you're going to shoot that cypher before it reaches you. Yep, that's the only one we need to shoot for now. Yep, and then dodge to the end here. Now, there's two enemies here now. We're going to come into this room first. Now, it's the enemy walking away. We keep to the left wall. So, if you one, two, five, you don't actually walk into him by accident. And then hold him up quickly. Get his dog tag. And then come to the southwest corner near the door. And then slowly move forward a bit. And watch for the guy when he walks past. He just walked past. Did you see him? And then come in here and hold up this guard just as he's walking back to the north. Now he is a stubborn guard. That's why you do him last. Because otherwise when you shoot near him, the other guard is going to hear. So it's very important you hold up them both guards in the same order. Right. Get a C4 bomb next. Just close that little cabinet and defuse it. Yeah, I'm quite pleased that... Um, I think mine's going to be the only extreme big boss rank guide out there with dog tags. Right, once back in here guys, take the northern route. Because there's, there's one guard here now. Uh, but he's going to be walking along. He's going to be walking from the southeast up to the northwest. So that's where we took the north path. Right, we're going to trank him now. So hold him up. Get his dog tag and then trank him. Yep, yeah, like so. Get his dog tag. And then come to the pump room and we're going to deactivate that bomb. There is a camera in here now, by the way, so just be careful. Do not go anywhere I don't. Until I show you where it is at least. It's actually on the far northwest wall in the top corner. Yeah, grab that ration. Come to the middle here. And defuse this C4 bomb. I think this is bomb number three, is it? Yeah, I think it's bomb number three. Yeah, defuse that. Yeah, on extreme, if you're worried about some very tricky fights, yeah, no need to get this. It's just a bandage. I think for a moment there, I thought it might be pentazamin, which we do need quite a bit later. For the oil field sequence. I don't think you get much weapons weight on very easy. Yeah, crawl back out once you're doing that bomb, guys. And yeah, you're going to see where this camera is now. So yeah, there it is. You see it in the corner. 
We're going to shoot that and then go and get the um, Sockham ammo. That's him over there. It's going to be really helpful for a fat man fight if you've already got like a, a full stack of Sockham ammo. Right, and out the northeast exit onto the FA connecting bridge. Right, you're going to shoot that cypher down to begin with. And that guy's going to hear and get confused. And if he gets confused, you can quickly get over to him and hold him up. If he doesn't get confused, he's going to walk back down the steps. And he's going to have to go down the steps after him, guys, and hold him up. Yep, yeah, he is stubborn. So you're going to have to shoot near him to scare him. And then get his dog tag and trank him. And now it's very important to take the upper... Yeah, take the upper east exit here, guys. Not the lower one. Take the upper one. Yes, yeah, so it's short F warehouse. So you're going to come to this corner just near the door. And then trank his head just as it appears. Slightly, very slightly, just around the corner. Then come here and trank that guard. I think he's the only extra guard on the plant section on EC mode. I think that's him. Right, so you're going to drop down that railing next to the west. You're going to quickly... Diffuse that C4 bomb. And quickly try to get back up and hold up that guard before he walks back. If you're not quick enough and he starts walking back, then just wait a moment for him to walk to the south again and then hold him up. Get his dog tag. Get a stun grenade. And what you want to do now, guys, is go out the southwest exit and then come back in. Because that very first guard we got rid of, he's supposed to call back um, on the radio and update HQ. That everywhere is safe. But eventually, somebody will come in to investigate why he's not calling back. But if you go out the room and come back in, it sort of resets that timer. So it just gives you a bit more time. Right, grab this cardboard box. Come through this vent. And this is how you get a Sockham suppressor on EC. I'm not quite sure if it's here on Extreme, so I've not got this far with my planning. I only, think, I only got up to Stillman. Yeah, grab a Sulcum suppressor, guys. Grab a Sulcum bullets. And then jump up these barrels. Drop down in the middle. No need to get a mine detector because you don't have a radar. And then up these steps and take the upper north exit here. Yeah, so you see they just radioed in to find out why it's not called back. But we got out before that happens. Right, it's a guard. Yeah, that guard, we're actually going to trank him in a second. So just come forward a bit and to get that automate, automatic codec call. Yep, and then from there, aim up and headshot him, guys. That's it, once you knocked him out. Yep, crawl along here until you've got three claymores. Yeah, crawl along the middle until you've got three. That's it. Once you've got three, you're safe to go. That's it. The middle is completely clear of claymores now. Whenever you go back through that room, you can just go straight along the middle, guys. There's no claymores there. Right. Once in the parcel room, come over here. Crawl beneath the bottom conveyor belt so you come below this enemy. Hold him up and get his dog tag as well. Yep, and then grab a stun grenade below that conveyor belt. Yep, make sure you um, put a Sockham suppressor on the Sockham. Just equip the Sockham and the suppressor at the same time. And they'll automatically be attached. Right, and then go up the steps to the east into the heliports. There you go, a little cutscene. You'll get control back at the top. Right, and um, we're going to deactivate this bomb. Well, sorry, first we're going to come around here, get ahead of myself here. Yeah, go north and then west, and then hold up this guy from behind. Yeah, grab a stun grenade near him. I just got them. Yeah, grab his dog tag. And then come over to the plane. And, um,. Yep, freeze the bomb below it. Right. Yep, 
Yep, that's all we needed for now. And then go back down the steps. And now you're going to hold up the guard on the far west side of the lower catwalk. The lower walkway. Yeah, this guy here. There's four claymores there, but we don't really need to pick them up. I think I just picked them up on very easy for the trophies for finding every single weapon. Yeah, get his dog tag and trank him, Yuki. Then make way all the way back to the east door, guys, and head back into the parcel room. Yeah, so now we've got the M9 and we've got the Sockum with a suppressor. Pretty much all we need to get all the dog tags, which we need to get. Yeah, so back in here in the parcel room and take the northwest exit. Right, once onto connecting bridge, head straight across and you should be able to just get to that guard as he's walking away. Hold him up. There's a guard on the top of the heliport, but we just tracked him earlier, so you don't need to worry about him. Yes, yeah, so hold him up and then we're going to take the bottom exit, very important. Yes, yeah, so take the bottom west exit. This will bring you to the bottom of the strut D sediment pool. Now, as soon as you come in, quickly go around to the far west side. Very quickly, as because the guard now is walking away, he's going to turn and look right over the hole. And you want to try to hold him up before he walks back to the north, like so. Yep. But because we've got a Sockham suppressor now, make sure the suppressor is attached, otherwise you'll trigger an alert because the other guard will hear. Yeah, hold him up and get his dog tag. Now, if he's too close to the hatch, you might want to pull him back. Just so you don't use the coolant spray on him by mistake, because coolant spray will wake up enemies quicker. If you shoot them with it. Yeah, lift up this hatch. And then freeze that bomb. I think this is bomb number... Don't even remember now. I think it's bomb number six. But yeah, defuse that bomb. Right, and I'm going to get that guard in the middle. Yeah, some M9 bullets behind the steps. Yeah, so come up and the guy will be in the middle. But because he's got no radar, you're going to have to use first person a little bit to see where he is. Yeah, so that's what he'll normally walk. He'll normally walk to each bridge and stop and look. He was about to walk to the bridge on the left here, but he saw me, so he went that way quicker. Yeah, then hold him up. Yeah, he normally, he normally patrols the middle in a clockwise manner, uh, but he'll stop at each of the three bridges before he moves on to the next. Uh, but because he'd just been on the east bridge, I knew he was going to go to west bridge next, uh, but he saw me. Um, but yeah, get his dog tag, and then come out the west exit. There's two extra guards in that room, I believe, on extreme. Now, when you come in here for the first time, shoot that security camera. Yeah, the sock I'm suppressed. Now, wait for that guard to west to walk towards you, and then for him to walk back. Then once he walks back, you're going to chase after him and get a dog tag. Freeze. <gasps> yep, there we go. You are Nan. And then come over into the dining hall. Right, come in here now and get Sensor B. Now that you've got the first six, sensor B should be, the door to it should be open. And now we need to go all the way back to where we started the plant chapter for the fortune fight. And that C4 bomb, if you remember, it's um, underneath the small submarine. So you head back out here, BC connecting bridge. You could be USP and shoot that cypher again, which is respawned. Go a shaft grenade if you want. I think I only use one shaft grenade in the whole game. On EC anyway. Right, and then come into Strut B Transformer Room. Now straight away, trank that guy walking away from you. That's it, just trank him with a headshot. And you can quickly head to the far southeast exit. Right, back on E. Again, take the north path. The guy will be patrolling along the bottom path, so we're going to take the north path here. That's it. If you come if you come from the east door into this room, he'll be patrolling along the top, and if you come from the rest door, the west door, he'll be patrolling along the bottom. Right, back in the pump room, 
go up the southwest steps. Yep, and take the upper western door. There'll be one guard here now. At the bottom of the, bottom of the um, room. Yep, she's going to hold him up, get his dog tag. Yep, and then go to the elevator and it'll automatically take you back down to the bottom. Yeah, so once back on the um, deep sea dock. Yeah, grab a sock and bullets. Yeah, come to far bottom quarter, the far south wall. Try not to jump in. I think I tripped over and fell in the water. No, that's some, I didn't mean to do that. But yeah, come to the south wall, crouch beneath the submarine. And um, yep, yeah, do that last bomb, guys. And then head back into the elevator room for the fortune fight. So fortune fight again, very easy, on on um, easy mode, quite easy to do. Put this strategy perhaps going to change a bit when we get to extreme, and um, we'll see when we get there. My Olga fight has changed a little bit, and um, my hallway fight on tanker. So perhaps every single fight is going to change slightly. I don't think the Metal Gear Ray fight will change because pretty much once you get onto easy mode or buff, um, the Metal Gear Ray fight can be pretty hard. It's just easy on very easy mode, that's it. On easy and buff, you can still die very, very quickly on the Metal Gear race. Yeah, so you basically just keep running from left to right eventually. I mean, the um, obstacles will shield you from some of the lightning. Her race, but some of them will get through, so you can't really rely on it as a shield. It's kind of best to just keep running from left to right. And the cobble box can apparently come in handy here, so I guess it makes a loose sight of you. Uh, but we'll save that for um, for extreme. Yeah, it's just a time thing. You just got to wait for the time to expire. Probably like a minute, you know, for the lift to come back down. And then you automatically get control at the top. Yeah, some more sock and bullets there if you need them for later. I don't think I needed them. Uh, but I just grabbed them anyway. So I wasn't really doing anything, anything else. Yeah, so inside that container it's just more boxes. Yeah, watch out for falling debris of course. And don't stand too close to any barrels. Right, yeah, that's it. Yeah, fairly simple on easy. So now I've got to get back to the heliport. And you've got four minutes to do so. Or is it 400 seconds? No, I think it's four minutes. No, 400 seconds, well. Okay, so um, you're going to crawl along here because there's two claymores. You're going to grab a shaft grenade as well. So once you've got the two claymores, you can come through this east exit. I'm going to hold up this guard now. He was spawned in the pump room to the southeast. Come in, hold him up, guys. Get his dog tag. And then take the northeast exit. Yeah, just be careful that the guy in the middle is not looking in your direction. Well, if he is, if you sit at the far end, hopefully he won't see you um, like he didn't see me just then. Right, come out here. Yep, that guard will be over there. You might just want to wait for him to walk back and then make a way across. We've already got his dog tag, remember? So don't need to get it anymore. Right, come in here and just short F warehouse. Right, now I've got the Sockham suppressed. We can hold up these two guards. So you're going to wait for him to walk back. And you're going to come up behind him, guys. Hold him up. Shoot near him to scare him. Get his dog tag and then trank him. 
There you go. And I'm going to do this guy patrolling to the east as well. That guy there. Yeah, if you wait, he'll walk down here. We'll look at the south wall. Giving you a good opportunity to hold him up. Again, you'll have to shoot near him to scare him. And you can trank him afterwards. That's it. So we've got all the dog tags in the warehouse. Like I say, that guard we just did, I think he's the only extra guard in the plant chapter on easy mode. Right, so back out here. There's no claymores in the middle now, remember. And there is a guy on the top of the far heliport. So make sure you're very quick here. So it doesn't get a chance to walk to the top of the steps. And then turn south and look. In the parcel room. Just come along here. And go up the eastern steps, guys. And onto the heliport. Yep, and get ready for the Fat Man fight. So it's very similar to what we've done so far. On um, boss survival. And very easy, mate. Just case off. Shooting him six times. To knock him down. Shoot him six times quickly. Yeah, some sock and bullets at the top of the steps. Yeah, and then defuse this bomb on the H. Yeah, shoot him six times, knock him down. Then quickly try to shoot him for your M9 in the head as quick as possible. If you do it quick enough, you can get a few shots in before he stands back up. But if you take it too slow, he'll stand back up after one shot. So since you get control during the boss fights, I always defuse this bomb. Just on this nearby container. Right, then that normally gives him time to um, come near the H. Or he might be at the bottom of the heliport. Yeah, then quickly shoot him six times. Try get one or two headshots in. Yep, and then wait for a moment again. It can be quite hard to get the six shots in when he's moving. But if you wait for him to stop for a moment, you can normally, once you shoot him once, it will stun him. Then get the other five shots in. And again, quickly, since you knock him down... Try to shoot him as quick as possible because you'll get more shots in. Yeah, so sometimes he, he might fall too far away and you have to readjust your position to get close enough to hit him. Yep, yeah, and watch your time, guys. Do not get, let your time get too low. Yeah, as you can see, you can dodge into him to actually knock him down as well. Yeah, so that's the second bomb. Make sure you defuse both the first two bombs before the time expires. And yeah, I think I got him. Oh no, almost. Yeah, so normally once he stands back up, there's a small window where he's invincible for a few seconds. Yeah, I like to leave it to the sort of last few seconds before you defuse the first two bombs. Because once they're both defused, he'll start placing more. Um, so the longer you can take to defuse them, the longer it's going to be before he starts placing more bombs. Yeah, then pick him up, drop him, grab his dog tag, and then defuse this massive bomb which he was sleeping on. Good work. Yep, so that's a fat man fight. Yep, so that's the bombs done. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to head down the steps next. Uh, there'll be another cutscene. You get quite a lot of goodies here. So you get the BD the BDU suit. Um, I think it's body disguise uniform. I think it stands for according to the official guide. Yep. So you get the BDU suit. Um, you get a telephone. Why did they have to bring? Yep. You'll get key card level two as well. So what we want to do now, guys, is then um, we want to head back to the warehouse and we want to get the AKS-74U. So it can complete our disguise. Yeah, so back down into the parcel room to the southeast exit. Be quick here before the guard on the top starts to look south and he spots you. Remember, no claymores in the middle here because we've already deactivated them. So when you come here, be careful. Yeah, there's a guy just there. If you're too quick, he'll see you. Just wait one or two seconds. Yeah, just wait one or two seconds before you go around the corner. And then come down the steps, come in here, grab the AKS 74U. That's all you want. Don't take any longer, otherwise the guy in the middle... We'll be walking towards and he'll see you. Yep, and then take his exit. So yeah, that guy did come to check it out. 
That's why I waited for a moment on the steps. I could see his flashlight and then wait for him to walk back. Yeah, they come back out here. Now walk to the middle of the stream. Yeah, equip the BDU and the AKS7 for you. Yeah, come to the middle and then crawl to the west. Once you picked up the claymore, you can start running. Now dodge along here. Be careful you do not go into a crawl, otherwise you likely fall down. Grab the AKS7 for you bullets and come in west exit, guys. As long as you're quick in there, the cypher shouldn't see you which start to spawn. Because you get out of the room too quick. Right, and as soon as you come in here, guys, shoot that CCTV above you. That camera. Then equip your disguise, come in here, wait for him to walk past. And then hold him up. Yeah, wait for him to walk past while well, walk alongside the entrance pa uh, passage. And you want to grab him once you hold him up. Drag him in here. And then hold him up in this entrance corridor. Get star tag. And then trank him. The reason you do it here is because otherwise this guard here will spot him laying down on the floor. That's why you have to do him in that entrance corridor. So same again with this guy. Equip your full disguise. Then once you are behind him, switch to your M9. Hold him up, get a dog tag and trank him. Take out that camera on the southeast wall there. Equip your disguise. Come in here and hold up this final guard to the west. Remember, get behind him and then switch weapons. Freeze. <gasps> You'll find on extreme, well, even it's more so when you don't have suppressor. Knowing what stubborn guards are where is very helpful. Yeah, make sure you've got full disguise equipped, guys, um, when you come to this elevator, because that camera will check. Yeah, go down to B2. Yeah, because if, if there's like three guards in one room, for example, but only one of them is stubborn, it's it's helpful to know which one is a stubborn one because you can leave them till last. That way, when you do use your loud weapon, the other two weren't here because they're asleep. Yeah, right, on B2, for example, comes and useful in this room here, even though our weapon's suppressed. Yeah, so quickly come down the steps, hold up this guy. He is a stubborn guard, so just shoot near him. That's it. Then get his dog tag and trank him. Right, come to the bottom here. Make sure you've got full disguise equipped in case the guard's looking out the windows. Yep, then quickly smash this locker. Yep, five magazines should fall out. You only need three of them. Yep, and grab a sock and bullets in the locker beside it. Yeah, once you've got magazines, come back here. Now, be very careful doing this. Very, very careful. The enemies, well, except for that bottom one, which goes to computer they change direction very quickly and it does take a second or two for you to place a magazine down and to re-equip your full disguise so just be very careful yeah make sure they've just started walking back in another, another direction yeah quickly place book and straight back to your AKS 74U Yeah, but a enemy will, will be not fully distracted by a magazine until they actually drop down and sort of go onto a kneel, I guess, kneel above it. Yeah, wait until they're kneeling above it, like so. That way, that's it. They're all ready. Then start holding them all up, guys, and getting their dog tags. Now, the top left enemy, leave him until last because he is stubborn. Yep, yeah, and when you fire your gun, the others get alerted by it for some reason. I guess it probably depends where you shoot, but yeah, just leave a stubborn guard for last. The top left guy, this one here. That's it. And then when you shoot near him, you don't have to worry about the other enemies hearing the gunshots when it hits the wall. I think it's when it hits the wall, the enemies can hear it. That's it. You don't know all the enemies. Grab the directional mic. There is a cardboard box there and some ammo, but you're not going to need it. We'll probably do that exactly the same on extreme. I believe this room is exactly the same on extreme. Yep, then come to the elevator and ride it up to B1 now. Yep, now we've got a directional mic. Right, so be very, very careful in this room. Quite easy to mess this one up. Yeah, so make sure you've got your full disguise equipped. Do not forget to do that. Come in here. Grab the um, stun grenade from that first locker. Grab the sock and bullets from the third locker. And then hold this guard up. 
No, he's a stubborn guard. No, sorry, he's not. I forget. I think he's stubborn on very easy. On easy, he's not. He's just a normal guy. He has to hold him up. Headshot. Well, hold him up. Get a dog tag and then headshot him. Then he quickly full disguise. Oh, yeah. Got a trophy here, guys. Don't tase me, bro. T Tranquilize 100 enemies. Now, what you want to do first is hold up this far top left guy first. Hold him up. Come around the front of him. Get his dog tag and then trank him. The reason I do this guy first is because this guy's got his back turned. Now, you should be careful you don't make too much noise. That's it. Now, it doesn't matter if you make any noise because no other enemies are going to hear you. You have to get his dog tag, but do not knock him out. Now, you want to drag him to the retinal scanner. It's good to do it with this guy as well because he's kind of like, I mean, except for that first guard, he's the second closest to retinal scanner. So, you've got less distance to carry him. But yeah, you might want to release him after a few chokes and then drag him again. That's it. Drag him all the way to retinal scanner, guys. Like I say, make sure you got a dog tag first and then head on through. Right, so now Amy's is going to be in a random place. He's only in the he's only in the very same place on your very first playthrough of the game. Every other playthrough is going to be in a different place. So quick before we disguise, you're looking for the guy in trousers and long brown hair. There he is. Yes, make sure the other enemy is not near you. And then point your directional mic, just remember, and press triangle. Yeah, point it at Amy's and press triangle. And that'll begin the dialogue. Yeah, if you take out your directional mic when the guard is looking at you, it's going to break your cover. So only take out directional mic when the guard is not looking. Right, and get through these cutscenes. Just get through all of them. I don't know. I can't get a response. You don't think he's been like the... Yep, no need to listen to Johnny now. We've already heard him. Fat man is dead. Anyway. Yeah, but then once you get control back, just quickly equip your full disguise. That's it. Continue the um, cutscenes, and then you spawn back outside here. Now, when you spawn back outside, now your disguise has been broken. Just go to the wall to the left of where you come in and then aim over here with your M9. Now wait for the guard to walk. That's it. And then headshot him. If you just go straight to the wall, straight opposite the door, you should be just out of his range so he won't see you. But you can just get headshot on him. That's it. Then come to the elevator, ride it back up to floor one. Right, it's going to be a kind of caution now. So what I do, I come to the back of the elevator. Wait for that guy to walk past, headshot him, come outside, now look over here. Now a guard will walk down there in a second, there is a guard to the west as well, but don't worry, he shouldn't walk down um, and see that guard he knocked out, so don't worry about him. Not before you get a chance to do this anyway and get out of the room. But yeah, just wait a moment for this guard to, to walk down, that's it, headshot him. And then there's a guy for shield blocking the entrance passage while leading back outside. Just move a little bit so you can just see his head, guys, and then trank him, like so. Grab the ammo, the M M9 and the Sockham, and head outside. Right, quickly head along this bridge before the Cyphers appear. Yep, go straight to the middle and then turn south. And to the southeast exit. We're going to get a PSG1 now. Right, so you just want to come to this corner. Then from here, trank that far enemy. Him there. And then this enemy comes around the corner. That's it. That's the only two. And come to the central part and the stream on the southeast of the central part. Grab the PSG1, grab the bullets. And you can grab the bullets from the locker as well if you want. And then go through this crawl space and grab the tranquilizer ammo uh, well the tranquilizer version of it i guess now be very quick before all the reinforcements come in yep out here and just head out the entrance be quick before the guides come in to investigate yep and then back out the northeast exit
Now straight across the middle, be quick before the guy, the guy on the top of the heliport looks in your direction and into the parcel room. And then here you just want to take the northwest exit. That BDU by the way comes in useful for the Solidus fights. If you get um, set on fire you can equip that and it automatically um, um, extinguishes the flames. Right so quickly come down the steps, not too quick otherwise he might see you as he walks below them. Just as he walks past come down the final set of steps, hold him up, get his dog tag and then be ready to trank this guard in the distance, this guard here. Because he will walk down and he will see that guy you knocked out. So yes, be ready to trank him. No need to get his dog tag. We've already gotten it. Yep, and then you want to enter the sediment pool via the top egg, the top entrance. So yeah, go up the fire steps, up this. Yep, and um, in this doorway, right in here, head all around all the way to the west exit. Yeah, but I like to come to the top doorway because then you don't have any enemies you have to get past. Yeah, so all the way around and clockwise and take the west exit. CD connecting bridge. Now if you quickly run over here, that guard should be walking away. And you can hold him up, he's going to have a new dog tag. Well, it's a different guard, but yeah, get his dog tag. And then that guard should start walking around the corner. If you've done it with roughly the same timing. And then once you do trank him. You've already got his dog tag so you don't need it. And then into the dining hall. Going to be two new enemies here now. Like I say on extreme these two enemies spawn straight after the um, very first Stillman cutscene. Yeah so come in here quickly. Hold up this guy. Get his dog tag. And then be quick. There'll be a guy on the uh, southern side of the room as well. But he'll slowly start to walk up this corridor we're coming down now. So you need to be very quick. Yeah, otherwise you're going to have to wait in that room for him to go past you. Yeah, then if you're quick enough, yeah, you can come behind, go left and come up behind him. And get his dog tag. Yep, yeah, you might want to, from the corridor, you might want to go in first person. Just make sure he's walking past the flowers. You know, just so you don't walk into his field of view. Yeah, then once in here, shoot out that cypher. Yep, and then wait for this guard to walk up to you and then for him to walk back. Yep, yeah, so shoot that first cypher. And then wait for this guard to walk up to you and walk back. And then you're going to hold him up. Yeah, there you go. Once he walks back, he's the only guy we need. That's it. And then we can go back to Sediment Pool and do the Harrier fight. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so back through the dining hall. The enemy should still be tranquilized. Yep, straight across here. Like I say, the enemies in here will should still be tranquilized as well. Yeah, once back into sediment pool, take the far north exit, and we'll be ready for the Harrier fight. Yeah, so once you get control back, you can grab the Pentasmin on the left. Yeah, there's a few more bombs now. There's two more bombs compared to very easy. Yeah, go that Pentasmin. Only use one if you need to, but the rest you want to save until the oil field fight. So the first one, directly above the entrance, there it is. Just shoot that one with a Sockham. And you got the, these two. Just on the path in front of you. Got that one in the far left corner. You got that one on the silo, just in front of you. You got one on the left of the far door and the one on the right of the far door. Yeah, so this way you might want to use a pentasmin. Yeah, but like I say, just use one. And then you got the one on top of the far cipher. Yep, yeah, shoot is on the very top of his head. So make sure you don't shoot the cipher by mistake. Otherwise it will explode. 
and it'll be a game over. And then once you've done them all guys, head forward for a little cutscene and then be ready for the Harrier fight. So you're going to take a Stinger, take the Stinger missiles. You don't have a radar now, this is pretty much how the fight is going to be on Extreme. It'll be, it'll be more difficult, um, but I mean just in terms of looking for him, yeah it's going to be the same as it's going to be on Extreme, no radar. So remember, when he flies into the distance, if you can look for his trial from his thrusters and keep shooting him, and if you're quick enough, you should destroy his missiles and hit him at the same time. And he'll do a flyby, of course, when he does that. So you know you've got to do a U-turn. Yeah, whenever he does a flyby, remember to do a U-turn and look in the opposite direction. And then just keep shooting him. Even if you shoot a rocket when you're not locked on, if you manage to lock onto him shortly after, the rocket should still kind of try and hit him so yeah another flyby just do a uh, 180 bit annoying when the helicopter gets in the way especially when he flies into the distance and he's directly behind it yes yeah, so at half HP he's going to do that barrage of missiles yes yeah, so just go down to avoid these now we'll do a few more attacks now, you're on easy mode. He'll sometimes do um, like a machine gun fire. His barrage of missile attacks will go on for much longer. Yeah, I mess up here. I didn't know where he was, that, that was the thing. And I think it's because I, I went down as probably just before he fired his missile. Yep, so if he does that, he'll it'll go for much longer. If you, if you kind of try to stay in the middle there, just on the steps, you can kind of avoid them when they're going to the bottom and to the top. And as soon as he stops, and the missiles have all exploded, try and get a few hits on him. Again, he's going to fly into the distance. But I can see where he is, so I can get a few shots in quickly. There we go. As soon as the lock on appears, fire. Fly by, so we're going to do 180. If you just machine gun fire, avoid it in a similar way to what we did that barrage of missiles. Sort of go down the steps. Yeah, this, it goes on for ages, this does. So you can kind of go a little bit down the steps, so you're behind the, um, behind the small wall and avoid it that way. Yeah, that doesn't work as you can see. Yeah, this fight will be more optimised for extreme, don't worry. Right, and then once he stops, resume shooting him. If you do run out of ammo, Snake will be throwing it down to you, so don't worry about running out of ammo. And that should be it, guys. Last one. Yep, got him. Yeah, so a little bit harder than what he is on very easy. His attacks are quite different and going for longer. Now you might want to save here just in case you do mess up this jump. I'm not sure what to do with my save here on Extreme. Do I save before him or just after? Because if you mess up this jump, quite it's quite an embarrassing jump to um, miss. But I have missed it before. Yeah, this jump here. If you get the angle wrong. Yeah, but once you land, grab the PSG1 bullets and also... The tranquilizer bullets there. We didn't need them for later. Carefully go across here. And when you jump over this railing, jump over the part where the two railings meet in the middle. Yeah, where they meet in the middle. That's it. A guy will appear on the top left. Now you want to trank this guy. Otherwise he's going to spot you later. So yeah, just trank him. It's safer. That's it, once you knocked him out. Carry on across. I guess you can perhaps use a pentasm in there. We get five more later, so it means um, you've got five for the oil field fight, plus whatever you have right now. Yep, shimmy across that railing, climb this ladder. Now it's gonna be a guard in the wind, two guards here in the windows. What I do, I crawl beneath the second window, like so, and crawl beneath the six. Four, five, six. Yep. So crawl beneath the second and the sixth windows. And then you'll avoid the enemies. 
you can get past the second window before the guard sees you um, but 6-1 will always see you even if you're quick so it's best I, I just always crawl below the second and the six yep easy dodge hold the button in t and time it so you land beneath the second one stand up and do it again dodge just before six one so you land below it and you can start crawling and get past stand there guys if you want a little shower it could potentially warm you up a bit if you're cold right and once you jump over here guys lob a shove grenade that's it it's going to disrupt these ciphers so it shouldn't see you that's it once shove grenade goes off carefully dodge across here like I say, there are some ciphers, but it shouldn't see you because the shove grenade has disabled them. And I'm coming here, guys, into the Shell 2 core. Air purification room. So when you first come in, there's no enemies. We start living for ourselves. Yeah, you can just skip through these cutscenes if you want. Yeah, no enemies to begin with. Right, and then you want to come along here. Yep, you can grab the M9 bullets beside the steps there. And then head into the fire elevator and head down to B2. Where we're going to get a Nikita missile, which is in a slightly different place compared to very easy mode. And it moves again on the extreme. It's basically, the higher the difficulty, the further away it is in the underwater section. Yeah, so as long as your health is full, um, you'll... Oxygen will deplete much, much slower. So yeah, remember, press circle to um, swim. Just keep spamming it. That's all I do. And um, yeah, I'm kind of, kind of getting used to these controls now. I know they're very awkward to begin with, but slowly getting used to these underwater controls. Yeah, so um, just go right and then left at the far end. And then there it is, guys. The Nikita missile. Head back. Of course, you can't look at my map because I've got radar turned off. But this is how it's going to be on extreme. So good idea to get used to no radar. Right, and then back up to the elevator. And head back up to floor one. Right, so now we've got Nikita. We can rescue the Prez. We don't need to shoot these two cameras in this room no longer because we've already got a trophy for destroying five cameras. Surprise, it's only five. You thought it would have been much more than that. Yeah, so come here, jump onto these crates and um, the path through here is a little bit different. So follow the Nikita, but you want to go right because that path's blocked now, straight ahead. Then follow the path around and then turn the next right. Basically go right and then right again and that leads you to a press. But he'll dance around a bit now, so be careful. He'll start doing like cartwheels and stuff. So yeah, just be very careful. You don't, you don't hit him with a Nikita. Right, and destroy the um, control unit for the electric floor. And then head across and save his life. President Johnson. Huh? So you're finally here. You've been expecting me? Your equipment, that skull suit, isn't exactly standard military issue. Are yeah, you so you can skip this cutscene. Do you read me, sir? Uh, yes. Don't know why they have to do this. The Literally standing in front of him, and he's go, has to go on a codec course. Not even anybody around to hear. Are they financial, political, or military? I wish... Yeah, sometimes I was just letting cutscenes right. play out while I was looking at my text guide and just seeing what's next. You know, looking ahead a little bit. We're not too far away now, guys. What, 40 minutes left? This is the vamp fight strategy still works, by the way. Yeah, grab the sock and bullets. I guess you might need them. Um, we're not going to need them, but there's some sock and bullets there. Yeah, so now, now you've got key card level 4. We're going to head back down to um, B1 and we're going to go and do the vamp fight. How did you manage to... Photos of snake taken by... Yeah, now what happens, you can still you can still lie down in that corner, um, but he'll try to... When you shoot him now, as he walks towards you, he sort of like dodges out of the way. 
Um, but if you just wait for him to crouch, you can just shoot him easily. So the strategy does still work for um, for Vamp. It's quite similar to the Olga one in a way. Because once you see my Olga strategy on Extreme, I just always aim in the same place. And then I wait for the boss to run into my line of fire. And then fire. And it's very similar. Yeah, very similar Olga and Vamp. I'm in different positions because it's different boss arenas. But it's the same thing where we just always aim in the same place. And just wait for the boss to walk into our line of fire. Very easy to do. Right, so time to get your feet wet again. So yeah, back into the water. So you want to take the first right. Go to far end and then go left. And then take the next left. Followed by the next right. Just keep low to avoid the um, water mines. And then left and then right again, guys. That's it. Let's take you to the far southeast door. Then spam triangle to open it. As long as you've got full health, you should be able to get out of the water before having to um, get your oxygen back. So carefully just swim either above or below the scaffolding. Some of uh, not scaffolding, but um, the debris. Some of it, there's like one or two gaps you can swim through. So you don't necessarily always have to go below it. Sometimes you can go above and below. Just whatever path works for you. Yeah, then open that hatch. And then take a sharp right. And then up here, guys. Yep, to the level 4 door. We get a codec call from Articon and Snake. Right, so ready for the vamp fight. Yeah, this, it, I guess it takes a little bit of time. But it's very safe to do so. So go right, go to northeast, northeast corner, grab the ammo on the way, lay down. That's it. And just move forward a little like I just did. And then you want to aim about here, guys. It might take you moments just to get your um, aim in the right spot. But you want it so when he crouches, you're automatically aiming at his head. And there we go. So, like so. If you think you were too close to his body, then just readjust slightly. So when he crouches again. And what you're trying for, guys, is as soon as he crouches, you're ready to just headshot him. Every single time. If you body shot him, you will take less stamina from him. Yeah, so remember, using the M9, you don't want to kill him. So yeah, just wait for him to crouch. Yep, there we go. Easy headshots, guys. Yeah, just keep doing that. There is another way to do this, which works pretty well. Apparently, you... You stay near the water, and you, you drop in, so you're sort of hanging into the water. And um, then when he goes to crouch down to knife you, you jump back up... And then do a melee combo. And then you drop back down and just repeat. So yeah, that's that way. Um, I'm not sure how effective that one is yet. I know this works really well. So I'll probably give them both a go on them extreme. Just see what one works best or which one is safer to do. I know this is really safe. But he might take longer to kill an extreme. Because obviously he's going to have increased stamina. And my bullets will do less damage to a stamina bar but the Olga, the Olga fight wasn't too bad so it might not be that different the Olga fight I just had to change it up because you can't lock on that's the only problem yeah so we'll just keep doing this if you try to shoot him when he's walking towards you, he'll just keep dodging out of the way. He did it very, very easy. It's very easy. Um, he won't dodge at all. He's like doesn't have a dodging perk. So you just shoot him. He'll just stand there and take the bullets from you. Yeah, but if you try to shoot him now, you're just going to waste bullets. You have to wait for him to crouch below you, uh, near you, in order to get the hits in. But it's pretty effective. So that's two bosses so far where we just camp and aim in the same spot and wait for the enemy to come into our line of fire. I'm kind of worried about the Tengu fight a little bit. You know, with Snake. Kind of worried about that slightly, but we'll see how it goes. Just because any damage you take on there, you carry 
you carry the same health bar into the Metal Gear Ray fight. That's a problem. Yeah, so once you killed him. You get control back. You can grab the M9 ammo to the left here. Just in case you're getting a little bit low. Yep, and you can hit in here. Jump back in the water. Remember to get the body armor here. So go down the steps. Go right and then right again. Stay low to avoid the mines. Go to far end. Go left. And then the body armor is here just at the end. I believe this body armor is always in the same place no matter what difficulty you're on. I mean, I'll confirm that in the next stream. But I think it does. Right, and then come back down to the fork. Go right and then take a sharp right. And then up here. Yep. Out the water. Now, once you come in this room, go down the steps and do a sharp turn and grab the pentasm in on the left side. We need that for the oil field fight. And then open the middle locker, guys, for cutscene with Emma. Leave me. Put your ear against my chest and listen to my heartbeat. Your heart. Right, now I've got him on our back. It's going to carry on, retrace our path all the way back to where the vamp fight was. And then take a hand, guys, and carry her, carry her through. Yeah, so when you do the final water section with Emma, um, she's got a smaller O2 gauge than you because obviously she's got smaller lungs. Let me guess. That noise. But once her, once her oxygen does run out, she'll start losing HP. But her HP recovers just if you leave her sitting down for a few seconds. Her HP will re uh, recover. So um, once she starts dying, I'm just going to leave her and carry on till the end. Because if your health is full as well, you can, you should be able to just make it, guys, to the end of this water section without going up for air. As long as you do follow the right path and do not take any wrong turns. Yeah, so health is slowly going down. Like I say, she recovers health pretty quick. So you don't need to recover, uh, worry about it too much. All you, like I say, all you need to do is just leave her. And when she sits down, she'll slowly recover her HP. Right, and once you get out here guys, open the elevator and you want to drag her inside because she's scared of the bugs. And then once you're inside, take it up to the top floor. Right, and there's going to be some enemies here now guys, we want to hold up. So first of all, come to this guy near the vendor machine room, or where the node is, the node room. Hold him up, get his dog tag. And he can carry her with you to the southwest corner. Right, and then carefully hold up this guy. Just make sure he is walking away from you. Yeah, hold him up. And get his dog tag. Then go back to Emma. And escort her up to the southeast corner. And then hold up the final guard, which will come from the entrance. He'll normally come out and then he'll walk north. 
Um, so you don't have to go and hold him up straight away. You can wait for him to walk north if you're worried about get him spotting you. Yeah, so he will eventually walk north. Yeah, he'll look left, pause for a few seconds, and then walk north. Yeah, hold him up, guys, and then grab Emma and take the east exit. Yeah, so once you come out here, guys, there'll be three cyphers you want to shoot. Or is it three or is it two? So we shot the first one. Then you might have to... Yeah, it's two, sorry. Yeah, you might have to wait a moment for the second one to appear. There it is. Yep, yeah, so make sure you shoot two cyphers. And you can grab this ammo outside. PSG-1 bullets and shaft grenades. There's a ration there. And then take Emma's hand. And then take it east to the fork. And then once you get to the fork, release Emma. You can see she's actually healed some of her HP already, I think. Yeah, they come up here and you want to hold up this guy. Just make sure he's not about to turn around. He doesn't walk very far. He normally just goes left and right a few steps. But yeah, just make sure he's not going to turn around just as you approach him. Yeah, get his dog tag and then come over here and extinguish these flames with your coolant spray. And then once you've took out the flames, take Emma by the hand, guys, and take it into the south exit. Freeze. <gasps> yes, this first guy you hold up wait for the far guy to walk away um if you go too quick he'll be looking in your direction now see you hold up this guy so you just want to wait a second to make sure the far guy is walking away and then quickly hold up this guy and drag him back here and then once he's back here you can hold him up grab the dog tag and then the far guard wait for him to walk back and um, before you head over and hold him up as well yeah but with that first guard as well don't take too long because he eventually walks into the middle and he just, he doesn't come back into this um, northern corridor. He'll just stay in this sort of middle part patrolling near this guy. So yeah, just don't take too long. Like I say, just wait a second or two for him to turn away. And you can hold up the first guard, drag him back. And then come and hold up this guard once he's walking away. And then open this hatch, guys. Once it's open, go and get Emma. You can see she's healed all her HP now. Because I left her standing for quite a while. Yeah, so now you've opened the door. Head inside there with Emma and you'll begin the oil field fight guys. Right, so um, yeah, if you haven't already got thermal goggles, they will be beside you uh, when you get control back and grab the tranquilizer bullets as well. I think if your ammo gets below 20, then bullets respawn. Yeah, I think it's if you get below 20. Right, so um, there's going to be some claymores on the f very first path to the first silo. Yeah, so on the first path to the first silo, it's going to be some claymores. Yeah, so make sure you shoot them with a normal PSG-1. And when you're shooting the guards, use the Tranquilizer variant. Yes, five Claymores there. But it's only on this very first path. Yeah, so you got Pentasm in as well, you might want to use. I've still got them all because I didn't use any earlier. You'll probably need about six or seven Pentasm in total. 
um, for this on easy mode. I don't use them when I'm shooting the Cyphers. I use Pentasmins when I'm shooting the guards. Or if you shoot a vamp at the end. Yeah, you want to save one Pentasmin for vamp right at the end. And if you if you call Snake for help, by the way, despite what you might read online, I mean, maybe it's maybe it's been changed in this version, or whatever this version is based on. I'm not sure. Um, but I've died here. Looked at my kills on the screen, and then I've done this section. Allowed Snake to kill enemies during this section, and then got killed afterwards. And my kills were still on the same level. So any kills which Snake does here does not count towards you or against you, shall I say? So it's okay to call Snake. And let him kill the enemies, guys. Don't worry, it'll be okay. I mean, don't matter on this playthrough, but on your extreme playthrough for a big boss rank, I don't think it's going to matter. I am, obviously, I will test it and make sure first. But yeah, when you get a chance to call Snake and ask for his help, kills that he gets will not count against you. Like I think the class is indirect kills, and um, which don't class against you. Uh, similar to when an enemy, enemy falls over a railing, for example, that doesn't count against you either. Yeah, but be ready. When she gets close to that first silo, obviously all the enemies will spawn on it. I've got rid of them already. And then the next bunch of enemies will spawn on the second silo once she approaches that. And then there won't be any more until vamp spawns in. But obviously, Cyphers will gradually spawn throughout... Um, as you kill them Yeah, it's quite it's quite a long long and slow section this one uh, But it's not really much you can do about it Yeah, that massive red blob in the sky that is the Sun by the way Right, so hopefully soon, um, Snake will call us and we'll have a chance to call him and ask for his help. He's a lot more accurate than me. Right, she finally got past that first silo by the looks of it. Yep, there she is. So yeah, as she gets towards the second silo, guys. Be ready to kill the enemies which spawn on it. Well, not kill them, but tranquilize them. You know what I mean. Yeah, tranquilize them. I think I've already... Have I already called Snake for his help? I think I have. Or did I not? Maybe I didn't. Because I did have, I did actually reload this after finding out if his deaths count... If, if his kills counted or not. Oh, no, he is helping. Yeah, sometimes I like to play a game, you know, so you can kill the most enemies, me or Snake. I actually find it quite hard to beat him. Yes, yeah, so like I said, I think if your ammo gets below 20, maybe it's past a certain threshold. I mean, depending on the size of your clip, maybe that will change on high difficulties. But yeah, on this one, anyway, seems to drop. Maybe it's time related, uh, but seemed it might be when you get below 20. Yeah, when she gets past the second silo, of course, she's probably talking to Johnny at the moment. And we can listen in on you if you want with your directional mic. Oh, there she is. Not even got behind it yet. Yeah, she'll be talking to Johnny now. Here she is. Yeah, so when she gets past that second silo, once she gets so far away, a cipher will spawn behind her. So just be ready to um, kill it. Snake will likely kill it for you. Yeah, there it is. Right, and shortly after, Vamp should appear. 
So you want to be ready, you want to use your tranquilizer, PSG1, and of course make sure you've got at least one pentasm in ready. Just so you could don't accidentally shoot um, Emma by mistake. It wouldn't be a bad thing. I mean, worse things have happened. But the thing is, we need to shoot Vamp to progress, unfortunately. Yeah, so it's up to you where you want to shoot him. Groin shots, kneecap him, shoot him in his toes. Um, I'm just going to go for headshots. Go for headshots, just be careful because um, Emma's hand is in the way. There you go, got him. Right, so once you get control back in the parcel room, in the top. Uh, no, sorry, this is the bottom, isn't it? Yeah, the bottom part of the parcel room. Snake, what's your situation over there? Emma. Yeah, so head into here. Take the door on the left. Now, the enemy of the radio, he's actually at the top now. So, and very easy, he's actually in that small room at the bottom. But yeah, now he's over here. You can hear him listening to his music. And then you want to take the southeast door. I think I'd take the northwest door first by mistake. Yeah, hold him up, guys. Get his dog tag. I think there's only one more dog tag now. And that's the one from Snake at the end. Yeah, so hold him up. If you can't get his dog tag, he's probably dropped beside the beside some type of wall. And his body's in the way, so you might have to move it. There you go. And hug the wall to get it. Right, I'm going to grab them stun grenades. Like I say, you want to take a southeast exit. Yeah, you should have 86 dog tags at this point. You need one more. Like I say, that's one from Snake. And that's every dog tag on very easy and easy. I think in total, to unlock the um, stealth suit with Raiden... I think you need to get 100, I think it's 121. So you don't have many more we have to get. Right, yeah, south east exit, guys. Now there'll be three ciphers here. You want to take them all out. Just be careful of that one closest to you. It can spot you if you go too far forward or you're not careful. Yeah, so three ciphers. I've done one. That's number two. And then number three. If you shoot them in the gun, they'll be destroyed in one hit. But if you shoot them in the ring, that normally takes about three hits to knock them down. Right. Dodge across this um, flooring. Watch out for the trap doors. Right, coming to the shell one core. And then headed to the elevator, guys, to begin the interrogation sequence. Yep, not far from the end, guys. Almost there. Right, so if you're skipping these cutscenes, be ready to spam triangle. Remember, Solidus will grab you and you have to hold your breath. So yeah, so be ready to spam triangle. Yeah, so... um. Be on to Metal Gear Solid 3 next after this, guys. You know, I never really I never really completed Metal Gear 3 back in the day. I think I remember doing Metal Gear Solid 2. Definitely did 1. I played 1 a lot. But yeah, number 3, I don't think I played it a lot. But I've heard it's easier than Metal Gear Solid 2. So I guess that would be nice. Just take my time. Something a bit easier. I know it's going to perhaps be more collectible to plan out. Um, so we'll see. But apparently, yeah, in terms of difficulty, it's a little bit easier than the Metal Gear Solid 2 planning. You remember me, don't you? You've grown. High concentration of cerebral implants. Have they altered your memory, too? Yes, remember to hold a uh, spam triangle. Or just hold your breath in real life. That should work as well. So you join. 
Olga. You can't keep this up. They're bound to find you. Yeah, so once Olga appears, shortly after this, you should be able to break free. And... Why did she damage me then? I don't know. I don't know what happened then. Or was that damage from the um, holding my breath? Yeah, but once you get control back, you can let it all hang out. And, um, yeah, we're going to head into the Arsenal area, guys. Right, so out here. Arsenal gear, Jujunum. Right, wait for that guy to walk back. Yep, once he walks back, quickly go right and then up these steps. Now, this can be a bit tricky. Wait for him to turn around. Now, quickly go behind him and melee him towards the railing and he should fall over. He won't always fall over, but most of the time he will. And if he doesn't, you can normally get away from him quick enough. And then make your way along here. Make sure you dodge across the gaps. And then come to this far corner and crouch and hide. Now, guard is going to come down that path. There he is. Wait for him to look south and then run past him. You all have time. That's it. Now quickly run past him, guys, and into the exit. Yeah, you will have time to do that. Is it gonna work? Is it gonna work that well in extreme? We will see when we get there. Yeah, then in this corridor, keep checking all your codec calls. Keep checking them all, guys, as soon as they appear. Yeah, then keep running from door to door. I'm not sure exactly how you trigger this, but this seems to trigger it pretty quick. Yeah, keep running from door to door, guys. Yep, yeah, door to door. Keep checking Kodak calls and eventually Rose will call you. Yep, once they call you, you'll have the blade. Move the right, stick up and down. right, after getting the blade, do not use it just yet, because once you start using it, um, shortly after the cutscene will advance the story. Now you want to choke out Snake. Don't break his neck, just sort of make him unconscious, so that he falls down. Yep, and they're going to pick him up, guys, and drop him, and he'll release a dog tag. Meryl's. Yep, so once you've got that, just start using your blade now until um, you advance the story. Snake will always attack you here. Um, so I've got to try to figure out something to do here on extreme because obviously it damages you a little bit. Yeah, to avoid this damage from him. Probably a way to do it, um, but I'll figure it out on extreme. Of course, if you get low in health now, you can just heal. I think I do heal anyway just before the Metal Gear Ray fight. But yeah, just keep using your blades until the story advances. Yeah, he gets a bit upset when you knock him down, and he always comes and attacks you afterwards. Yep, eventually. Yeah, so just keep attacking with it. Eventually, you'll show off your skills in a nice cinematic and you'll get a control back in the first Tengu fight yeah this is that part which I said is a bit annoying so I'm going to do what I did on very easy oh all I'm going to do I'm just going to run to the end lobbing stun grenades you don't have as much ammo as you do on very easy because on very easy you get max ammo for every single weapon but on easy mode and above I think all you get max ammo for is your sting and missile I believe everything else is at the ammo point you had um, prior to this section 
Yeah, it's so going to lob grenades, stun grenades, guys, and just make our way to the top door. Like I said, I've got to do quite a bit of testing with this on Extreme. See if it's better to just carefully pick off all the enemies. You know, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, for EC, we're just going to do it this way. Yeah, try to lob the stun grenades forwards so it lands near the enemies. You know, next enemies that spawn. I'm trying to avoid a bit of damage, but it doesn't really matter on EC because, like I say, you can heal up. And the idea is to get to the far door and we're going to do that little glitch. So you're going to lean against the door, go into first person mode, then while you're still in first person, you're going to let go of leaning and then do a melee attack. And then when you do the kick, you're going to let go of R1. Let go of first person mode. And then what that happens, I think it makes you turn around slightly and it glitches you through the door and advances that story part. Yeah, it's a rush in there. And then here, come forward, guys. Yeah, now we're going to let Snake kill them all. Snake, he's pretty good here, actually. He kills, I mean, he can lose a bit of health. Uh, but sometimes he might, once he gets into that rhythm, that's it. The enemies just keep getting killed really quick. But sometimes it can take him like I say a moment before he gets into the rhythm but if any enemies come for you just be ready with your blue blade just to knock him out with it but yeah sorry just back to that door glitch guys so yeah the idea is I mean you get rid of guys any way you want obviously you try not to kill him stun grenades it seems to kill him but it doesn't count as a kill I don't know how that works but it does but yeah your idea is just get to the door by any means necessary then at the door you lean against it, you go into first person mode, then you stop leaning against it, but you're still in first person. Then as soon as you let go of the door, you do a melee combo, then during the kick animation, you let go of first person button. And then for some, some reason what that does, it sort of glitches your arm through the door or something. So you actually trigger um, that point, which makes story advance. And it makes you just run straight through the door instantly. So yeah, that's how little glitch works. But yeah, this part, yeah, hopefully this specific part will work the same on Extreme or very similar. Right, and now for the Metal Gear Ray fight. Now, this is very interesting, uh, but this strategy we're going to do here is pretty much going to be how we do it on Extreme. Obviously, you will need to be better with the strategy on Extreme. Creating the perfect assassin to retire Solid Snake's brother. S3 stands for Solid Snake Simulation. It's a development program to artificially But yeah, the strategy here can be quite tricky to do, but once you get it, it works, it does work really well, and it's probably the only strategy you can really use here uh, without taking too much damage. Sound like someone you know, Jack. So the way this the way this works is um you need to attack the first three Metal Gear Race in a very specific order. And by the way, on easy mode, you only have to kill 5 to complete the boss fight. On extreme, you have to kill 20. Very easy was 3, by the way. Um, easy is 5. And yeah, extreme, you have to kill 20. So it's going to be crazy. Uh, but ammo does respawn in the area when you get low, by the way, in certain spots. Okay, so the way you want to do this, like I say, you have to do this in a very specific pattern. So, f first of all, you dodge forward. So dodge forward. And then you shoot, you're going to shoot the Metal Gears in the leg, in the knee, by the way, and then the head. Always the knee and then the head, unless I say otherwise. Knee and then head. So you're going to dodge forward, middle one, knee, head. The one on the right, knee, head. The one on the left, knee, head. Then do that again, middle, right, left. So you do that pattern twice. It's in my text guide. That's why I made a save there, just so you can practice this later if you want to. Yeah, so dodge forwards. Leg, head on the middle one. On the right one, leg, head. And on the left, leg, head. And then repeat that one more time for all three again. Same pattern. Yeah, always try to go for the nearest leg so it's quicker, obviously. And then once you've done it twice, and then you're going to shoot the middle one again, knee, head, and the one on the right in the head. Yeah, very important. Then you're going to run to the right a bit to dodge the middle one when he jumps in. And then you're going to kill the middle one quickly. Yeah, make sure you run to the right. Yep, then quickly kill the middle one. Knee and head. Yep, and then go right. Kill that one. Knee and head. Yeah, try to make sure you hit him. 
Yep, and then the one on the far left, knee and head again to kill him. It's very important you go right. You kind of you kind of want to make it so you're from where you started, you're sort of in the far right corner of the map of the arena. Yep, and then what you'll find you should be near where all the enemies are spawning in. You can see them all here. And then all you do guys, you just keep picking off the one at the front. Keep killing it until it's dead. Knee head, knee head. And when it eventually jumps onto the arena, keep doing the same thing. If it's only got a very small part of health left, by the way, you can normally just kill it with a headshot. But a knee, a knee followed by a headshot will open its mouth and it does more damage. Yep, and then focus on the next one. Yeah, so this is kind of how it's going to work, guys. I mean, I did, did, I did get hit the first a few times when we, when we started going right after doing the sort of first part of the strategy. Um, so you might have to dodge first a few attacks. Um, but once strategy gets going, it seems to work pretty well. Just hopefully it will work in a very similar way on Xtreme. Yeah, that's it. It works well because you don't really give the other enemies a chance to attack because you're sort of killing them as they're spawning in. Yeah, going to make another save. Yeah, so Solidus next. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this on Xtreme. I mean... Maybe it's not going to be much different. I mean, the Metal Gear Ray one is quite annoying because obviously your health carries across from the Tengu fight onto the Metal Gear Ray fight. Now, if you get set on fire here, quickly equip the BDU and it'll instantly take out the flames. Yep, yeah, I wasn't looking. I wasn't looking here, I was looking at my text guide, that's why my oxygen just disappeared. Yeah, but be ready to uh, spam triangle guys just after that first cutscene with Solidus. And then, yeah, we're going to take care of Solidus. So he's quite a bit different to very easy, he's more aggressive now. And he'll deflect your attacks a bit more. Just remember you can block, I always forget about the block button, so don't forget about that. Uh, but normally what works quite well is trying to attack him from behind. You know, just try and get behind in the best way you can. That normally works quite well. Uh, but when you are attacking him, try to make sure you do a combo. When you do hit him, he sort of takes a step back. So you kind of have to hit him and then possibly move a bit closer to him. If he gets out of range. Right. Right, let's do him. Final boss. Yeah, so equip your armor. I'm not sure if your armor actually helps here. I think it just deflects. I think it just helps with uh, gunfire. But yeah, just be careful when you're running close to him. Most of his attacks you can dodge if you run behind him. You know, run around and behind. But when he does his kick, it has quite a large kind of area of effect around him. That kick there. So be careful with that. You might not want to get too close. I've got to try to learn to um, dodge that for extreme. Yeah, like I say, if you get lit on fire, equip your BDU and that extinguish the flame straight away. Or I think equipping a cardboard box does the same thing as well. Yeah, so when you do manage to hit him, you want to keep hitting him until you knock him down. And then sort of retreat and then compose yourself again, ready for the next attack. If he jumps on the rooftop, you always want to try to dodge down the roof. Because then you should end up behind him. Because when he jumps on the rooftop, he'll always always be facing up the roof. So if you dodge down it, you should land behind him. Um, and hopefully have a chance to get an attack in from behind as he recovers. Yeah, that kick, that's what you got to watch out for. That's pretty much the only attack um, which you can't dodge by running close and around him. That's one which can catch you. Missiles, fairly easy to dodge. Just run sideways and dodge, I guess. You remember, we are using a blue blade. We are trying to knock out his stamina, not kill him. So make sure you use the blue blade. Press square to change it. Yeah, if you manage to grab you with your tentacle, you'll have to spam triangle to um, hold your breath. Yeah, eventually, once he gets down to below half HP, uh, once he gets a chance, he'll shed his tentacles 
and get a little bit more aggressive. And he'll dash around a bit more. So again, I'm just going to equip my BDU or cobble box. I guess that works. And then back to my body armor. To get rid of the flames. Yeah, I think he's about to kick me then. Right, he's probably going to go into second phase now. Yeah, I'm just worried about his kick here. That's why I'm running into him and then away. Yeah, if you try and bait an attack and then attack him from the side or behind when he's doing an attack, that works well. Yeah, so he's going to dash more now. Uh, but he's also going to dash towards you as well and do a lunge attack sometimes. So listen to out for any sort of does his war, uh, war cry. And then when he does that, that's normally when he's going to dash towards you and hit you. There we go. And you want to be ready to sort of dodge away from him or to the side to avoid it. Sometimes you'll do one or two at the same time. His lunges, so be careful. Yeah, does a massive combo there as well. But if you keep a good range from him, you can kind of run behind him and attack from behind. Yeah, there's lunge. Another lunge. Like I say, you can do two or three lunges within a quick space of time, so be careful. Yeah, oh, he's, do he's still doing the round ass kick, so just watch out flat. And I think I pretty much got him. Oh, he's got like one HP left. Just careful you don't go too close to the edges because you will get knocked off. There we go. Got him, guys. So that's it. Easy mode done. All dog tags. All that's left is extreme with about 80% of the dog tags. Yep. So playtime 217. I think the credits took about 10 minutes. But yeah, now you should have enough dog tags to um, acquire the infinity wig. Uh, sorry, the brown wig, basically the infinity wig and the bandana. Yes, yeah, so you get a trophy, guys, Yorkie. And Beagle. I think they're for getting 30% off the tanker and 30% off the plant dog tags. Yep, so make sure you make a save because when we do extreme, we're going to load this safe from this cleared safe. Um, you are going to have them special items, but as long as you don't equip them, it will not void your big boss rank. So I know you can't use special items on them, but as long as you don't equip them, you'll be okay. This is my Metal Gear Solid 2 Extreme slash Big Boss Rank slash Dog Tags playthrough. Yeah, we're doing this on Extreme. We're going to get a Big Boss Rank and we're going to be getting um, 29 Dog Tags in the Tanker and 39 Dog Tags in the Plant. So with this and other Dog Tags from Very Easy and Easy, we'll get you these Stealth Camos. So if you come into your Master Guide and look on the codename requirements on that page, you can see exactly what is required for a Big Boss Rank. For extreme, you have to play in difficulty extreme. You need to have three alerts or less. They are all story related, so you basically can't get any more alerts. Um, zero kills, zero rations, zero continues. So if you do die, you have to reload. Uh, quit title screen, sorry guys, and reload your save. Under three hours and under 700 shots. We use about 530 shots here. So you've got 100 or so to spare. And my saves, I save before the soldier ambush. Fortune fight, Fat Man fight, the Harrier fight, the Oil Fence, and then three at the end, Tengu, Metal Gear Ray, and Solidus. It's up to you if you want to move some about. The important ones I would say are Soldier Ambush, Fat Man, Harrier, the Oil Fence, and then one at the end. Yeah, that's pretty much all you want to do. Problem is, at the end, you have like three boss fights, kind of, all together, and you do not want to be redoing all of them again if you die on one. So what you want to do first guys, come into boss survival and um, you just want to fight a snake and just practice this strategy with Olga. Right, so straight away, run over to this gap. You want to be about here, about a step or two away and you get a little cutscene first and then you've got literally like a second or two to quickly shoot her before she runs away to the corner. It's very important you shoot her before she runs away to the corner because if you can manage to do that, then when she comes back to here, she'll almost always stand on the left. And then you just wait for her leg to come into view and shoot her. And just keep doing that, guys. When she does step here, I don't shoot straight away. I normally wait for about a second. Sometimes with shoot straight away, it seems to miss more often. And then after a cutscene, guys, just sort of reposition your aim 
Ready, Fred's going to put a foot. And just keep doing that. Yeah, it's very important. As soon as you get control, run straight towards the gap. Like I say, you want to be about a step or two away. Then quickly crouch and quickly shoot her before she runs away to that corner and triggers that corner cutscene. If you do not manage to shoot her before, then it kind of messes up this whole strategy. Like I said, she might stand on the right instead of the left. And when she stands on the right, it's more difficult to hit her. So that's pretty much it, guys. And then once you've got a strategy going, all you're going to do, as you see me doing, just stay here and just wait for it to walk into view. With that as well, it's quite important you kill her quickly. Uh, because if you take too long, yeah, if you take too long, then she'll go and hide behind the blanket at the back and you won't be able to see her or she'll turn on the spotlight. So that's the easiest way. Uh, so before we go, guys, so you need radar off. So yeah, go into options and turn radar off. And then we're going to choose, well, I'm going to choose load game. I'm going to choose my easy cleared safe because like I say, I'm, I'm getting some dog tags in this in order to unlock all the camos. Yep, you want tanker plant and you want extreme. I think at the moment I have, I think I have like 50 dog tags. Yeah, you want to choose radar off, very important. I think I've got 50 of snake. Yeah, and you want game over if discovered. Yeah, game over if discovered. It just makes it quicker, you know, and you don't mistakenly not notice a alert. If you mess up, you can just get spotted and then just exit the title screen, guys, and just reload your save a little bit quicker if you've got that on. All right, All right so let's go. So, yeah, please pay attention, guys. This is very sort of timing. It relies on timing quite a lot, a lot of these strategies, and um, this can be quite difficult, um, but I've made the saves where all of the difficult parts are. So, yeah, there the dog types. We've got a snake, 50. So, straight away, turn, ar turn around. Run to the far side and follow this wall to the north and then hide behind this wall. The reason being is because on the extreme there's a guy on the top there and if you run forward here we'll see you. So you've got to run back, left, hide behind this wall, you want to crouch, wait for him to turn back and then go in the door. The reason we're crouching is because we're going to get a cold and we're not getting the medicine so it's going to sort of let it cure itself. But if you crouch you will not sneeze. Right, as soon as you come in here, hide against this wall and you see that guard walking away. Then we're going to come up behind him and hold him up, get his dog tag, and then trank him. Like I say, I'm getting pretty much most dog tags. I think about 80%. I avoid, I get, I think, three extra with snake. Yeah, in this locker here, guys, is some M9 ammo, so pick it up. Yeah, with snake, I think you need 86 for a stealth camo. I get 89. And with Raiden, you need 121, and I get 126. So since you're coming here, Press against this wall, move over to the corner, wait for that guard to walk to the right and then knock. Come over here, hide and crouch. Make sure you crouch otherwise you're going to cough. When he goes to investigate the noise, hold him up. Get his dog tag and trank him. Right, once you've done so, look to the west for when that guard turns away. Once he looks north, run after him and quickly hold him up. Like I said, this is very, very reliant on timing, guys. Yeah, hold him up. Get his dog tag and then track him. Now you want to crawl over to this guy. He's probably just walked up steps and he's looking out the window. We're crawling over to him because if not, you're going to cough on your way over. So crawl over, then stand up, hold him up. And try to get his dog tag. Now be very careful knocking into enemies when there's more than one around. I mean, it doesn't matter. This is last enemy in this room. But knocking into enemies makes a lot of noise on extreme difficulty so just be very very careful when holding enemies up that you do not knock into them unless you've already got everybody yeah grab them n9 bullets guys behind the bar come the steps yeah there's a text guide on this by the way guys we can find a good list of everything as well so you're going to come up here hold up this guy trank him afterwards once you've got a dog tag yep then i'm going to grab some more m9 bullets Underneath your steps. These bullets are not here after defeating Olga. So it's going to grab them now. An extra five bullets, I guess. Right, up the steps. Right, so this camera. Just wait beneath it until it turns to the south. You can either press against the wall and shimmy along. Or just make sure you're facing right like me. And as soon as it tastes, uh, turns for yourself, for yourself, walk across. Now here, quickly sprint over to this guy. Before he gets to the fork, 
hold him up and then drag him back a little bit like so and then get his dog tag do not knock into him the reason you pulled him back is because there's an enemy in the southeast corner and he will see you hold him up otherwise and once you tracked him open this door and you want to aim about there ready a guard is going to patrol down there and then he's going to stop and we're going to trank him like so be quick before he looks in your direction we trank him there because if not this guard might see yep and then you go to that wall you knock on it and wait for the southeast guard to come around to you yeah but that last guy because you tracked him behind the table this guy will not see him when he comes to investigate and then when he comes to check on his buddy hold him up guys get the tag and trank him that second guy who tranked, he's stubborn anyway, so we can't, we can't get his dog tag yet. That's why I've already tranked him. Now when you come along here, make sure you stick to the wall, otherwise that camera will see you. Yeah, stick to the wall like so. And then come these steps. So we're gonna be fighting Ogre in a minute, guys. So exactly like that strategy I just showed you at the start on um, boss survival. As soon as you get control, run about a step away from the middle, from the gap between them and Crace. Quickly crouch and aim, shoot her before she runs away to the corner. Yeah, there we go. Get ready to shoot her. And there we go. Yep, that's it. That's all you need to do. Now, when she comes back, she's going to go to the left. So I'm just getting my aim on the spot ready. I'd say don't shoot straight away because you're likely to miss. And the fire rate on the M9 is not particularly fast. Yeah, see, I waited about a second. Yep, yeah, careful. I know I did mess up a little bit here. Luckily, I did manage to recover. Yeah, but you'll find if you do mess it up, standing up and then releasing first person mode seems to make it go back to left. Makes it more likely that she will anyway. Because she saw she lobbed a grenade um, and I came back and she seemed to run back to left because I quickly stood up and exited first person. Yeah, because normally if you do miss her, she'll just run to the right and lob a grenade from the right as well. But hopefully you don't mess up like I did, guys, and it just works really well for you. Yeah, see, so I've got her in the um, I've got her in the rhythm now, so good to go. Yeah, I didn't want to make a save here because it's very early in. I mean, what are we? We are about eight minutes into the actual into the actual guide. You know, the actual playthrough itself. Yeah, one more. But between the timings for my safe, so the, sol the soldier ambush, that will be 15 minutes. Um, Fortune is 47 minutes. Fat Man is 52. Harry is 1 hour 12. Um, Oil Fence is 1 hour 43. So there's quite a time gap between the first and second safe and the um, fourth and fifth safe. Yeah, pick her up guys and the dropper to get a dog tag. And then you want to come in here and grab the USP ammo. Then we're going to go back outside. Because there's a guard on the east. Uh, but he's stubborn guard and you're not going to have any ammo to um, scare him with. So quickly grab that and then go back outside. Yeah, you're going to get cold as well doing this. I think... During, I think if you're outside during cutscenes as well, I think that adds to the time. Because in the official guide, you hold him up, he's stubborn. Yeah, in the official guide, it says it takes about 60 seconds, I think, to get a cold on extreme. But pretty much as soon as you start a game, you seem to almost have a cold. So I think maybe cutscenes outside count towards the time. Uh, but you can either use medicine to cure it, or... It seems to cure itself, I think, after a certain time has passed or when you've gone through so many rooms. So, once in here, guys, go down the steps, wait for that guy to walk past and then track him with the M9, then knock on the wall to attract his mate. I think he sees him anyway when you knock him out, but just attract, uh, knock on the wall just in case. Yeah, when he comes round, hold him up and track him. No need to get his dog tag, we've already got his two dog tags. Yeah, track him. Right. This guy, remember to keep to south wall so avoid that camera. Yeah, by the time you've taken out them two, this guy should be looking down here and can quickly run past him and get his, hold him up, guys. He's stubborn, so you're gonna have to shoot near him and get his dog tag. 
Yes, time is very, very important there. If you think he might have been a bit slow, just wait for him to walk and then walk back. Now in here, quicker coming here, grab the M9 bullets and then come back out and press against this wall. Now you gotta be very quick here. As soon as you open that door to pantry, go in, grab the M9 bullets, come back outside. Press against the wall. Once this guy turn around, run behind him, hold him up, and get his dog tag. Guyver. David Hater actually played the Guyver in the movie. Right, so here, you're going to crouch against this wall and you're going to crouch. Sorry, press against this wall and crouch. Yeah, because if not, you're going to sneeze. Right, and you're going to hold him up when he walks past to the middle. Get his dog tag. Carefully, do not go any further forward along that west corridor because it is a camera. Yep, then once you knocked him out, get a camera, guys. Yeah, so the three story alerts, they're all at the end. The oil fence counts as a story alert and also both Tengu fights. Yeah, that's your three alerts. So once you're in here, head into the main passage and head south. Now, once you get to this corner, wait, because there's a guard is going to walk west in a second. You can just see him there. That's it, you just turn back. Freeze. Well, I'm going to hold him up when he turns around. Get a star tag. Yeah, so like I was saying guys, I get three extra dog tags with Snake. I think there's about four which I don't get. And there's about 15 which I don't get on Raidens. So here, you can wait for him to reach his steps. Then you're going to shoot him in his body to make him stop. And then give him a headshot. Just makes it easy to hit his head guys if you shoot him in the chest first. Because it makes him stop. Now you're going to wait for his friend to come and investigate. And then you're going to trank him as well. There you go, like so. We've already got these dog tags. So, um, yep, no need to worry about getting them anymore. So once you trank them too, come down the steps and enter the engine room. Now, this very first dog tag, this guy will despawn if you exit and come back in or if you continue. So you've got to do this very first time. Hold him up, get his dog tag. You can knock onto this guy. This guy you can knock into to knock him back. But he must be quick before the guy further below comes within sort of like hearing range yeah this guy here and then jump over this railing wait for him to walk past drop down don't worry you have to sign the footsteps when you drop in hold him up and you might want to drag him about here because if not sometimes this dog tag will fall down the hole and do not knock into this guy because the guy below will hear you hold him up get his dog tag and go down the steps hold up this guy on the right Get his dog tag and trank him. And then this pillar, we're going to hide against it on this side. Yeah, press against it. And just look on the left, you'll see guard walk past in a second. There he comes. Once he turns around, run after him and get his dog tag. Freeze. Yeah, so Metal Gear Solid 3 to do next, guys. And um, I think that's going to be a lot simpler because you can do platinum. In one playthrough on that. Yeah, so once you've got that dog tag coming here, now you want to walk so far along there until that guard turns around and starts walking towards you. If you don't walk down that lower passage, he'll just stay in the far corner. So you have to walk down that passage a little bit to make him come up towards you. But he will stop just like that and then he will turn around. Once he turns around, go behind him, hold him up, you can run past him and get his dog tag. I guess there's a chance that might fall down below, <laughs> but otherwise it's going to be too... I'm not going dra to drag him anyway, it's going to be too far away. But we do get, like I say, we do get three extra dog tags anyway. Right, and then come up here. Now be very careful, if you're too slow, he might be looking down. Because you'll see in a second, he does eventually look down the steps. I'm just going to wait here to show you. Yep, so he does eventually look down the steps, so just be very careful you're not too slow. And then once safe to do so, hold him up, get his dog tag. A lot of dog tags in this engine room. That's what, um, six, I think six? No, seven altogether with this guy near as well. Yeah, I think it's seven. Right, so once that cutscene triggers, this guy will cut through this door. Be ready to hold him up as soon as he comes through before he gets a chance to call for help. We'll tell to tell HQ, because otherwise they'll call back, asking why he's not answering. Yeah, he's stubborn, so shoot next to him, 
Hop, get his dog tag, guys, and trank him. Right, there's three bombs we need to um, deactivate now. So there's one control unit there. You can just see it from this corner, but if you want a better, if you want a better view of it, climb, climb up here. Yep. So shoot that first control unit. Then the second one, go and lay down, and you can just see that one on the left side near the door. And then the third one, guys, is just over there. You'll know if you've missed one, because if you have, when you approach that hallway, um, Otacon will call you. So you know if you've missed one. And then open this door. The first save is very, very close, guys. It's coming up. Just got a little bit, a little bit further to go. So you're going to carry on down here until you see the first guards. Then shortly after, you're going to enter the first room on the right when you see him. And there he is. So yeah, this room here. That's it. Hide around the corner and now shoot that light with your M9. He'll come to check out the noise. But what? It's got a dark all of a sudden. And when he walks past, you're going to hold him up. Get his dog tag. And then trank him. Then you're going to wait about here. Once you hear the music, wait for the guy to come around the corner and then hold him up and get his dog tag as well. Yeah, then this last guy, he's a bit awkward, so just be very, very careful. If you want to play it safe, wait until he's just fallen asleep. Yeah, there he is. I just keep running along until I get to a small room with the vents on the floor, on the south part of the floor, and the pipe is on the north wall. Now, once he falls asleep, grab him. Drag him into the middle, and then hold him up. Yep, and then get his dog tag and trank him. The reason I do that way is because sometimes when you try and hold him up when he's trying to sleep, it bugs out. I'm not sure why it happens, but sometimes you just don't hold him up properly, and he will see you. So it's safer just to grab him, drag him into the middle so his back's to you, and then do it that way. Or you could just trank him, guys, if you don't want to mess that up. Just trank him. I mean, we do get three extra dog tags anyway. Right, save your game. So this is save number one, guys. Like I say, it's about 15 minutes in, uh, 15 minutes and 54 seconds, uh, to be precise. Yep. So save number one, the soldier, fi um, soldier fight slash ambush. Right. So once you're ready to go, grab this M9 bullets around the north side of these pipes. Yeah, because this bit's quite is quite um, relying on skill, you know, and your aiming. So straight away, stand up, do a roll over to here, and you're just going to keep shooting. You're going to try to headshot all the enemies as quick as you can, guys. Yeah, try to crouch occasionally. Normally when they first stand up, they will shoot. And normally when they finish shooting, they will pause for a second or two before they go back into cover. So if you have any gunshots, you want to crouch and then cr um, stand up straight after and then try to headshot them quickly before they go back into cover. Sometimes they just won't hit you. And if you do enter critical health, guys, you can crouch to recover out of critical health. That always works. You see I'm orange now. If I crouch, my health will slowly refill back to blue. That will always happen. You see? Just refill back to blue. Just bear that in mind. And the key is to try and kill these. Well, not kill them. I mean, you're using the M9. Remember, we can't kill any enemies. Before you get a chance to lob grenades. He managed to lob one then. There'll be eight enemies to begin with. Once you kill the first eight enemies, well, sorry, trank them, three enemies will storm your location all in a line. But once you trank the first one, the other two will pause in place for a second or two. So as soon as you get the first enemy of them last three, which try to storm you, as long as you get the first one, the other two are pretty easy because they just stand still for a second or two. And as you saw there, once you get the first eight, I run to the left, so I'm actually in the path of the enemy, so they're sort of walking straight towards me. And it's just it makes an easy target. Right, once you get control back, guys, and hold number one. Open the door behind you, and you'll find some M9 bullets, just in case you're a little bit low. And then climb down this ladder. There's one guard in here we're going to hold up. I'll show you him in a second. So you can actually see him here. If you look on the left of the screen, you'll see a guy walking in a second. There we see that guy walking. He's the one we're going to hold up. And if you need more ammo, by the way, 15 should be enough. You know, that ammo pickup we just took. Um, but there's a ladder on the southwest. 
which leads you to some ammo as well. Yeah, that ladder just there. Right, so you're going to go right and then left around here. Watch out for the loud flooring. And by the time you get to here, this guy should be about here. He will turn left in a second. Once you do so, hold him up. Get his star tag. And then trank him. You always have to trank these guys. You can't punch them. It, doesn't, it has no effect. They'll just see you pretty much straight after. You have to trank them. Right, so hold number two. There's two guards in the bottom here. Um, we're just going to get the one on the right to begin with, and then we'll get the one on the sort of northwest later. So, yeah, crawl beneath a projector. And you can see the guards in this room, they do change directions sometimes. Yeah, so carefully walk across that loud flooring, and you want to wait here. Do not go any further forward, because as you can see, the guards are kind of looking in your direction, kind of. Right, once you turn back to the northwest. Yep, there we go. Come down here and then wait for this guy to uh, walk back to the right. Hold him up, trank him, get his dog tag, and then take the northeast exit. But just watch out for that loud flooring just there, guys. Yeah, careful. You can either walk, roll across, or try to avoid it like I did. Right, hold number three. There's going to be a guard immediately on your right. So quickly, come around here, stick against the walls. Once you get to the middle, take a picture off Metal Gear from the front again keep to the walls and come to the bottom left corner and take a photo of Metal Gear from the southwest. make sure you use the camera and not the digital camera it's got to be the normal camera right back in hold number two press against the wall and knock on the wall about there do not knock on the wall too close to the door otherwise he'll walk down too far yeah you want him to wait about there once he turns around you're going to run behind him and quickly hold him up there we go. Try to be quick before he reaches loud flowing. You can, if you want to, you mess this up. Just go out, go outside the room and come back in. Yep. Hold him up. Get his dog tag, and then go back out. Now, as soon as you exit this room, guys, that guard's going to be on the left. So run forward and then left. That guard there. Yep. Hold him up and track him. He seems, depending on your your entrance into this room, he moves. So yep. Hold him up. Track him quickly. And then hold up this guard, trank him. Again, be very quick so there's a guy in the middle slowly making his way towards you. Yep. And you want to grab him and you're going to drag him to the far northwest. To follow my path, like I said, there's a guy in the middle slowly making his way towards you. So you want to be quick here before he gets within range of spotting you. So you drag him all the way down here and you want to drop him about here. Because we're going to knock on the wall in a second and attract the middle guard. But he will see his mate and walk towards him. So he doesn't walk around the corner and immediately see you. Yeah, that guy there. Just knock on the wall. He will spot you. Uh, but as he gets closer, he will see his friend. And you can hold him up from behind. Yeah, there you go. And that's it, guys. That is the final dog tag on the tanker. So, yeah, we've got 20... How many extra do we get on the tanker? Like I said, we get three extra. So you need 80, I think. Um, I forget now. No, sorry, you need 76 dog tags on the tanker for stealth camo. But we've now got 79 in total. Yeah, but then we come along here. Uh, don't worry, the, car, the guard shouldn't see you when you're running behind that railing. Yeah, take a picture off the Marines logo from the northeast. And be very careful here. Make sure the guards are not looking right when you run past here. And then take your final picture of Metal Gear guys from the southeast. Yep, so 79 dog tags. And you need 76 for the stealth camo. Right, so um, interact the terminal. Download all the pictures to Oddcon. And that's it guys. Now it's place Raiden. Yeah, so the next save is at the Fortune Fight. Um, it's still about 15 minutes away. Uh, so it's up to you if you want to wait or you want to move that safe. The fortune fight isn't hard. It's not hard at all. The problem is if you just make one little mistake, you can get killed instantly. That's why I make a safe there. So it's up to you if you want to move that one about. And like I say, I make three safes right at the end. You might want to move one of them saves about. It's up to you. Right, since so you get controllers riding. Yeah, I've got 87 dog tags. At the end of this, we're going to end up with 126. That's riding, and you need 121 total for stealth camo. 
yeah if you followed my easy and very easy guides the m9 now is all the way in the warehouse so you got you're gonna have no weapon guys for a short period you're actually gonna get the usp before you get the m9 right so come near interact with the node make sure the radar is off and there's actually three enemies in this room now this bit can be a little bit tricky actually because you have to knock the enemies out and then recover very very quickly on extreme when they're you know knocked unconscious or choked unconscious yeah the m9 is the best but obviously we do not have that at the moment so we can't use it yeah like i say make sure radar is off on the node as well right so first one we're going to go to the guard in the bottom right and as soon as he stands up, we're going to start choking him. Do not choke him 10 times uh, because you will break his neck. Remember, we cannot get any kills. You're going to choke him like 6 to 8 times, then release him. And then again 6 to 8 times and release him. Because that will like reset the timer, uh, the choke count, sorry. And I want to choke him about here. So like I say, about 6 to 8 times release, 6 to 8 times release. And then once he falls down, knock on there to attract his mate. Now because you dropped his mate there, that should attract him when he comes around the corner and they can get him from behind. Like so you've got to be very quick here before that first guy wakes up. Now once they're both knocked out, come around here, there's a guy behind the forklift. Do not walk any further forward just until that guy on the forklift sees you. You'll see the exclamation mark above his head. And then quickly come the elevator guys by taking the path on the right. Yeah like I say you've got to be very quick there otherwise that first guy he wakes up very quickly. So you've got to be very quick. That's why I dropped him as well. So if he does stand up, he should be facing away. Just give you a little bit more time to him getting to the lift. But yeah, that's that bit done, guys. Right, so come over here. Crouch beneath his fence. And um, come into the western door. Yeah, the guards I chose to avoid, you know, the dog tags, are the ones which are a bit annoying to get. Where you have to, like, knock him out. Will then wake him up again knock him out because there's just too many guards yeah there's some rooms where you have to knock them all out just to get to one of them and you have to wait wait them all up one by one to get a dog tag you know try to avoid them once so yep yeah, come straight through there out the northwest exit that guard will be walking right so he won't see you we'll hold him up later don't worry right now we're going to quickly go along here yeah watch out for that loud flowing i just use my cartwheels now as long as you're quick you can quickly get to this guy and um, knock him out with chokes. Remember, 6 to 8, release, 6 to 8, release, 6 to 8, release. And I'd normally knock him out. Just be ready to grab him again, just in case it doesn't. Right, transformer room. Little cutscene, you'll get the USP now. So you can now hold up enemies. The... the problem is, it's not silenced yet. So be, just be very, very careful. Enemies, obviously we're on extreme, so very, very alert. They have like daredevil type of hearing and eyesight as well. Yeah, so grab them. So, um, did I say USB? Sockham bullets, sorry. Yeah, so Sockham is riding and Jack. USP is snake. Jack. Yeah, so I'm not going to make a safe. Yeah, up here and in this doorway. So it's going to be a little cutscene. We're going to skip it. Yeah, we'll grab a shaft grenade. You cannot, you cannot hold a lot of ammo, guys, on extreme. Only six grenades maximum, unfortunately. But there's two. We use them quite a bit to um, disrupt cameras. Sometimes a lot easier to just lob a, a shaft grenade as opposed to shooting them. So once in the dining hall, no enemies to start with. And you're going to head to the north for the cutscene with Stillman. Now on extreme, as soon as you get control back, both the enemies are going to spawn in the dining hall. Um, the enemy to the northwest is stubborn. We're not going to get dog tag because if you try to hold him up no and shoot to scare him, there's a chance the southern guy will hear you. So as soon as you get control, we're going to head south. We're going to hold up the southern guy only. And they're going to choke him unconscious. And then you're going to get the C, um, defuse the C4 bomb. Yep, so this guy here. This is all from memory, by the way. This all in my text guide. But yeah, as soon as he walks past, quickly get behind him and hold him up. So yeah, just wait for him to walk past. Yeah, there's dog tag, like I say. Choke him unconscious. Do not break his neck. There we go. Once you choked him unconscious, 
Yep, defuse that bomb. The problem is as well, when you're choking enemies unconscious, you do not have much time before they wake up. So if you try and get two, do t um, two dog tags, and all you're doing is choking enemies unconscious, you might not have time to get one, uh, to get the second one before the first one wakes up. So it can be a little bit messy. So here, use the USP and shoot that. Don't worry, there's no enemies here. Yeah, just shoot that cypher. No ammo respawns either on extreme unless you're in a boss fight arena. Then it reloads when you get low. Right, so transformer room. I'm going to avoid these two enemies. So first of all, quickly come in here. Spam triangle to close that door. And then quickly defuse this bomb. There's two enemies here. One does a sort of like anti-clockwise lap around this room. And another one patrols up and down in the middle. Yeah, but by the time it takes you to defuse that bomb, you should be able to run south and go straight for that door. There's two cameras in that passageway on the left. Uh, but we're not going that way, so it don't matter. And there's loud floor in there. That don't matter either, because you're not going that direction. Now here, wait for that guy to turn back. And then run after him. And hold him up. Careful on this loud floor in. And careful if you knock into him as well. Because his friend will hear. So try not to knock into him. Yeah, hold him up. Get a dog tag. There we go. Again, be careful on the loud flooring. Yeah, the other guy will get his dog tag later. Don't worry. Yeah, we're going south, the south way first and we're going the north way later. Right, so once in the pump frame. Yeah, we want to go upstairs here. While that guard is looking away. Because there's a see if there's more bombs on extreme, by the way, to defuse. Yeah, so up here, head to the bottom left, so you're behind the guards. You're going to hold him up, get his dog tag, and then quickly defuse the bomb. Yeah, aim at his penis if you want. They seem to um, surrender quicker when you aim there. Yeah, you might want to drag him a little bit to the left. You'll see in a second, because you do not want to wake him up by mistake when you try to defuse this bomb, because coolant spray will wake up enemies very, very quickly. So you want to make sure they're not within range. Yeah, but that bomb's just on that tank, guys, on the outside of the fence. So make sure you've got that bomb. Come in here, grab the shove grenades. There's no claymore there yet. That claymore appears after being fortune. Yep, and then come in the pump room via the east exit. Now, come in here, there is a guard here. Yep, so wait for him to walk away. We're not going to get him yet. We're going to come up the steps. The problem is, if you hold him up and choke him unconscious now, by the time you get back, he'll probably wake up. So we're going to choke him unconscious and get his dog tag when we get back out of these pipes. Yeah, crawl along here and defuse this bomb with a coolant spray. And you'll find once you start crawling back, the guard would have done a, almost a full lap. And he'll sort of be walking back to a sort of start point. Yeah, so that's all the bombs done. You can check your map if you want. Just want to make sure you haven't missed any. Uh, but you should have if you follow me well. Yep, so there he is. You can see he's just kind of walking back now to a start point. Yep, and you want to wait here. Do not go any further forward and make sure you stay laying down, otherwise he'll see you. Yeah, wait there for him to walk south. There you, there you go. Now stand up and run after him, guys. Hold him up. There you go. It doesn't matter that your weapon is so loud because you're not going to be firing it. Just using it to scare him. Yep, then choke him out. Unconscious, sorry. He yeah, do not break his neck, choke him unconscious, remember. If I, if I, by mistake, say, choke somebody to death, I don't mean it, it's just a mistake. I mean, I mean choke him unconscious. Now, for this guy, wait for him to turn around, hold him up from behind. He is stubborn, uh, but it doesn't matter about the noise because the other guy is unconscious. Yep, and then get his dog tag, guys. And if you're quick, yep, you can get out of the door before he drops his guard. So you don't need to actually choke him out if you're quick. You can get out before he gets a chance to call for help. Yep, so here, shoot that cypher quickly. Try to be quicker than me. Yep, once you got it, quickly run to the far east. And you see that guy down there, you want to quickly get down behind him. Normally, I'm a little bit quicker than this. Yep, he'll walk all the way along there. Another thing, I think he normally just like a lap. He'll walk down one step, up the other step. And then walk around. Yeah, let's get his dog tag. And then choke him unconscious. Do not kill him. Just choke him unconscious. Right, and up the steps. 
yeah you want to take the upper exit here we're going to get the m9 now but there's also there's there's four no is it four yes four guards here right so you're going to wait for that guard to turn back Raven to turn back and then went into room on the right, uh, right and grab the M9 finally, along with two ammos for it. Yeah, there we go. Right, come back out here. Do not trank him yet. Yep, yeah, do not trank him. Wait for him to, we're gonna get him later. Hide against the wall, wait for that guy to walk down and then quickly hold him up before he looks in your direction. Uh, so it gets dog tag, trank him, and then follow this guy. You're going to come behind him. Now, when you do hold him up, be very careful you do not knock into him. If you knock into this guy, the guards below are going to hear, and they're going to come up to investigate. Just carefully nudge around, carefully move around him like I did. Hold him up, and then jump over this railing and drop down. Now, when you're on top of these crates, the enemies below here cannot see you. So don't worry. That's it. Defuse the bomb from up here. Yeah, then back to M9. Now see that guy to the south, wait for his torch to turn away. And then quickly drop down and hold up this guy before he turns back. That's it. And then what we're going to do, we're going to head out the southwest exit and come back in. Because in, in certain rooms, after a certain time, HQ will call, uh, will, call, will call the guards for a response, for an update. And if they're knocked out, they do not obviously not going to reply and they'll start an alert but if you come out of the room and go back in it will reset that clock uh, but going out of the room coming back in as well it resets the enemy's patrols which are still active and he will uh, start there so you quickly hold him up and get his dog tag they come in here guys grab the cardboard box we're going to need that for a fortune fight and go through his vent and we're going to get a suppressor yeah that's all the guards knocked out in the warehouse so you're kind of safe for the time being. But you still need to be quick because in a second you're going to hear HQ call for a response and nobody's going to react. So if you're not quick, they're going to come to check it out. So grab a suppressor, grab the Sulcum bullets, quickly press triangle to climb up least, and quickly head up the northeast exit. You want to grab the stun grenades on the way out. Yeah, just there, stun grenades. I do, I believe, show you a few extra spots for stun grenades. So don't worry if you've missed a few. We do need all six for the end, by the way. Right, once you get here, as soon as you get control back, do not move. As soon as you get control back, do not move. Just equip your sock on, turn, and shoot that one. If you don't move, that will not see you when it flips its camera around. Yeah, then shoot that one over there, and just wait. Yeah, you can shoot all three without moving, straight after the cutscene. Yeah, third one's going to come past you in a second. There she is. Yeah, you've got to be very quick because uh, two of them are kind of looking your direction. And then come out here, guys, until you get a cutscene, code call, and do not go any further north. Yeah, from here, stay where you are. You could be M9, and you want to trank that guy up ahead. He will spot you. He has a massive range on his eyesight. Yeah, so trank him, and then crawl along the middle here until you have got three claymores. You can get this one on the left slightly as well, just on the left of the middle. So there's three along the middle, and there's one just to the left of the middle. So get them four claymores. So for three in the middle, one on the left. Right, come in here. Now head forward a few steps, then turn left and trank that guard. That's it. Then take out that camera. Come in here. Take out this camera. There's four guards in this room. And then take out this camera down here. And then trank them two guards. Make sure you trank all these in the same order, otherwise one of them might hear or see you. Yeah, so trank them fire too, and then trank this guy here. If you're not quick enough, then that guy walks away. He patrols the east stairwell, so just quickly run behind him and hold him up, guys. And then be quick, come along here, stand in the middle of this conveyor belt and equip your coolant spray. Now, a bomb is going to appear here in a second. If you're quick, you can defuse it before, you can defuse it basically all in one. Uh, but if not, it will, it will normally appear here, then on the middle conveyor belt, and then on the far south, and then it will come back here. Just remember, it will always when you first come in the room, it will always appear on that one first. So you might even want to, if you miss it, just go out the room, come back in, and then wait until it appears on that top conveyor belt. You might want to do that, guys. But like I say, it will normally appear on the top, middle, bottom, and then back to the top again, middle, bottom. Yep, and once you've done so, guys, come up here. 
up onto the heliport. We'll do the bomb up here as well. Yeah, I spent a good probably half hour in that parcel room. I'm just trying to figure out exactly how the bomb works on that. The bomb which is attached to the um, to the luggage. Yeah, so after control, come along here. Go left. Come to that guy from behind. Hold him up. Yep, he's stubborn, so just shoot near him. Yep, get his dog tag. And then by the time you've done that, there should be guys just there. Go into first person, just want to make sure. He should be facing away from you. Hold him up, guys. That's it, get his dog tag. Now, all that's left, there's one guard down below. But we're just going to defuse this bomb beneath the Harrier. And then we'll grab a cardboard box near the steps on the way down. Then we'll hold up the guard on the bottom left, guys, and then go back in the exit. Yeah, so back to pass room. Yeah, I spent a good 30 minutes in there trying to figure out how the bomb works. It It's kind of on a timer. I think when you first go in the room, it's about 10 or 15 seconds, then it'll appear on the top one. Then there's about 10 seconds, then it'll appear on the middle. Then about another 10 seconds, and then it'll appear on the bottom. And there'll be another short pause, and it'll be back on the top again, on the middle, and then the bottom. So it doesn't like appear instantly. There's always like a, a short time delay between when it appears and when it disappears and appears on the next one so just bear that in mind if you do not get it that first time then you could be in for a bit of a wait you know trying to get it and it, especially if you miss it a second time and third time again that's why i say if you miss it the first time it might be better to just exit the room and then come back in because all the enemies are still tranked you do not need to worry about that no more right and once back in the past room the enemy should all still be knocked out um, but as long as you're quick, even if the first one is start waking up to the southwest, he shouldn't see you as long as you're quick. Right, and then out here, guys, onto the DE connecting bridge. Now, there should be one guard walking away from you. So if you, as long as you're quick, you can hold him up. And there is a, a lookout guard here on the heliport. He's on the top there, but we actually, here's that last one we knocked out. So you're kind of safe for the time being. Yeah, hold him up, get his dog tag, guys. And you want to come down here and you want to take the bottom the bottom doorway. Very important. Now, I'm not going to get any dog tags here just because it takes too long. So, first we're going to trank that guy. And here, you're going to trank that guy. You're going to trank the wall next to him to make him stop. Yeah, trank the wall to make him stop. And then headshot him. Now, you're going to wait for this third guy at the top to come to investigate his mate. And then trank him. And then the guy on the top in the middle, he's actually going to spot something when he comes around. Yeah, trank him next. Yeah, look at the top there. You're not close enough for him to see you, but he will notice something. And when he comes down to investigate, he'll either check on his mates up above and trank him. Or if he comes down to you like so, shoot the wall near him, guys, and make him stop. And then headshot him. That's it. If you want to reset any enemies, just go out of the room and come back in. And then once you've done all four, quickly defuse this bomb. Go out the door, guys, and then come back in. The reason being is because there will be a radio check. So you've got a small amount of time. Do not take too long. And make sure you do not knock out them bottom two guards near these hatches. Because otherwise you're going to have to spend time to move them out of the way. And as you'll see in a second, we just get out of the room before the sort of radio calls in to come and investigate. Yeah, so lift up this hatch. Get this bomb as well. Right, and then this fire bomb. Yeah, quickly lift up the hatch, guys, and that should be all the bombs. Well, the first, the first batch, anyway. Yep, so that's all the bombs for now. Now, now we need to go and get a sensor B, and then head down for fortune fight. Yep, so quick, you're going to hear the radio calling in a second. Yeah, grab the M9 bullets behind the stairwell. Yeah, here you go. Status reports. But you should, you should just be able to get out in time, guys, before they come in. There you go. Right, so on the CD connecting bridge, first things, shoot this camera when you first come in. Right, and then wait against this wall for that guy to walk back. Yeah, wait for him to walk back. And trank him. 
Oh yeah, I have to. I forgot to mention at the start about pausing the timer. Yeah, you can pause the timer by just um pressing pause. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna have to put a note up at the start, just let you know because I forgot to mention that. Yes, yeah, so try and kill when he turns back, get his dog tag, and then come into the dining hall, guys. Now the two enemies are gonna be here again. Right, so get a sensor B. Now the two enemies here, we've already got a dog tag from a southern enemy. Uh, but we want to get dog tag from one to the west. Once you get a sensor B, be quick, obviously got a timer now. He's gonna go out the room and then come back in to reset the enemies. And they're gonna run into the western room. And the enemy should be walking away from you now. Hold him up. He's stubborn, so you're going to have to shoot near him. Yep. Get his dog tag and then trank him. Right. Now the guard to the south. Yeah, wait for him to... Because if your timing is a bit off here, you might run straight into his field of view. So you might just want to wait for him to come around the corner instead. He will come around the corner. Don't get impatient like me. Here he comes. Yep, trank him. It's a bit simpler, like I say. If you run down, he could be looking kind of in your direction and he might spot you. So it's safe just, just to wait at the far corner and trank him from there. And then take the southern exit. Right, so BC connecting bridge. Shoot down that cipher, which is respawned. Yeah, that's where we got a shaft grenade earlier. So again, in the Transformer room, we're not going to bother with the two guards. I did originally, um, but yeah, I just decided to leave them. It's simpler. It's because the one on the right is a bit annoying because he's patrolling across loud flooring. Uh, so it's a little bit awkward trying to get to him. So yeah, make sure you do not run too far south because you want to be just behind that guy as you walk south and then quickly pop in the door behind him. Now you want to trank that guy. Try to be quicker than me. Because we've already got his dog tag. And that guy on the left, we're going to get his dog tag now on the way out. I'm just going to wait for him to come back. Oh, I guess not. I'm just going to leave him. But yeah, this is the guy. We have not got his dog tag yet. So we're going to get his dog tag now. Yeah, just be careful. If you didn't, if you didn't trank that southern guard, just be careful. He's not looking. I mean, look then. He's actually looking that direction. Yes, yeah, should be careful. Make sure he, he is looking away or he is unconscious. Right, so back in the pump room. Head up and we're going to make the next save in a second, guys. Yeah, if you made it this far, well done. Well, I guess the next save if you haven't already used this one. Yeah, so straight into the lift. There's no enemies down here, so you're pretty much guaranteed to reach the next save point. And when I save before boss fight, I save like literally right before the boss. Like I let the boss fight start and then I make the save. Just because it skips all the cutscenes that way. Yep, so we're going to just get the bomb. We're going to get his sock and bullets first, just there near the M4 clift. You should have a minute left at least. Right, and the bomb come over to the shelf on the southwest wall. It could be called spray. Look up, and there it is, guys. Just near that light on the wall. And there it is, the final bomb. So now when we head back to the elevator lobby, the warehouse going to be a fortune fight. So yeah, we're going to trigger the fight, and then that's when I will make the safe. The fortune fight, very simple. Just equip your box and keep running from left to right. It's that simple. Um, when she reloads, or yeah, she might reload at times or pause after a cutscene. And um, you can actually hold on for a second, wait till she sort of raises her gun again, and then start running from left to right. And um, you can normally, eventually, in between her attacks, you can just switch direction. The cardboard box it allows you to change direction quicker, and it makes you a, a lower target as well. That's why it works well. Yeah, so cardboard box, you should have two. I've got 104 dog tasks. Oh yeah, if you do have any special items, careful you do not equip them by mistake. If you do, you have to reload your safe. Because you can't use any special items on your big boss rank. Yeah, so you can either try to just run from left to right uh, to avoid two shots before changing direction, or like we see in a minute, 
yeah eventually she will shoot down some lights and stuff on the ceiling and when she does that just try to wait for them all to sort of land and start moving yeah so like so you can just keep moving left or right between her shots like I say it's quite an easy fight the problem is like I say if you do get hit it can instant kill you so yeah I mean you don't really be making a mistake like that here yeah so when the elevator comes down she'll pause for a moment yeah and watch her so when she's reloading just watch her for when she raises her gun again there you go and ready to shoot yeah that simple guys pretty simple fight and once at the end she'll start shooting everywhere if you're quick you can grab this soccer ammo that's basically the fight done yeah why when you've been going off about one or two minutes and she starts shooting in like every direction yeah that's it guys so the next safe is about 10 minutes away it's the fat man fight the fat man fight you do need a save before that most definitely it's quite rng based i find Right, so once you come up here, there's two claymores here. I almost forgot. Make sure you crawl until you've defused both claymores. Right, come down here. Hide against this wall because there's actually the guard that's moved. He's there now. Wait for him to look back and then trank him. That's it. That's the safest way, guys. Make sure you do not walk too far forward the bottom steps. Just come down the steps. Wait beside the wall beside the steps. Wait for him to turn back. And then trank him. Right on the FA connecting bridge. It could be Sockham and... I was going to say destroy the cipher. But it, it hasn't respawned. Which I was quite surprised. Yeah you might just want to check first. Because I think... It, I'm sure it's respawned before. But yeah just check the cipher's not there. If it is shoot it. And that guy walking down the steps, we've already got his dog tag, so run straight past him. Right in the warehouse, come to this corner, and then quickly trank that guy, just as his head pops around very slightly. He won't see you, as long as you stick in that corner. And then quickly come around here, just be careful, you see that guy in the middle there? If you're not quick enough, he might see you when you turn left, so you might just want to trank him first, uh, before you come around. Right here, again... Be very careful, all the ciphers respawned here. That first one is kind of looking in your direction, so do not run too far forwards. And the third one, if you remember, he's going to come around here in a second. So yeah, three ciphers here. Here he comes. And they got a guard on the top on the heliport, so again, trank him before you go any further forwards. There we go. We've already defused the claymores. The claymores will not respawn. I think they're the only thing, along with ammo, uh, that does not respawn on extreme difficulty. Right, so in the parcel room, again, we're just going to wa uh, walk forward a few steps and trank the guard on the left. The cameras will stay uh, destroyed. Right, once you defused him, uh, sorry, tranked him, wait here for that eastern guard to walk past and then tuck him behind him, guys, and head up the steps. Yep, so Fatma fight is coming up. As soon as the fight begins, we are going to make a save, guys. So head upstairs, defuse a bomb on the heliport, and then save your game. Yeah, this fight can be very messy, guys. We do have a save, so all I can say is just keep practicing, and you will get it eventually. Okay, so going to defuse this bomb. So straight away, as soon as you get control, you want to aim. Fat Man will always go to the north east bomb until you've defused the first two bombs. So as soon as you get control, stay where you are. Look northeast. You want to shoot him in his gates. Now when you shoot him in his gates, um, he seems to be invincible for like a second when he falls down. So when you shoot him in his gates, wait a second before you shoot him in his head. But when you knock him down with six Sockham shots, you have to shoot him very quickly. So it's a bit of a difference in timing. If you knock him down with his gates, wait a second before you shoot him in his head. But if you knock him down with the Sockham, Try to hit him straight away. Because if you're quick, you can get two shots in. Yeah, so one, two. If you take too long, the shot will wake him up. But if you're quick, you can get one in. And the shot will not wake him up. And then that's what you want to try and do. So first, get two shots in. Then defuse that bomb. Come back here. Wait for him to go back. Shoot his gate again. Wait a second when he falls down. Headshot him. And then headshot again. That's it. 
and then with your claymore, I come here, put it about here, and make sure it's pointing northwest. Yeah, it wants to point northwest, so up left. And then stand about here, get ready to defuse this bomb when Fat Man runs into a claymore. This works really well for me doing it this way. That's it. As soon as she, the claymore knocks him down, quickly defuse that bomb, get one shot in, and then shoot him in his case as he's dancing. He'll always dance when you defuse all bombs. That's it. And once you knock him down for his case, again, wait one second, headshot him, headshot him again. And now quick, keep trying to chase him. Knock him down six sock him shots. Try to get two shots in if you're lucky. Like I say, you've got to be quick, otherwise the first one will wake him up. And when you're getting your soccer ammo, soccer ammo will appear just there. It will appear on the northwest and it will appear on the southwest. And US people, uh, sorry, M9 bullets will appear on the northeast near that northeast bomb, do you remember? Yep, so this is what we're doing now, guys. Gonna keep trying to run after him and trank him. What you can do when you've knocked him down, if you're really low on soccer ammo, you always watch your soccer ammo. If, if you knocked him down, you normally have like a few seconds before he gets up and you can use that time to um, grab any ammo nearby if it's really near to you and then quickly go back and shoot him before he gets a chance to sit up. But yeah, once you killed him, it will knock him out, drag him, let him go, grab his dog tag and then defuse his bomb. Yeah, when it, when knock him down for six bullets from Sokka, you have to be very quick to get two shots in because after about a second or two, one shot will make him stand up. But if you're very quick, if you manage to hit him almost as soon as he falls down, that first shot will not, it will, it will affect his stamina bar, but it will not make him stand up. And that really helps. So yeah, it's going to take a bit of practicing, guys. If you start letting him place bombs, and you have like four bombs to place of, uh, to defuse eventually, you're probably going to fail and die. So you've got to practice it. But that first setup. You know, we're putting the claymore down and then defusing the bomb he's dancing. That first step, everything we do up to that point, it's, it sort of leads you really well into the final part of the fight. And it really helps. Give, it gives you like a massive boost. Uh, so he's not really got much stamina left. It really helps. So the first part of the fight, that's perhaps the main, cru the main part, the crucial part. Then after that, um, it's not too bad just running after him. As long as you don't lose track of him. Right, once you come back in here guys, crawl down to here and you should see that guy. Once he turns back, you don't walk otherwise he's going to see you. Crawl down there, once he turns back, come down here. Now, you want to run down here. Or if you're worried, you see that southwest guy, he's still knocked out. If you're worried that he's recovered, yep, yeah, you can do what I just did and sort of crawl down there. The eastern guy might see something when he turns back, but he won't be close enough for him to actually see you. And they can come out this door, guys. And then once out this door, lob a shaft grenade. Yep, come straight along here. Don't worry about enemies. There's no enemy on the top. Yeah, they go on the head of pot. I think he despawns now once you beat Fat Man. Yeah, you're going to come into a warehouse. Now you're going to come here. Right, you're going to try to trank that guy. And you want to quickly shoot that crate near this guy on the left before he turns back. That's it. When he goes to look at it. Shoot him. So yeah, shoot that crate to get his attention. And shot that foot northern guy. And then we'll quickly run over to here. And trank that guy when he walks that corner. And then trank this guy when he comes into view. And when you're tranking enemies, by the way, make sure they're not two enemies close together looking at each other. Because if you trank them like that, you'll aut automatically trigger an alert. Yeah, they come here. Grab the sock and bullets. Hold up this guy from behind. Get his dog tag. Yeah, never trank two enemies that are looking directly at each other because it will trigger an alert instantly. Yes, yeah, get his dog tag, guys, and then get the A Core 74U. Yeah, equip the BDU as well, and equip the AKS 74U. Now, if you're quick enough, you should be able to get outside before the status report gets called in and they come in to investigate. Right, again, lob another shaft grenade. Yeah, still no enemy on the heliport, so don't worry about him. Right, and quickly come along here. Now, watch out for the trapdoors. Very careful. I've died later on. These trapdoors, they, they don't respawn. And you have to get across there. And I died there once. 
Very annoyed that was. Right, as soon as you come near, guys, shoot out this camera above your head. There's more guards in here now. There is four guards. Yep, so shoot that camera. There's actually more cameras as well. Shoot it and then equip your full disguise. Remember, BDU and the AK 74U. Knock on the wall to attract this first guard. There's another guard there. You could just see his reflection in the floor on the left. Just be careful you're not too far near the passage. Yep, and then once it comes to investigate the noise, hold him up, get his dog tag, guys, and knock him out. And then again, knock on the wall, but make sure you've got the AK-74 equipped. And when his friend comes to check out the noise and notice his mate is, is falling asleep, hold him up as well. Yeah, so that's the two guards in the eastern corridor. There's one now which is patrols the north corridor and a bit of the east and a bit of the west. That guy there and the guy which patrols the west. Now we have to walk back around the corner, stand around here and take out that uh, southern camera and then the two cameras to the north. That's it, so three cameras we just destroyed with the Sockham. You could be for this guys, come in here and grab the M9 bullets. In this first locker and then grab the shaft grenades on this crate. I'm going to have no voice left after today. When I don't do um, commentary for quite a while and then I do like a commentary for a good few hours. I have no voice left after it. Yeah, come down here. Make sure you've got full disguise equipped. Yeah, this northern guard, like I say, he walks he walks the west corner and to the east corner. Freeze. Wait for him to walk back and then hold him up. Make sure he's not in the west corridor when you hold him up. Because there's still that western guard. Yeah, back to your full disguise. Come in here. Now he's probably walking back towards you at this point. So to play it safe, just wait for him to turn around and then get it from behind. There is a camera to the south, so just be careful. That's it, that's all the guards in this room for now. Uh, but just shoot that camera. We're not. We're never gonna go down there, but I just always like to shoot them. But just in case, and then equip your full disguise, and then come the elevator, and we're gonna go down to B2. So these guards in the B2 area, I'm not gonna get the dog tags. I'm gonna get one, but the three in the middle, I'm going to leave them just because it's two. It can be messy. And it can eat quite a few minutes, actually, getting these dog tags. So we're going to get his dog tags. He's nice and easy. Yep, and then go back to full disguise. Right, we're going to come down here. Get the M9 bullets from the first locker. Right, and like, yeah, like I say, do not run into anybody. And we're not going to bother with these dog tags. All we're going to do is grab the directional mic, and that's it, guys. Get out. Yeah, so much simpler. I did get them originally, but I decided to um, cut them out. Because, they, like I said, they take too much time, and it can get a little bit messy with them three. Right, once got the dog tag and the mic, back up to the elevator, guys, and take it up to B1. The enemies here, I do get all these dog tags. Because you pretty much need to trank them all anyway. So may as well get dog tags while we're doing so. Yes, yeah, so come outside, little cutscene. Make sure you got your full disguise equipped as always. Now the locker on the left has stun grenades inside, by the way, if you need some more stun grenades. Uh, but the third locker has sock and bullets. Right, so this guy, wait for him to come here, then hold him up. Freeze. Do not knock into him because his friends will hear. They are very close by. Hold him up. That's it, gets dog tag. Go back to your full disguise. Now hold up this guy on the left first. If you take, if you do the guard on the right first, this will not work. You have to do this guy first. You hold him up, trank him. Uh, sorry, hold him up, get his dog tag, then trank him. Now this guy, hold him up. He's the last one remaining now, so it doesn't matter if you make any noise. Drag him to the south slightly. It doesn't really matter where. We're going to be dragging him to the scanner soon. Just drag him out of the way. So obviously he was looking at the wall, and I need a space to hold him up. He's a stubborn guard. So you're going to scare him, get his dog tag, but do not trank this guy. Once you get the dog tag, you want to carry him to the retinal scanner. And I'm not sure why, but on extreme, you have, you actually have to turn him around so he's looking at it. Whereas on easy and very easy, you can just sort of move close and then it triggers automatically. Yeah, now you have to sort of turn him towards it like so. And that's it. Now this bit, I've died a good, I've messed up my run a good few times in this room. I did go through one point where I was tranking everybody. But if you trank all the guards here, it messes up the directional mic and you can't actually talk to Amy's 
yeah, for some weird reason, I could track F body quite easily. Um, but yeah, when it comes to tracking F body, the directional mic wouldn't work. So yeah, now be very careful. Do not walk too close to any of the hostages because they can trip you up. And if they trip you up, you'll unequip your disguise automatically. And if any enemies are looking in your direction, you'll get an alert. But yeah, once you find Amy, there he is. Remember, he's got trousers on and he's got long brown hair. Make sure no guards are looking in your direction. Very important. Make sure no guards are looking in your direction. And then quickly aim it at him and press triangle. That's it. You've done it. Just be very careful in there. If a, if a guard is looking in your direction, as long as they're not too close to you, I think it's got to be about five steps. They will notice something and they'll come over to investigate and you can quickly aim the direction of Mike and press triangle before they get too close to him. But if they're within about five steps, when you equip the mic, they will instantly recognize you and you will get an alert. Like I say, if they're outside five steps, you can quickly equip it and press triangle. Um, as soon as you get control back, equip your BDU suit for cutscene. Um, you'll spawn here. There'll be a caution automatically once you start. Okay, so what you want to do, you want to come to Walton on the left, look northeast, and then trank that guard in the head. Yep, just as he comes around the corner. He won't see you as long as you do not, not walk any further forwards. And then come over to the elevator, guys, and ride it up to B1. Yes, actually, you're in caution status at this point. You can't see, obviously, because we've not activated the nodes. Right, so wait near the back wall of the elevator for that guard to walk past and then trank him. Do not walk too far east on the elevator, otherwise he might see you. Just go to back a little bit and then trank him when he walks into view. Now wait here for this guard to walk to the northeast corner and then trank him before he looks in your direction. <clears throat> um, we've already diffused all the cameras, so don't need to worry about them. Yep, trank him. If you have to reload this for any reason, these guards will not be here, by the way. Yeah, then that guy, I normally wait for him to get in the far corner, wait for him to stop, and then trank him. You'll see why in a second. Now, wait for the next guy to come around the corner, trank him. Yep, yeah, so that guard, I tranked him there because otherwise this guy in this east passage will see you. See him fall down and go to investigate. Um, but this way, just creep forward slightly until you can just see his head, and then trank him. That's it, that's all the enemies for the time being. Right, get this ammo, out the door. Are we getting close to the next save point? Um, it's one hour 12 and we are at one, one hour 10. Yeah, we've got a save point coming up guys, a few more minutes. Right, lob a shaft grenade. Yeah, then carefully dodge across here. There's no guard on the heliport, so don't worry. Yeah, so what we're going for now is a PSG-1. Yeah, so just like we did before, we're going to come to this far northeast corner. And we're going to shoot the guard, the guard to the far south. And we're going to shoot them crates near the guard in the middle. And then trank him when he goes to check out. Uh, but if you're too quick, like me, the guards might still looking around if there's still like a caution in effect. Um, I think I just heard him call it off. Yep, so um, just careful, the caution is not still in effect. If it is still in effect when you come to this room, just keep ex exiting, re-entering, exiting, re-entering, guys, until it has, until the caution has gone. Right, and um, once you got rid of them two guards, come in here, grab a PSG-1 and the bullets. There'll be some ammo in the locker, um, but it's too much anyway. And also get the tranquilized version in this small vent. Right, and now we need to head back to um, the sediment pool. Ready for Harrier fight, guys. Harrier fun. The Harrier fight is mega fun. You're going to love that. It's not too bad, actually. Once you learn these attacks, it's not really that bad. He's got to do it in a very certain sequence for it to work. Right, lob a shaft grenade. Once it explodes, we're going to head into the parcel room. So pass room, he's going to take out that very first enemy like we always do. And we're going to take the top northwest exit. Yes, yeah, so go forward a few steps and then take out the southwest enemy. Trank him. Yeah, there we go. Now come along this path, wait for the guy to walk past the east, walk from the east corridor. Now see him two guards there. I'm going to wait for one of them to turn back. One of them always looks south, but that guy always change. That guy there always swaps. 
Yeah, once you look south, run past him and take the northwest exit. Right, so here, there should be a guard. Yeah, you want to come down and you want to hold up this guard here. There's a guy in the lookout tower actually overlooking your location, so it's very important you come down here. So yeah, come down the steps and quickly hold up the stubborn guard. Be quick before the other guard looks in your direction. Now, you're going to trank him once he comes into view. Do not go near them steps like I almost did, because the guard on the heliport can see you if he's looking in that direction. Right, I mean, you can run straight down there, but if you go back to the bottom of the steps, the guard might be looking in your direction, you know, depending on the timing. Yep, and then at the far end, you want to come up the steps and you want to take the upper door to the sediment pool. Now, as soon as you come in, trunk that guy and you can quickly take the north exit before anybody else gets a chance to spot you. Yeah, so finally, we're going to make a next save in a second, guys. We're just going to shoot all these bombs so, so you don't make a mistake here. There's a lot more bombs to shoot on extreme. Still all the same ones, but you just got extra. So grab the pentasmin to begin with. Turn around and shoot the bomb above the entrance. That one there. Don't shoot the bomb, shoot the control unit, of course. Right, and there's a one down there. But you want to get right in the corner. I'm not quite in the corner enough. There we go. Go on your tippy toes with L2 and R2. There you go, and you should be able to see it. There it is, shoot that control unit. Right, come here. There's actually a bomb just down here. There it is, well, control unit. So you want to shoot that one next. It's a bit awkward. You don't want to go too far forwards. Because there's, you can see down there, there's like a laser field. So don't go too far forwards. Like I say, you can try and crouch. You can try and go on your tiptoes to get a better angle. Now, I've never had this much trouble with this bomb before. This unit. I guess you can shoot the bombs on them two laser fields nearby so you can uh, go down a bit more if you want. That's it. Once you've got it, guys, that bomb down there, shoot these two, if not already. Shoot that one on that tank. Yeah, then once you've got them once, you want to equip your PSG-1 next. Yeah, not the trank version. You want to save your ammo. Yeah, just a normal version, PSG-1. Yep, yeah, shoot that one. Remember, make sure you shoot the control unit and not a bomb. There's one behind this flag. There it is. Apparently, you can press a button to make that flag move, but I can never get it to work. Yeah, shoot one behind the flag. That one on the left of the doorway. You head one to the right of the doorway. And you got the two ciphers. Now, be very careful. Make sure you shoot the cipher on the head. If you shoot the cipher, you'll make the bombs explode. So, make sure you use a pentasmin for this part. I mean, for any units where there's bombs nearby, you need to try and use a pentasmin anyway. Don't worry, this pentasmin does not... It's not used for the oil field. It's only going to be used for this and for one part afterwards. So all you've got to do, save one pentasmin. If you are using pentasmin here, just make sure you save one for the enemy shortly after the Harrier fight. Yeah, shoot that one. Um, hidden by the birds. Just shoot the birds and they'll fly away. There's one on the left here. This one I forgot about. And that should be it. So yeah, that's all the C4 bombs. Come down here, guys. Begin the Harrier fight. And we're going to make a save. So this is going to be halfway point for my recording. We'll get through this fight, guys. Then I'm going to pause and go and make... Just get a bite to eat, I think, before I come back. So very important. As soon as you start this fight, grab a singer, aim up, and shoot the Harrier three times. Very, very important. You can shoot it more, but it's very tricky. The first three shots are quite easy to make. Um, but sometimes you'll do different amounts of damage. It's, it's, I don't know if it depends on where you hit it. I, I don't know. But sometimes, yeah, it depends. If you don't do a big chunk of damage like I do, you might want to reload. So quickly grab a stinger, aim up, like I say, shoot it three times. Yeah, look at the amount of damage I done. If you did lower damage than me, you might want to reload until you do a similar amount of damage. And then come to the top of the steps, it will always fly to that direction. Now you can quickly get one shot off. That's it, when you see the flash. And then come down onto the fourth step, and then crouch, and then back at the top. And then try to shoot him twice. Shoot him once. And then the second one, wait for him to fly to the left before you shoot him. And then you should be able to shoot him just as he comes around the front of the building again. And then another one, just before he goes around the back. 
Yeah, sometimes it might miss. I mean, try not to. And then he's going to fly over here. Aim at that crane. Then once he gets behind it, shoot. And then once he gets about there, he should be in time to shoot again. And that's it. Now, the key is to have him at about 6% health at this point. Yeah, then grab them single bullets. And then come down the steps. Yeah, so grab a single bullet and then come down the steps. Yeah, the key is for him to be about 60% health. Otherwise, he will not do that attack at that point. And it will mess, mess it all up. So if he does not do that attack at that point, reload it, guys, and do it again. Otherwise, yeah, this fight will be all messed up. And then once done that attack, quickly look west. See where he flies to next. And get ready to shoot him once and then quickly go down the steps. I right, say so you want to go down the steps about four times and then crouch. And if he flies to the west... You need to hide behind the small fence just around the corner, top of steps. When he does this attack, come down onto step number four and crouch. If you go too far down or too far up, he can hit you. So, yep, and then straight after that attack, quickly go back to the top and try to shoot him three to five times. And then he's going to do a flyover. Look at him, see where he's going to fly, so he's flying to the west. This is how you dodge him if he flies to the west. So get about here. Try to get one shot off, and then quickly lay down. That almost always works for me. And if you're quick, you can get one shot off when he flies by. If not, you have to wait. What he's going to do next is a machine gun attack. You avoid this by hiding behind the tank. Yeah, so when he does that barrage of missiles, when he hits 60% health, you know when we went down below to um, hide from him. He's always going to do the sequence of attacks now. So he'll he'll fly away in the distance. And then he'll do the attack where he comes close. Fire some missiles. And then he'll fly away in the distance. And then he'll do the machine gun attack. And then he's just going to repeat that. Repeat that sort of sequence of attacks, guys. Now when he finishes the machine gun. Quickly look south. And then try to see where he's going to go. You can't quite see. You have to keep looking east or west. And there you go. And to see where he's gone. And when he's got low health, he'll be black from the smoke. That's it again. When he's in the west, just try to shoot him once and then quickly crouch. If you quickly shoot him when he flies by like I just did. Now what he's going to do next, he's going to fly beneath me. And then come up front and do that barrage of missiles. So if you quickly get one shot, just as he comes up, like so. And then get on step number four and then crouch. I think I'm on step number 5 there, but yeah, more or less between... I mean, what 4 is the best one, but between 4 and 5 can work. And again, straight to the top of steps, just as he recovers, try to get a few shots off. Try not to shoot him when he's moving around too much, because your shots will likely miss. And then again, he's going to fly to a distance. He's only, this hit's going to kill him. But what he'll, he'll do next is do a machine gun attack, then he'll fly away again. And do that missile attack, then fly away again, machine gun attack. And he'll just repeat that, guys. And that's it, the Harrier fight. Like I say, that might take a bit of practice. The key is to get three shots off to begin with. Do a similar amount of damage that I did. And then try to shoot him as he's flying around. And then you want him to do that missile attack at 6% health at the same time he did for me. And then will just do the machine gun attack and the missile barrage. So here, jump across carefully. Grab the PSG-1 ammo and the PSG-T ammo as well. Come to this railing, always jump over where the two railings meet there. If you're too far forward or too far back, you're just gonna drop. You're just gonna drop down to the water. Yeah, so drop down where the two railings meet. Now you wanna use that one pentasm in which you got and trank these two guards. Safer, just trank them guys here. Yeah, use one pentasm in. Otherwise you're just gonna be all over the shop. Dodge across that first gap and then shimmy across here. Now, when you climb this ladder, there's going to be two guards in the windows, so just be very, very careful. Yeah, there's a few ways to do this, but I, I do it this way just because it's safe. Because sometimes when they walk in sideways, when they walk in between windows, they can see you, even if you're like a good few windows away. So we always walk away to begin with, so I normally just slowly move between windows. And then once it gets to the third window, it starts walking back, wait here, and you see the second guy on the right, and wait for... First guy to come back and look out the window. And then make way over here. And then press against this wall just before the fifth window. And then carefully shimmy across and that's it guys. Yeah, because what can happen when you go to walk, when you run past the first enemy to the second one, 
The first enemy might be walking back between windows and he might spot you, even if you're a few windows away. That's why I wait for that first enemy to look back out the window before I run over to where the second guy's gone to. Yeah, because like I say, otherwise that first guy might see you. Here, be quick to avoid the warm water splashing on you. And um, jump over the railing, like I say, jump over where two railings meet. Grab the AKS 74U ammo because we're never going to use it, so why not grab it? Yeah, come at your steps, grab the shaft grenades and the PSG 1 ammo. Right, we're going to lob a shaft now, wait for the tree to explode. Quite a few um, ciphers over there. Yeah, once it explodes, guys, quickly go along the bridge. Be careful here. Yep, yeah, big jump there. But you can just make it if you dodge. And then into the air purification room, guys. Right, guys, <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, final stretch. I just paused it there. I had a bite to eat. Right, so these cutscenes, yeah, you can skip all these. And there's no enemies in this part to begin with. So you are kind of... Freedom. Yeah, you have a lot of freedom now. There's no enemies to run into. Just run away around with no care in the world. Yeah, grab them N9 bullets near the steps. Do a few cartwheels. Cartwheels make you move a little bit faster. That's why you see me doing them quite a lot. And apologies for not showing, telling you that already. Uh, but yeah, activate the elevator, guys. And take it down to the other floor. Which is bottom one. Right, so the Nikita missile is going to be in a different place to what it is on, um, on easy mode. Now it's basically the higher difficulty, the further south it becomes. It gets played. I think it's south. I forget. I'm pretty sure, yeah. But yeah, um, take the first right. Go to the end. Take left at the far end fork. Then take the next left, followed by the next right. Watch out for the mines, they are lower now. And there it is, guys, the Nikita. To do a 180 quickly, like I just did, you just tilt the direction on the right analog stick. Yeah, just press down on the right analog stick, and you do a quick 180 switch. Then just retrace your, um, your steps back to the elevator, guys, and then ride it back up to one, floor one. So there's not really much more to go. I mean, there's still like an hour left. But it's mainly boss fights. I mean, yeah. When do we make... The Tengu fight is at 1 hour 58. Well, the oil fence is 1 hour 43. Yeah, not really much more to go. It's mainly boss fights coming up. Yeah, so make way back here. Now I've got Nikita. Climb up here, grab a sock and bullets. Now be very careful here. If you kill the president, guys, you're going to get a game over. So if the president is sleeping near the control near the um, control power, you'll see what I mean. Do not hit it. Instead, detonate the rocket on the opposite side to the president to wake him up and then fire another one. You see, you see, he's sleeping near it. So detonate it just here somewhere, the opposite side of the room. You'll hear it wake him up because you'll go, huh, <laughs> or whatever he makes. And um, then when you go back, he'll be awake now and he'll try to avoid the rocket. And he can destroy the power unit. Yeah, there he is. He's awake now. Live and kicking. He'll run away and I can control it. Uh, sorry, destroy it. There you go. Yeah, I've died there a few times as well. Yes, yeah, so now the electric floor is disabled. Head across for a meeting with the Prez. Let's get through cutscenes. Yeah, cutscenes will count towards a timer. I think I need to mention that at the start as well. Yeah, cutscenes will count towards a timer. So that's why you need to skip them all. It is a mean. This is card. Yeah, unfortunately the credits take up like ten minutes as well. Yeah, which is not it's not really fair, is it? Because in a way you have to complete the game in two hours fifty, because the credits take ten. Uh, but yeah, grab a sock and bullets afterwards. Just in case you need the ammo. Right, and on your exit, there'll be some more cutscenes. And we're going to head up, head back down for the vamp fight. Head back down to B1, swim to the far end. Now, for the vamp fight, 
I'm just going to lay in one place. I'm going to keep shooting in the same spot when he walks into the line of fire. Just like, similar to like we did with Olga. Uh, but this is, uh, this is easier. That's why I don't make a save here. Yeah, this is easy to do. All you do, you lay down in the far right corner. And you aim. And um, you don't shoot until he crouches beside you. Uh, but if you shoot too late, he will knife you. And you'll die in two knives on extreme, so you've got to make sure you're not too long. Uh, but if you shoot too quick, he'll sort of dodge away, and you'll just waste ammo. Uh, but you'll, you'll see in a second. But yeah, once in the water, your O2 should last. And um, watch out for any mines, guys. Yeah, to take the first right, then a left at the far end, then the next left, and then the next right, and then it's a left and then a right. Now, it's going to be two mines there on the way back. You actually see me swim straight into them. Yeah, watch out for these two. You have to swim above one. Uh, sorry, below one and then above the other. Open this door quickly with triangle. And then swim through the gaps in the wreckage. Yep, and then straight to the door, guys, and open it. Take a right and then go up the steps, ready for ramp fight. You yeah, like I say, I don't make so. It does take it probably does take a few minutes to do this ramp fight, um, just because you know. But it's very very easy to do. We're doing it this way. It just allows us to use a safe somewhere else. Yeah. So as soon as you get control, guys, top right corner, grab the ammo on the way if you want to. Lay down, and you might need to move forward a little like me because otherwise you'll not be able to move your um, your weapon aim yep if you're too far in the corner you'll be sort of stuck so you might have to just move forward a bit that's it until you can move and you want to aim roughly around here somewhere and wait for him to crouch down that's it shoot him you what you're trying to do is to hit, hit him in the head because you're doing more damage and um, that's why I'm sort of trying to move slightly so my aim so he's going to basically crouch and his head will line up with my weapon once he crouches and hit him. You might want to aim just for his main body to begin with. And then slowly aim upwards. Slowly, you know, just to try and readjust. Because if you aim too high and you miss his head, he might get a chance to hit you. So you might want to start off lower and then work upwards. You know, each time he crouches beneath you and you see where you're aiming, just adjust a little bit each time. And you kind of hit him in the head. And that's it. Yeah, just keep doing that, guys. So it's a long... It's a long fight, you're going to be here for quite a while. I might actually skip this, I might actually speed this up because I'm not doing anything else. I'm just sitting here, I'm just aiming. Yep, that's it, just keep aiming like so, guys. Like I say, just make sure you do not, you hit him kind of as soon as he stops when he crouches because otherwise he'll knife you and you'll take damage. And if he takes damage, you've got like reposition yourself and you might, you might mess up the whole fight. It's easy enough to do. I don't find it too bad. Right, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to skip this forward a bit, guys. It goes on quite a while, and I'm not doing anything special. Right, so one more time, guys. I know there's a lot of different ways to do this fight, but this is a, it's a very, very safe way to do it. I know it takes quite long, but it's such a safe way to do that fight. Like I say, the main thing I like about it is it, 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 it makes it so you don't have to save. So it's a very good, a very good strategy just to, you know, basically it gives you a free save. But yeah, straight after, grab the M9 bullets on the left. And then follow the path, we're going to grab the body armor, very important. So come down the steps, go right, go to far end, take a left. And make sure you stay below that mine. Uh, so grab the body armor, press right analog stick to do 180. Go back to fork, then take a right, followed by immediate sharp right. Yep, stay low to avoid that mine. Yep, up here, guys. Now go through this door. Now when you go through here, take a immediate left at the bottom of the steps to get that pentasm in. That's it. We're going to need that for the um, for the oil field. So grab that pentasm in, Can you hear me? and then interrupt the middle locker, guys, to find Emma. So what we're going to do now: make our way back. Just watch out for any mines. I do actually swim into a mine by mistake. And I was kind of worried. I thought that was going to be a game over. And I was going to have to go back to the Harrier fight. But I managed to recover it somehow. 
But yeah, watch out for mines. There's not really any mines here. Just get in the water, go right, and then left at the end, and then you reach your steps. It's the second part where you've got to be careful. After you get past all, you know that wreckage where you have to swim through the gaps? It's after that part you need to be very careful of mines. But you'll see where I make a mistake, so hopefully you don't make the same one. You should be able to just get back um, to the elevator without going up for air, unless you get hit, of course. Your Emma's health will start going down once she runs out of oxygen. But when you leave her sitting down on floor one, when you go get rid of all the guards, she'll recover her health. So with Emma, it doesn't really matter if she loses any health because she'll recover it after leaving her, you know, sitting down for a few seconds. Let so don't worry this. about that. It's mainly worrying about her dying completely, you know, or, or yourself, for example. The problem is, if you do hit an air mine and you enter orange health, you can't recover your health until you get back out of the water, obviously, because you can't crouch. So you'll be bleeding to death in the water as well. So here, yeah, that mine there. You remembered it on the way through. Be very careful when you take that left. Make sure you're swimming upwards a bit so you go in the middle. Because there's a mine there at the bottom and at the top. So be very careful there. Try not to swim to that same one I just did, guys. Yep, I'm going to have to go up for air here. Because Emma's got no health and she's going to die. But yeah, just retracing our steps, guys. Back. Oh, that's why I had the RGB6. I wonder why I had the RGB6 in... Um... I realised it in the Tengu fight that I had the RGB6. And that's why I picked it up there. Because, um, yeah, you'll find with some weapons and items, if you don't collect them, they, there's other spots later on where they can spawn. You know, if, if you're not collecting them already, like thermal goggles, for example. We get it in the oil fields, but there's actually quite a few spots where you can find it. Yeah, so once out here, if you're low in health, crouch um, to go to blue health. I mean, hopefully you didn't swim into that mine like I did, guys. I mean, I showed you how not to do that. Yeah, so you're going to grab Emma. Don't break her neck, just drag her into the elevator because you're scared of all them bugs. Oh, and it closed on me. Yeah, because I took too long. Yeah, so um, we'll, we'll be saving the game here soon, actually. The oil field is coming up soon. Yeah, so just get inside the elevator, guys, and go up to floor one. Now, there's about how many altogether? One, two, three. There's six guards here, so try to follow me very closely. So first of all, stick to this wall and then come over to this corner. Now wait for the guard to walk past. He will walk past and then you're gonna hold him up before he turns in your direction. There he is. Yeah, quickly hold him up. Get his dog tag, but don't trank him yet. Just get his dog tag. Yep, and then drag him into this corner while he is awake. Yeah, this corner here. Uh, but make sure he's facing the corner. That's it. Then let go, hold him up again, and trank him. We trank him here because if not, if you trank him and then drag him, then when you pick him up and drop him, it makes him wake up a bit quicker. That's why you drop him into a corner and then trank him. Then you're gonna come over here. Now it's gonna be a guard here facing north. So don't run behind there like I almost did. I think I forgot what way he's facing. Yeah, hold him up. He's a stubborn guard, so you're gonna have to shoot near his head or somewhere near his body. Hold him up and same again, do not trank him yet. Get his dog tag, now drag him to this corner. The reason being is because when we come up with Emma, some new enemies spawn and one spawns beside him. And if he's too close, the enemy will notice him and wake him up before you get here. So you're gonna drag him into this corner, make sure he's facing the corner and then trank him. That way the other enemy will not see him guys and will not wake him up. Right, so once you've done them two enemies, head back to Emma. Now, when you drag Emma out of the elevator and a little bit to the left, it's going to spawn an extra enemy on the we on the west passage. Yes, yeah, so you want to drag her roughly about there. Now, you've got to be careful crossing this gap because if he's walking down the corridor, he might see you. Basically, what I'm doing, I'm waiting for him to come down that passage over there and go and check on his friends. Yeah, like I say, you've got to be very careful here. If you're not spawning, it might be because you're not taking Emma far enough. But if you do move, there he is. 
yeah, I was just getting a bit impatient. But yeah, there he is, the second guy that spawned um, in his west card. Like I say, he, sp he normally spawns when you drag Emma kind of towards where I just dragged her then. Yeah, he'll go to investigate his friends. Then you can hold him up, guys, get his dog tag, and then trank him. Now, when you pull Emma over here, a guard will come out of the elevator. But this, uh, this also spawns an enemy to the southeast. Yeah, so after this cutscene in a second. Yeah, this one here. So you need to be very quick here before he gets a chance to go and wake up his friends. Quickly come here. Trank this guy. He'll be facing south. Hold him up, get his dog tag, and quickly trank him. Yeah, so if you knocked out that other guy near him, he would have already woken him up. That's why you have to take him to the corner. Now quickly head down here. Just careful because he might, see, if you go around there too early, he might see you if he's walking past the other um, entrance way to that node room. And then as he goes to wake up his friends, you should just be able to get to him, guys, and hold him up and wait and um, trank him. If you just manage to wake up one of his colleagues before you get a chance to um, hold him up, then just hold his colleague up and um, just trank him again that way. Right, so that's five of the enemies. There's one more. So you're going to take Emma up the steps to the southeast. And um, then you're going to have this guard appear from the east passage. Now what he'll normally do, he'll, he'll stop looking west. Then he'll look south and then north. And then he'll walk north. Once he walks north, hold him up. Try and kill him. And that's it guys. That's all the guards in this ring. At this point, I think how many... We probably have like 122 dog tags. Or 121. So you actually have enough, I believe, at this point. But we're just going to get a few more yet. Right, so almost, almost the next save. Right, so out here. Straight away, come out here about five steps, turn around, and quickly trank that guard up there. you got to be very careful, um, because he can still... When you... When you're out far enough to get the angle on him, he can actually spot you. That's why you have to literally run straight out there while he is looking in the, looking to the sort of left. He won't see you then. But once he turns and looks to the right, he can see you if you're below him like that. So you quickly run there when he's looking to the left. Look up, trank him, go back in the doorway, turn around, shoot the two ciphers, destroy them. Yeah, two ciphers to the east. And then once you destroy them, guys, you're going to drag Emma. To the middle fork. Right, so that guard, he'll normally turn. He'll look down the steps for a moment. And then he eventually looks down to your direction. He don't walk down there. He'll look there and then he'll walk um, towards that strut with a K on it. If you're quick enough, you can get him when he's looking down the steps. But if you're worried that he's going to turn around any second now... Um, just wait for him to turn back like I did and for him to walk towards um, Strut K. That's it. Then hold him up, guys. Get his dog tag. And they'll put out his fire. And I'm going to take Emma into that southern door. So this next room, there's two guards, but they can be a little bit tricky. Um, but if you do miss anything up, just go out the room, uh, come back in. Uh, but just be careful, because if you leave Emma in here and go go out and come back in, she'll actually spawn. She'll be waiting on the northeast, but you don't want her there. If you do have to go out and come back in, take Emma with you. You'll find out why in a second. So you're going to knock on this wall. Yeah, I actually just knocked on the wall there. And as soon as you knock on the wall, equip a magazine, hold square to charge it like a long throw and then throw it and it should land over here and this guard as she comes down to investigate your knock he'll actually see the magazine get thrown or hear it land and then he'll go to investigate that instead of coming towards the knocking noise and you can hold him up and trank him way out from that way out the view of this enemy to the north right so once he turns back watch him from here as soon as he turns back quickly run over to this wall and lean against it don't look at him from the corridor because sometimes he can still see you that's why I looked at him from the um, entrance, the entrance sort of passage. Because you look from there, you normally can't see you. But if you go into that middle corridor, Freeze. you can sometimes see you from there. 
and you lean against the wall. Once he turns back, quickly run behind him. You have to be quick with this, guys. He turns around quite quickly. Then hold him up, guys, and get his dog tag. That's it. Open this door. Once you open it, go back and get Emma. And then once you pull her into that room, that'll trigger the oil field sequence where we're going to make our next save point. Save number five. Three more saves left, and they're all together. So um, you might have made, you might have changed a few of them saves. Like I said at the start of the game, if you want to change some, uh, swap some saves around, you can do. Um, but I just made my three at the end because I didn't want to be doing Metal Gear Ray again. I didn't want to be doing the Tengu fight again. You know, and um, if you die in Solidus, you don't want to be doing the Metal Gear Ray fight again. That'd be very annoying. Um, right, so um, yeah, the oil field sequence, guys. So yeah, I'm going to make a save. No matter what, you do want to make a save here. Even if you're quite good in the oil sequence fight, when you have to shoot Vamp at the end, that's quite easy to mess up because if you're not quick, Emma will get killed. And if she takes too much damage leading up to the Vamp part, um, she'll have much less health and she'll die quicker. So you've got to be very, very careful. But yeah. I'll show you what I do. Yeah, so after you've made a save, yep, yeah, grab a thermal goggles. Come over to this corner here. Because here you've got a better view of all the claymores you need to shoot. Right, equip your thermals. Quickly trank that guard. Just shoot him once. And by the time Emma reaches him, he would have fallen unconscious. Just shoot him once anyway, don't really matter. Right, once you shot them two guards, switch to your PSG1 and come back to this pipe um, Emma's walking across and shoot the five claymores on it. We're going to use a pentasmin now. We're going to save two pentasmins, by the way, for the um, ramp fight at the end. Save two. So shoot that one. This on the far walkway. Three, four, uh, five. You can just get that one. And six. So if you stand in the corner where I am, that will be the easiest spot to hit all of them. That one which is kind of behind the pillar. This spot we're standing in gives you the best vantage point of that one. Right, so once you shot all them, We've used one pentasmin so far. Now we're going to wait for these enemies to spawn on this tower as Emma reaches. There'll be three enemies. One will appear on the top left, and then two will appear on the bottom from each end. So I'm going to try and get him first. Try and get headshots if you can. The quicker you can get rid of the enemies, the less damage they will do to Emma. So you've got one spawns on the top left, one on the bottom left, and one on the bottom right. Right, once you've got them, yeah, you're using your PSG1 trank on the enemies. Obviously, we're trying not to kill anybody. And then once you've got them three enemies, switch to your PSG1, the lethal version, and shoot the two Cyphers between, uh, sorry, on that middle path. Right, and now what we're waiting for, no Cyphers will spawn yet. Yeah, wait waiting for, once Emma reaches that first silo, a guard will appear on there. And if you shoot him quick enough, it doesn't matter where you shoot him, then by the time Emma gets around the front, he would have fallen unconscious. So again, remember, use the PSG1 trank on the um, enemy, so we don't want to kill them. I am going to call Snake once a game lets you, but unfortunately, you can't call him until right at the end. And all he does then is shoot two cyphers for you, basically. Yeah, on, on very easy mode, you can call him almost right near the start. And his kills don't actually count towards your kill total, which is good. But yeah, like I said, don't come in useful on extreme because you you can't call them until right near the end. Right, so this is that first guard. This is that guard I said will appear when she reaches the first silo. Just shoot him once, like I say, and by the time Emma gets around the front, that should knock him out. Now there, that's where PSG1 trank ammo appears. You see me just pick it up? Now that spot, during the vamp fight, you want to stand on it because during the vamp fight, you use a lot of ammo and it'll make it so you automatically restock. So, where I just picked up that trank hammer, guys, remember where that is. During the vamp fight, you're gonna quickly run to it, stand on it, and then turn and shoot vamp. And the, the ammo respawns, guys, when you get below five ammo, by the way. Five or below. And the PSG1 lethal ammo does respawn. I think that's when you get below 10. Well, that might be five as well, I'm not quite sure. But the PSG1 trank ammo definitely respawns when you reach five ammo or less. Like I say, PSG1 lethal ammo will respawn, but I can't remember if it's like 10 bullets or five remaining when it does. Right, so now what we're gonna do, you saw me destroy them two Cyphers a second ago. Yeah, so sorry, when I was talking, those two Cyphers appeared. 
yeah, once she reaches the um, second walkway. And then get ready to shoot the three guards on the next silo she's walking to. Try and remember. And then straight after, there'll be a cypher coming behind her. There it is. Sneaky thing. So quickly get to that one. Yes, yeah, so you quickly take out three guards. And then quickly go to cypher behind her. And then quickly shoot it, guys. Right, so I'm standing where the PSG1 Trank ammo spawns. So once she reaches this silo, another guard will spawn on it. And as you can see there, when the guards do spawn, you get one on the top left again, and then one on the bottom left, and one on the bottom right. Yeah, so once she reaches it, another guard will spawn on the silo. I'm going to trank him. Remember to keep two pentasmins. What I normally do, I use one I use one pentasmin at the start when I'm shooting the claymores. Then I use one when the three guards spawn on the first silo. One when the three guards spawn on the second, then that leaves two left, and then we save them for vamp at the end. You don't need a pentasmin, just shoot one enemy, or to shoot one cypher. It's only when, you know, time is very important. Obviously, we want to get rid of the guards as soon as possible, when three spawn, and of course, the claymores are very difficult to hit. Now, when she reaches the third silo, uh, sorry, that next silo, eventually that cypher will appear from the top right. Quickly kill that before that's it before emma comes around otherwise it'll start making its way towards her so yeah quickly shoot that cypher which it appears as emma walks around that second silo and now in a second snake's going to appear so one cypher will appear at the top there and then another one will appear one will appear from behind her now actually but if you call snake he should shoot these it, if you call snake as soon as you can it just saves you a bit of ammo i guess you know, going towards your, your shot count for the big boss trophy. Yeah, so one will spawn behind her now. But you can let Snake destroy it. And once you've done this, next up, guys, it's going to be Vamp. So be ready. You want the PSG1 Trank. And like I say, as soon as the fight begins, run to where the ammo spawns. Stand on it. That's it. So when you run low on ammo, you'll automatically restock. And then once you're standing on it, yeah, you see where I'm standing? That's where the ammo is going to spawn. So in a second, we're going to run back and we're going to stand here. Yeah, so you see where the sun is, that's basically where Vamp and Emma are going to be in a second. Yes, yeah, so you're going to stand here. Yeah, you've got to be very, very quick on this part. She'll die very quickly. So as soon as you get control back, yep, yeah, stand up, run over here. About That's about it, about there. That's it, equip your PSG1 Trank, equip your Thermal Goggles, you just want to see where he is better. If you know where he is, it doesn't matter, um, but if you, you know, if you lose track of him, use Thermal Goggles to find him quicker. And then start headshotting him, guys. Use your Pentasmin. I mean, if you shoot Emma, be careful you don't shoot Emma, but if you just aim for his head, you should hit his head most of the time. There you go. That's it, guys. I think I only used one Pentasmin there. But yeah, you do use quite a lot of ammo. And that's it. So you'll be back in the pass room afterwards. The next save is not too far away. I think it's only it's 15 minutes between that last save and the next one. So we're going to get one dog tag on the way up. But what I hate about this bit is trying to get across that bridge. There's loads of holes in it now. And I fell down there once or twice. Yes, holes and trapdoors still. So when you come up here... Take the outer path, which I'm doing, because there's a guard at the bottom right, and he's looking left. So come up here, take this path, come down, and you'll come on the side. You'll come sort of behind him and to the side. Freeze. Yep, then hold him up. Get his dog tag, guys. That's it. And then trank him. At this point, you've got 125 dog tags. Yep, there we go. So you've got way more than what we need. Yeah, equip body armor. Of course, be careful you don't equip your special items if you have any. Yeah, so I'm going to lob a shove grenade. The thing is, you need to be quick because the side. I mean, you could shoot the ciphers if you want. It's up to you. Uh, but I'd shoot a lob a shove grenade. Yeah, if you want to take your time here, yeah, I guess you could just shoot them down. And then you could just shimmy across a railing. Yeah, be very careful. Because when you jump, you land on another trapdoor. So there's holes, there's trapdoors there. Yeah, I guess if you want to play that safe, guys, shoot down the ciphers and then just shimmy across. That might be safer for you. 
Just be careful you don't jump over onto a trapdoor like I say. There's holes but there's still little trapdoors there. And then once you get here guys, enter the elevator and you'll begin the torture sequence. Right, so we're very close to the end. Still like half hour left. Uh, but the Metal Gear Ray fight takes a long time. So I'm not going to make a save here. There, will, there is a save coming up. But I just want to get past the first... The first sort of warehouse first. Right, so be ready to spam triangle here. The thing I hate about Solidus fight as well is because at the start of it, you have this sort of torture sequence where he grabs you. This one's make it easy. So you spam triangle. But on extreme, it's very, very hard. And I always end up in the Solidus fight with like 30% health, like my lowest health it can be. So yeah, spam triangle. Yeah, I don't know why I've done that on extreme. You literally start you start the soldiers fight with low health just because of torture sequence just before it. It's just too hard to um spam triangle unless you've got a turbo controller, I guess. Yeah, so after surviving that, skip for cutscenes. No, that was just a smoke screen. A smoke screen? Yeah, I think I think I was looking at something now. This is why I've not skipped for this code at call yet. But I will do, eventually. The Patriots. What? I I deceived my troops, betrayed. Here we go. Right, so yeah, let's get the code call. So you joined hands with him to pay. There'll be a little cutscene with uh, um not Emma, Olga. Which you have to watch until she frees you. If Solidus gets away with You might want to make, you know, you might want to make a save here, guys, instead of the um, uh, Tengu fight. It's not really that far away. Yeah, just in case you mess up in this next section. It might be a better spot, actually. I mean, not here. I mean, once you get out of the torture room and you're in the warehouse with the enemies. Yeah, you might want to make a save there, just in case you mess up that bit. Uh, but it normally works quite well for me. I guess because I've done it so many times. But I guess you can look at it and decide what you think. Yeah, we're going to be making a save the Tengu fight, Metal Gear Way, uh, Ray, and Solidus. Assuming you've still got three saves left to make. Maximum of eight saves. So it's, rather than save just for a Tengu fight, you might want to save just before the warehouse. It's only a few minutes before. It's not really big. Uh, it's not going to be like a big sort of time waste, even if you do have to retry the Tengu fight. Yeah, so once you get here, guys, like I say, this is, if you want to, make your save here instead of before the Tengu fight. Just in case you're worried about messing up this bit. But yeah, wait for him to turn around. Do a cartwheel past him. Right, and up your steps. Now, top of steps, you're gonna get a codec call. And then you're gonna hide against a wall at the top. And there'll be a guard just past the wall. You're gonna wait for him to look left. That guard there. Once he looks left, run behind him and melee him from the right. And hopefully, you might knock him down. It will not count as kill if you do. Uh, but you knock him down either way and then come along here jump dodge across the gap Make sure you run beneath that camera and with all that timing as long as you do everything the same and with the same timing You should avoid all the enemies and then once you get to this corner Crouch beneath these boxes and then when that guard looks south run past them guys and head in the exit That's it. So yeah, I, I don't find that a bit too bad and um, but you might want to save for it if you do have trouble now here Run to the south until you reach locked door and you hear the um, door lock sound. Yep, and keep answering your codec call, very important. Yeah, keep answering the codec. And then once you reach that door, then run to the far door. Again, keep answering your codec, guys. Yeah, once you get a little picture, just press your codec button again to cancel it. Yeah, then make your way back, and as you get back to the middle door, um, you should trigger yeah this chat with Rose. Now, Snake's going to appear in a second. Now, to get Snake's dog tag without taking damage, follow what I do exactly. Yeah, this is how to do it without taking damage. So, make sure you switch your blade to a blue version, so it's not going to kill him. And you're just going to attack him once, make sure you close, attack him once, and then run through him. Attack him once, run through him. If you don't run through him, he'll shoot you. But if you run through him, what it does, it triggers him to a melee attack. But because you run through and behind him, it misses you. And just keep doing that. So attack once, run through him. 
Wait for him to turn around, attack Damn once, kid. run through him. Wait for him to turn around, attack once, run through, Moron. and just repeat that until Damn he falls kid. down. You have to use your blade here anyway to progress this part. And then kind of go near the exit. That's it. Once you knocked him down, put your sword away, pick him up and drop him to get Hideo Kojima's dog tag, guys. Yeah, there is. Final dog tag in the game. Right, so we've got one, two, six. Plenty of dog tags. And what we're going to do next, just a quick body armor ready. Now you're going to drag him near the exit. Because you've used your blade a few times, and also because you're at the exit door, once Snake recovers, you'll automatically enter the next room and you will not take any damage from his gun. Yeah, I, I said in my easy guide how, how I was going to do this. You know, get his dog tag and avoid taking damage. And this is how. This is how I managed to figure it out. So yeah, there you go. As soon as he turns around to shoot you, you automatically trigger to the next scene. Right, so this is where I'm going to make my save. If you've already made it in the warehouse, obviously do not make the save. This is where I'm going to make it. So what I do first, stay where you are, switch to your M9, and take out the seven enemies ahead of you. They shouldn't hit you from here. I mean, they might hit Snake, but it shouldn't hit you. But I think Snake's, once you get to next Tengu fight, I think his, he his health refills itself, just yours doesn't. Yeah, so from here, take out seven enemies. There's two on the top, then there'll be five down below. The two on the top, if you sort of aim near the weapon, it can't, I think it hits him in the groin and it kills him. I mean, it doesn't kill him, we're using the M9. Uh, but you know what I mean. Knocking him out. Yeah, so once has got these seven enemies. That's it. I like to get rid of them because you normally take too much damage when you pass them. Now, we're going to try and do the glitch here. So, equip your stun grenades. And now you're going to kind of slowly move forward and lob your stun grenades to stun the enemies for a short time. So, you can hopefully get past without taking too much damage. So, I'm going to lob one there. Sort of crouch until it explodes and then start running past and lobbing stun grenades. You've got six stun grenades, but well, I've got four left. Now, when you get to fire door, what you're going to do, you want to lean against it. I mean, obviously, you're going to wait till you get a window because the enemies will keep interrupting you. Lean against it, go into first person mode, let go of leaning, and then quickly do a combo and on the kick, let go of R1 in that way. Yeah, you see, Snake gets full health when you get to this part. Right. Yeah, so again, guys, once you get time, that's when you need lob stun grenade so the enemies don't interrupt you. Lean against the door, go into first person mode, let go of first person, attack three times, and then once you do a kick, let go of first person, and then you should glitch through the door like so. And then come in here, guys, and then you're going to do this fight. So for this, you've got to kill a lot of enemies here. you got to kill a lot of enemies. Um, but if you do get low on health into orange, just crouch until it recovers back to blue. What you're going to do, because you got killed so many, it's best to just come here. Otherwise, if you don't help Snake, he'll die by the time you get a chance to kill him all. Well, not kill him all, but knock him all out. You don't matter if Snake kill him, but you have to knock him out. You're going to have your blue blade. Hold L1 to hold it up to defend. And just keep running, just keep running from enemy to enemy. Trying to, to knock him out with your blades. That's it. That's what you're going to keep doing, guys. I think I'll kill... You've got to do, like, 50 enemies or so on extreme. And it's quite a lot. That's why I didn't want to be doing this bit again. Because you'll, you'll prob you're probably going to die on Metal Gear Ray a lot. Metal Gear Ray save is probably very, very important. If you don't get a strategy down, then you're pretty much just going to fail the fight. And it's quite tricky to do. But once you get a strategy going, it's quite easy to do. It works really well. But yeah, just keep doing this, guys. And um, while you're doing it, I'm just going to kind of go over the Metal Gear Ray fight a little bit. So when you first get control, there'll be a, a sort of dialogue for about a minute. And while the dialogue is out, you want to go and grab any stinging missiles in the area. Just so you've got 20 full. I don't think you've, you've probably not got hardly any at this point uh, due to Harrier fights. And your ammo doesn't restock really on this last sequence like it does on very easy mode or easy. Yeah, so during the dialogue, the start of the Metal Gear Ray fight, you're going to go and grab all the ammo in the area. Not all the ammo, I mean, you only need 20. You've only got stock for 20 anyway. You grab the ration in the middle. We're not going to use it, but 
But yeah, and then once the fight begins, we're going to make a save. And then straight away, we want to shoot the middle, the middle ray, then the right, then the left, then the middle, then the right, then the left, in that order. So middle, right, left, middle, right, left. And each time you're going to go for a knee shot and then a head shot. A knee shot will make the mouth open up. And when you shoot them in the mouth and it's open, you do much more damage. I think you do like 30% damage. Um, but if not, if you just hit them in the head when it's closed, you do much less damage. And then once you've done middle right left, middle right left, like I say, you're going for knee shot and then a head shot. Then you're going to do the middle one one more time, knee and head. And then do the one on the right, head shot quickly. So middle right left, middle right left, middle, and then the head shot on the right one. Uh, but sorry, when you begin, you run and do a dodge towards the Metal Gears. Yeah, it's very important. So as soon as the Metal Gear, right be uh, Metal Gear Ray fight actually begins, run forward, dodge once, and then that's where you're going to start shooting from. And then once you've done all them attacks I just mentioned, don't worry, I will explain it again. I'm just trying to give you a bit of a preview, I guess. Yeah, then you're going to run back. And when the Metal Gear, just before it's about to land on you, you're going to dodge to avoid its stomping attack. And immediately you're going to run right to avoid its laser. And, and then once you run out of the way of its laser, you're going to quickly look at the Metal Gear Ray, aim up with the stinger and shoot it in its mouth quickly. You do need to aim up quite a bit in order to hit it, so you're literally right underneath him. And then once you've done so, you're going to run right to the stinger missile at the 3 o'clock location. So if you imagine where you started and you got up obviously like 6 o'clock from where you started, 3 o'clock. Um, there'll be single missiles kind of at some key points around you like oh they always spawn in the same spot I think you've got one at three o'clock um, one to north east one to north west one at nine o'clock and then one at southwest and southeast kind of like that and, but yeah as soon as you shot him after laser you run right to the single missile at the three o'clock point then from there you quickly leg shot the right ray and then headshot it to kill it and then quickly turn to the far left ray and quickly kill that. And the more you kill them, them rays, by that point, some more should start spawning. Uh, but if you kill the first three, then you're going to run halfway between the next stinging missile in an anti clockwise manner. So the one at kind of the one o'clock location or northeast. So you run halfway to that, and then you're going to wait for the next ray to um, jump on the arena. And then you're going to knee and headshot him twice. And then once you knee and headshot him twice, you're going to quickly knee and headshot the Metal Gear Ray on the outside of the arena, but the one on the left. And they're going to quickly switch back to the one on the arena and quickly kill it. Yeah, so like I say, since he's born in, grab the Stinger missiles. If you want to, if you want, if you do want a text description of this fight, guys, just check out my text guide. And it's in there. Like I say, there's quite a lot to explain here. And if you mess up any steps, it can kind of mean death. I mean, you've got quite low health at this point anyway, because your health from Tengu fight, unfortunately, carries over to this. Your health doesn't refill. But you grab, stinger, grab all the Stinger bullets while you're waiting until you've got full ammo. <clears throat> right, so I'm just going to walk you through it, guys, as we do it. So like I say, to begin, you're going to run forward and dodge, and then you're going to start shooting them. You need to be very quick. If you're not quick enough, one of the Metal Gears will get in a, a missile off likely. If that happens, just restart it, like I say. Once the fight begins, that's when I'm going to make my save, because I do not want to be watching this dialogue every single time. And like I say, we're going to shoot the middle, then right, then left, then middle, then right, then left. And you're going to go for knee and headshot. Knee head, knee head, knee head. And then once you've done that cycle twice, and we go back to the middle one, try to shoot him on the right, on the right leg. Because then he drops closer to the one on the right and they can get the headshot in quicker on the right one before you turn around and start running away. Just my movements and everything is very, very important here. So if you need to, just watch it slow motion or whatever works for you. Or look at the text guide. Right, so once the fight begins, now I'm going to make a save. And then once you get control back, I'm going to run forward and dodge. I try to keep up with myself here. Yeah, run forward and dodge. Yeah, there we go. Run forward and dodge. Now stinger. Knee, head. Knee, head. Knee, head. Mi remember, middle, right, left. Middle, right, left. 
That's it. When you shoot the knee, the head will normally drop near where you shot the knee. Yeah, so right. This is second cycle now. Right, and then back to the middle. Now right, head, and then head on the one on the right. That's it. Then start running back. Dodge just before he lands. Run immediately right to avoid the laser. Aim up quickly, shoot him in the head. Then run over to this thing missile at like 3 o'clock. Quickly kill that right ray, knee and head. And then shoot the one on the left. He'll probably be jumping up to you at this point. Knee and head. Always go for knee and head shots. There you go. And then once you've got that third ray, you can run halfway towards that next thing in missile. Can you see it? Then from here, do not shoot any more rays. Let them jump onto you. You'll find if you shoot them, they sometimes jump on a bit earlier and they get too close to you. So you're going to shoot them twice. Knee, head, knee, head. Well, damage them twice, sorry. That's it. Once you've done it twice, quickly shoot that one on the left. Outside the arena. You're not the one on the right outside the, the leftmost ray on the outside of the arena. Yeah, they managed to get a missile. If you hear any missiles come in, get ready to dodge. Normally that wouldn't happen. Um, but once you've got a fourth ray, run down to the um, northeast stinging missile drop, which I just have. And now from here, this ray going to kill the enemies. So now wait for this thing at the um, this fifth ray, or number six actually, to jump on. Hit him twice, we'll damage him twice. And then quickly damage the ray on the right side of you. And then quickly switch back to the ray which is on the arena and kill him. Now wait for the next ray to jump on. And this is it guys, this is a cycle. It's going, it's like a leap. Once this leap gets going, um, you can see there's one ray, Rose, number five. It's actually on the far left of the arena, and for some reason when you do this loop, it doesn't attack you. Uh, but this is, there's a lot of ways to do this loop, and I find a lot of speedrun methods, they're too hard to um, replicate. But this way, I find it a lot easier to um, explain and to replicate and it, I like my positioning on this as well because I'm standing on a single missile. Basically what happens, once you get the fight going, you're going to wait for the Metal Gear Ray to jump on the arena. Once you do this, you're going to knee and headshot it twice. So knee, headshot, knee, headshot. Then straight after, you're going to shoot the next Metal Gear on the right. Just damage him, knee, head, and then quickly switch back to this one. Now if you want to get used to the timing, when the Metal Gear Ray jumps onto the board, you can sort of shoot just before it lands. And then by time, just before your rocket's about to land, it's lock on will appear. And you quick lock on and hit it. And when you do hit it, damage it in the head, it will normally it will normally do two steps before you can lock on again. There you go, two steps, and you can lock on just before its second step lands, ready to do a second shot. So if, if they get too close, guys, they'll do a laser. So it does kind of help when you shoot just before lock on appears. Get used to the timing. Because if you're not quick, the laser can hit you before you get a chance to damage them. But if you're shooting just before lock on appears, they normally don't get a chance to do the laser if they're close enough to do it. And this is it, you're just gonna keep doing this once you get into the loop. So I'll say again, once you jump onto the arena, knee, head, knee, head. Quickly shoot the one on the right, then back to one on the arena, finish them off, knee, head, knee, head. And then you wait for the next one to jump on and just repeat that. You need to wait for the next one to jump on, otherwise, if you damage it any more than what you did, it will jump on too early and it might get too close and mess it up. And the reason you have to keep shooting the one on the right is because if not, if the two outside the arena have the same health, then the next one will jump on in sort of number order, which is that one called Rose, which is on the left. Um, that's if they both have the same health, but if one has lower health, he will take priority and jump on next. So that's a key reason why we have to damage that one on the outside of the arena before you switch back and finish off the one on the arena. Like I say, if, the, if you kill one on the arena and the both outside have the same health, the next one in number order will jump on. Or if the one on the outside with less health, he will take priority and jump on next. That's what's very important to keep this loop going. You have to make sure you damage one on the outside before killing the one on the arena. We have to keep number five, Rose, alive to keep this loop going. I mean, the hard bit, I guess, is getting the loop started. Uh, once you get the loop going, I mean, as you can see, it's fairly easy to keep it. You've got to be quick enough to make sure, you know when you're damaging this guy, make sure you're quick enough to damage it. I mean, if you accidentally shoot the, the one on the right, if you, if you accidentally shoot him in the head instead of a knee and head, that's fine. You've only got to damage him once. Just go for whatever you can, quick, and then quickly switch back to one on the arena because 
like I say, sometimes if the one on the arena has got too close to you, you might do the laser. And you do not have much time to react to that and damage him before he does it. Yep, and once you get loop going, as you see, they will not be attacking you. And it's really good, guys. Fairly, once you get it going, it's quite, it works really well. Works really, really well. Like I said, the first part could perhaps be that first bit that's going. I mean, you do middle right left, middle right, you, while well, you dodge towards them. Middle right left, middle right left, knee headshots. And then you go back to middle, knee head, and then one of the right heads. Then you, and then you run away, you dodge before you land. Then you run immediately to the right to avoid the laser. Then straight after you're out of the path, you lock onto his head, hit him. That will kill him. And then you carry on to that single missile drop on the right at about 3 o'clock. From there, you kill the far right ray quickly before he starts walking towards you. Knee and headshot again. Then you turn left and kill the ray number 4. Uh, sorry, number 3 on the left. And then you wait for number 4. Well, after destroying 3, you then run halfway um, between the single missile you're currently standing on and the next one to northeast. Run halfway. Then from there, Start killing number four when he jumps on, but before you kill number four, um, make sure you damage the left Metal Gear Ray on the outside of the arena. Rose will always be the one on the far right because she'll go behind you. Um, but when you're killing number four, you have to make sure you damage number six before you fully kill number four. And then once you damage number four, then you can kind of once you damage sorry number six, I'm getting a bit mixed up here. Once you damage number six and number four is dead. They can kind of make way to that final single missile at the northeast point from where you start, and then from there start the loop. It's kind of how it works. Like I say, if you want it broken down in text form, just check my check my text guide in the description. Uh, but if you try and follow me, what I'm doing in the video, like I say, my positioning and my actions are very very important, and my timing. The main thing you need to go, and I think the main thing you need to know is when you get a loop going, it's like I was saying about what Metal Gear Ray takes priority. It'll always be either one with less health, or if they've both got the same health, the two on the outside, then it'll be the next one in number order. And once you've got to kill 20 on this, on Extreme Mode, I know. Pretty crazy, you got to kill 20. And I'm not sure if it's 20, I think it's 20 life bars. Because you'll see, I actually finished the fight when one is still standing because I damaged the one on the outside. I think it's 20 life bars worth of damage. But yeah, E01L will be the last one. Yeah, E01L. That's the final one. So you'll see here, Dog is still alive. Oh, I think it's EO2. Yeah, E01L is the last one. Uh, but you'll see, I actually finished the fight before E01L is dead. And I think it's because I damaged EO2L. Like I said, I think it's 20 life bars worth of damage you have to do. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to shoot him one more time. Then I'm going to do the usual switch to one on the right. And that ends fight. Yeah, that's it. Because I did 20 life bars worth of damage. That's it. The Metal Gear Ray fight, guys. I know a lot of people... I don't think that's the worst one. I think once you get used to the uh, strategy, it works. I find that works pretty well. Like I say, there are quite a lot of ways to do that strategy, but I find that way of just showing you that works. I think that's the easiest way to replicate, and it's the easiest to do. Because I'm I'm standing on the... where Because you stop on the ammo drop as well, you don't have to do any... Once you get loop going, you don't have to move around at all. Uh, yeah, so here, be ready to spam triangle. I hate this part. I just lose so much HP here. I know, and now you're going to have no HP for Solidus fights. Yeah, but what what can you do, eh? What do you hope to hear? I guess you've got a turbo controller. Use it there, it's not him. and hopefully you'll keep most of your health. <clears throat> but for Solidus fights, yeah, this can be quite tricky. I'm going to uh, kind of cheese it, so I make a save here. Yeah, I do kind of cheese this fight. You're gonna keep what you're gonna keep doing is gonna keep hanging off a ledge and force him to do an attack. And then as he starts the attack, you're gonna stand up and attack him a few times, and then drop off a ledge and keep doing that, guys. But when you attack him, in order to get the maximum amount of damage, you wanna actually punch him.
but you don't want to do a triple punch in a row because that will knock him down. The key is to leave him standing and it, it seems to keep the cycle going quicker and better. So what you'll do, you either do, like I say, do not hit him three times in a quick sort of time period. You need to pause between one of the punches. So you can either punch him twice, pause, punch, or punch him once, pause, punch. However you want to do it. Just do not do three punches at the same time. So I'm going to jump off the air. Well, not jump, but I'm going to hang off the sides. Now, when he goes to do it, it's when he goes to do his, his slam, this attack here. When she goes to slam both swords down, just as she starts, she stand up, like say, punch, punch, pause, punch, or punch, pause, punch, punch. That way. Punch, 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 or punch, punch, <laughs> punch. Like I say, to be fair, it's very important. I think I do make a mistake here. But yeah, very important. You do not do a triple punch in a row. And just keep slowly doing that, guys. In between, if you do need to kind of heal up out of critical, just you can try to crouch if you want. If you get a chance. Yeah, like mistake. I accidentally knocked him down there. Because when you knock him down, it changes his next few attacks and um, it makes the fight go longer and it might make him dash around a bit more. And sometimes when he dashes around, especially in this second stage, he can attack you just with kind of normal attacks even when you're hanging. Well, even on the second stage, once you get into the rhythm, guys, it will just work pretty well. It just might take a few retries to get this working. I mean, he doesn't really attack you on the first stage. He changes stages, by the way, when he reaches half HP or half stamina. He'll get rid of his tentacles and he'll be more aggressive with his weapons, his swords. Yeah, he can attack you after dashing if you're hanging over the edge in the second stage. But once you get the strategy going, it does work pretty well. The thing is for the second stage, if you crouch beneath dropping down, that can mess it up. So in the second stage, you kind of be wanting, you don't really want to be recovering your health. I mean, if you have to, you probably just recover one bit at a time and then drop down. But ideally, you want to be sort of attacking, dropping down instantly. Attacking, dropping instantly, especially on this second stage. So I'm almost there. But on the second stage as well, you still want to climb up during the same attack, you know, when he slams down with his swords. But you want to climb up a little bit later. Because what happened is since you climbed up, he'll try to kick you. And if you climb up too early, when he begins his sort of two, heart, two sword slam, his kick will connect. But if you climb up a little bit later, his kick will miss you. And then you can sort of do the, the punch, punch, punch attack on him. Quit playing around. So yeah, right now in the first stage, we climb up as soon as he begins the attack. But on the second stage, you want to climb up just before it lands or when he's about to pull his swords forward. So he'll raise his swords above his head. And just before he goes to pull him forward to attack, that's when you want to climb up on the second stage. So second stage now. And what you might want to do is when he's dashing around, you might want to just block. So hold block and look what direction he's coming from and block in that direction. Because if you hang in when he's doing that attack, that's like I say when he might attack you. So yeah, if you mess it up, this is what can happen. If you mess it up on the second stage, he might start dashing around. But he wants to get it going. I messed it up again. I knocked him down. Quit playing yeah, so hopefully this is it where I get the strategy going. So yeah, like I say, when he's on this second stage, make sure you climb up just when he's about to pull his swords down. Yeah, so that kick will miss you. But if you, if you climb up too early, it will hit. So again, now... Punch, 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 drop down, and climb, punch, 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 and just repeat that, guys. Yeah, it might, like I say, it might take a few retries just to get that rhythm going. Um, but on the second stage, he might, rather than hanging over the edge, because more chance he's going to hit you, on the second stage, when he's dashing about, you might want to stand up and just try block wherever his attack's coming from, and then when he's finished his attack chain, then drop off the sides. I mean, my slow, 
I'm bleeding here, so my life is slowly going down. Um, but I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. Get him in time. Problem is, if I crouch now to recover, it might change his attack. And I've got I've got into a nice rhythm here. And this will be it, guys. So big boss rank done on extreme. Yeah. Well done if you've managed to do that. It's quite difficult, isn't it? I think it's like a seven or eight kind of type of difficult. Maybe maybe an eight, perhaps difficulty. But I guess at least you do get eight, eight saves. Would have been worse. It's like a complete perma death mode. Would have been probably like a ten difficulty then. But yeah, I'm just going to skip them cutscenes. Them cutscenes will count towards your time about ten minutes. I finish at two hours thirty. Eight saves. Um, no continues. Three alerts, which are mandatory. No one killed. No rations used. And it was about five hundred and thirty-six bullets. Um, because I did die during Solidus on my recording a few times, and I just took my um, final bullet count from that. Yes, yeah, so my final ammo used was 536. Final dog tag count was 126 in the plant, and in the tanker was a uh, 79, I believe, or was it 89? One of them. But yeah, that's it, guys. Big boss, you'll get a trophy, and the code of big boss, and also pacifist run if you have not already got that. Um, without killing anyone and also the trophy for not getting any alerts if you have not got that one either I think I got that on my easy playthrough. Yep poodle. That's again the tanker stealth suits And then That one Shiba in you that's for getting the plant stealth suit guys and then extremely solids Platinum trophy finally got it all so yeah, that's Metal Gear Solid 2 gun done. I'm going to rely, um, release this as a single video and also like a full platinum video. I think it's going to be probably under about 8 or 9 hours. And then we've got Metal Gear Solid 3 guys. Metal Gear Solid 3 by the way, just a bit of a preview. We're going to be doing everything in one playthrough. So that's not going to be long at all. Probably going to be like a 3 or 4 hour long video. And that's going to be the complete platinum all in one. Um, but yeah, that's my Metal Gear Solid 2 guys. My guides for that. I hope you've enjoyed them all and they've been really helpful. Thank you for watching and um, I'll see you on the next one.